free servers paddle them back out. You guys should be paddling in, please. Want to get things started right at nine o'clock? Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to finals day. It's on at the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro and Live Like Xander Junior Pro. This morning we got a little bit of a bump up in the swell, better direction, better winds and bigger waves. So we got some hot action on store for you today. We're gonna kick things off today with the Junior Women's Semi-Final. Coming up, we're gonna see Linnea Mons. She will be taking on Bella Kenworthy, Kohai Fierro and Vela Matif. Coming up in semi-final number two, we're going to see the Canadian server, Sanoa Olin, Candelaria Rosano and Livia Storer and Kylie Pulsini. Both the server Bella Kenworthy and Sanoa Olin have qualified for Worlds. We're going to then move into the junior men's where we're going to see Jack Zietz. He will be taking on Blair Barton, Ree Platness, and the event standout Lucas Cassidy who dropped the highest two wave heat total for this event so far. In semifinal number two, Owen Moss. Owen has already reached the semis in the QS 5000 and qualified for the Challenger Series. He is also this year's, he is also last year's runner up at this event. He will be taking on Cole McCaffrey, Hayden Rogers and Lucas Skinner. Following the junior semifinals, we will be shifting gears and going into the women's where we will see Zoe Benedetto, last year's champion, matched up against the Leilani McGonagall. Leilani is also an event winner, taking the win here in 2018, when this event was a 3,000. Semi-final number two, we'll see the likes of Kira Pinkerton. Kira, also a former champion on the junior side, taking the win in the Live Like Xander 2017. She will be paired up against Talia Swindell. Both of these ladies have secured their spot on the Challenger Series, along with Bella Kenworthy, leaving just one spot to come from qualification. 
Then we're going to be witnessing the junior, the QS men's semifinal number one, where we will see Joshua Burke from Barbados, last year's runner-up, taking on the 2018 champion Luca Messinas. In semifinal number two, we will also see a former champion in Michael Dunphy. He won here in 2022. He will be taking on Owen Moss. Owen has a chance to be a double winner as he is in the Live Like Xander semifinal as well. So we're gonna see, we're gonna have to see how things play out on that. And that will set the stage for finals, which will be coming up right around midday. We're gonna start the final with our specialty division in the 12 and under, followed by the junior women. Then we'll go into junior men's final. Then it's to the big dogs. We're gonna go to the QS women first, then QS men will round out the day. There have been quite a bit of qualifications already handed out here in Barbados. On the women's side, junior women's side, Bella Kenworthy and Sanoa Olin qualifying for Worlds. On the junior men's side, that has yet to be determined. The women qualifying for the Challenger Series will be Talia Swindell, Kira Pinkerton, and Bella Kenworthy, leaving just one spot remaining. And on the QS men's side, we had Alan Cleland, Owen Moss, Michael Dunphy, Barbados' own Joshua Burke, Ryan Huckabee, Luca Messinas, and Levi Slauson also qualifying for the Challenger Series. And we'd like to congratulate those surfers who qualified, and good luck to those still in the draw with a chance to qualify. So we're gonna cut to highlights, and then we're gonna be right back with the start of the day. Stand by. Movie Day provided pure elation and absolute heartbreak as uh, Challenger Series and World Championship spots are finalized with I multiple see. competitors being confirmed. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. Finals day is set at the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro and Live Lake Zander Junior Pro, presented by Diamonds International. Tune in live for an epic conclusion. Okay, we are back to live action, and the heat has just started. Coming up in this heat in red jersey, Linnea Mons in blue, Bella Kenworthy in white, Kohai Fierro, and in green, Vala Mativ. This is semifinal number one in the Live Like Zano Junior Pro in memory of Zana Venezia. Currently in the water, we have a three to five foot east, northeast swell. This is a new swell. It is in a different direction. It is hitting the reef a little more square. We currently have east, southeast winds coming almost from right to left. And it is forecast to stay light like this all day long. We are currently about 20 minutes away from a dead low tide. However, the tide seems to have been completely pulled out already. So the swell is going to be on the rise from here on out through the rest of the day. So joining me in the broadcast booth is Jim Hogan. Morning, Jim. What did you think about the waves yesterday? As we're going to take a look at this surfer in blue, Bella Kenworthy. She bounces it off the white water and cuts back left. Just a couple of small maneuvers. So while we're waiting on that score to drop, what did you think of the waves yesterday, Jim, and the surfing? Yeah, the surfing was spectacular yesterday. The waves were uh, a little bit slower than they are this morning. Uh, this morning went out there and it was 
definitely better conditions today, so uh, looking for cleaner air conditions this afternoon, maybe a foot bigger than yesterday. Uh, but yeah, a lot of hot action, a lot of scenarios went down yesterday, Lou. And uh, yeah, it was a big day yesterday. Yeah, we qualified quite a few kids. Um, we only got one more to qualify for the women's uh, QS and two for the junior men. So it was full of action yesterday. Just want to remind everybody on the beach and that is in the tank that um, we're expecting a big crowd down here today. So we turn the road into a one-way. So it will be one-way going from Roundhouse Restaurant across Super Bowl and then up Cleavers Hill. So the one-way goes from Roundhouse towards Parda. So the first wave coming in for the surfer in blue, Bella Kenworthy, is a 3.33. So Bella has qualified for the Junior Women's Worlds and also the Challenger Series already. So she wants to then add being a Lib Like Xander Junior Champion to the list. Yeah, Lou, we'd like to welcome Stoney Cantor to the broadcast, listening in here. And uh, definitely had good times with him over the years at the house in front. Yeah, welcome to the broadcast, Tony. Glad you're tuning in and listening. I know where you are right now, and I'm not going to tell the world where you are. <laughs> Nothing about a rubber ducky, right? Yeah, Lou, a little bit slow out here right now as the tide's changing and uh, all these women are repositioning themselves in different areas on the reef. Uh, we do have a couple lines coming in here for them. As we got a paddle, Lou. Here we go, green up and right in. This is Vela Mativ coming around the section. Nice little wrapping cut back. She's going to wait for this one to line up. She's going to get an inside little runner. You can see that inside is actually bigger today than it was yesterday. So, And on the outside, red up and right in. Uh, we've had a little barrel on it. Could possibly start barreling a little later on. Hopefully this wind... We'll just clock around just a little more to the right, kind of blow up the face, and it will certainly start to borrow then. So waiting for a score for green and one for red as we look at this replay of green. Yeah, she gets a, a nice bull wave over there. Does a really nice combo of a bottom turn cut back combos here. Unfortunately, this wave just runs off on her, but um, Nice little start on the beginning of that wave. Clean, caught it by herself as red. Gets this one with a little bit more of a bowl there, Lou. And uh, she's able to get a couple nice turns off. So yeah, I saw what you're talking about, that wave bowling up. That'd be great if that comes in this afternoon. Yeah, here we go, back to live action. As the score is starting to trickle in with 18 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. These are 25 minute heats.
All right, last of red, 4.5. Last of green, 4.17. So early going, red goes to first. Green, you go to second. Blue is in third. And surfer in white. Red, your last wave was a 4.5, 4.5. So White, you are currently in. All right, here we go, White, Kohai, coming around the section, you see young server from Tahiti, working it out onto the open face, cutting it back, smashes it up in the north section. It's gonna get more waves to work with. Look at these waves, it is absolutely going off out there. Yeah, I've been very impressed with this young lady serving. She waited patiently with a priority, getting a big wave. Nice three combinations in a row right there. Bottom turns straight up into the lip and continues to finish this wave all the way down the line. Smooth transitions, and she surfed that wave absolutely perfect for what it gave her there, Lou. Yeah, this is probably going to come in, if not in the excellent range, very close to it. 15 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Judges starting to type their scores in. You see them on the board, two in the excellent range, two in the very good range, and where is this third one gonna come? So she'll lose one of those seven fives and one of those eights, and they will average the score. White, seven, six, seven, seven point six seven for white. So white goes to first. Red, you drop to second. Green, you are in third. And Blue, you are in fourth. Yeah, again, Lou, that was such a nice priority choice of wave there. And she, uh, what I call is a half pipe effect. She came straight off the bottom, straight up into the coping, up and down continuously with speed, power, and flow, and attacking that wave all the way in. And the judges rewarded her for that. With 14 minutes and 35 seconds left, priority is with Blue. Second priority is with green. Third priority is red. And fourth priority is white. Well, so we're looking at blue up in writing. Bella Kenworthy. Nice little lip line floater. She's waiting for this one to stretch out in front of her. Nice little layback slash in the pocket. And she's on her way to the inside. She's looking to get one more maneuver. And, and it's not going to allow her. She did get something done on the outside. But yeah, Jim, you were saying that about White. She has had that strategy the entire event. Wait till she gets priority, and then she picks a good wave as we watch this replay from Blue. Yeah, she comes off the bottom, gets a little bit loose on that first turn. And as this section comes in here, she does a nice layback cut back in the pocket. Another roundhouse right there, th th showing control over her board. And Lou, you know, that one section that's kind of tricky to come through, she's been figuring out those, when those two waves come together, she's figured out a layback cut back there in that section to bring her back, pull that board all the way back and get that reconnection. Yeah, Lou. that's that north section. It's, you watched yesterday, some of the surfers going up in that, just a little bit late and just getting detonated and there aren't too much turbulence under the board. And she seems to figure it out. So priority sits on the outside with a surfer in green. She is currently in fourth place, requiring just a 3.5. Second priority goes to the surfer in red. You are currently in third position, requiring a 
12 minutes, 35 seconds remaining. We are in heat number one of the semifinals in the Live Like Xander Junior Pro presented by Diamonds International. Coming up in the next heat, Sonoa Olin, Candelaria Rosano, Olivia Storer, and Kylie Pulsini. You ladies should be checked in. Please be reminded, ladies, you are free to paddle out within the five minute mark. However, please stay down in the channel. Yeah, Lou, I've been really impressed with all these young women surfers coming up in the Live Like Xander Barbados comp here. They've been out there surfing and just really uh, showing their talent all week long. It's been great to watch. It is really a great contest. I'm so glad that we're able to accommodate these surfers from the North American region. These surfers are putting themselves into position. Kind of see on your screen how one wave coming in from the left, the other wave coming in from the right on the outside. The swell just trying to get itself together. It will once the tide starts to fill in. Uh, blue up and right in. Bella Kenworthy working it out onto the open face. Nice slashing cutback. She is currently in first, dropping a 5.17 on her previous attempt. And she goes up and out the back. She is the current ratings leader in this junior tour. So green up and right in. Bella Matif. Working out onto the open face with nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining. So Blue, your previous wave, your previous wave was a 5.17. So we're waiting for the last of Blue and the last of Green. Yeah, here we go. Bella in Blue picks this one inside up, inside wave with a really nice line with more vertical options and she attacks that on multiple turns with a nice big old cutty snap at the end and then coming in to finish this off and that was a well-ridden wave by her on a great wave choice greens up on this one unfortunately this wave just doesn't give her the same kind of wall as uh blues wave and she's Still trying to make the most of it. She gets out and she's on her way back out as the other girls are sitting out there in red priority and second priority blue. We go white up and right and sitting on the single highest heat wave score, throwing it up in the lip. So composed. So. On the screen, we were watching White on um, multiple hits there, and she's just been on fire this heat. She looks really well rounded, Lou. She's wave choice is spot on, and 
She's been surfing straight vertical. She went straight up in that lip on the very first turn, and then she finished with a big slam on the inside. And we're still waiting for her second score to come in. So last of blue, 817. Last of blue was 817. So still waiting for green and also for white. So last of white, 5-5-7. Five, five, so one more score to drop for the surfer in blue, and I will update the situation with six minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Here we go, green up and riding. So as it stands, blue first, white, you are second, red, you are third, requiring an 8.7. However, green is up and riding. She still has her previous to drop and this one. So she's now waiting on two scores. Last of green, 2.5. Previous of green, 2.5. Previous of green, 2.5. You now have one more wave to come. Yeah, she picks this one, does a nice bottom turn into the pocket, gets throws a board up there. Unfortunately, this wave kind of fades out on her, Lou. And uh, she's surfing really well, but... Uh, this wave just isn't giving her the opportunity that the other girls had on their wave. So she's going to have to get back out there and look for a better lined up wave. Uh, as both girls are really close, 13.34 to 13.24. Wow, that's close heat. Yeah, just barely separated by a 0.1. So server in blue sitting on an 817 and a 5.17, and Surfer in white sitting on a 7.6, and a 5.57. Green, your last wave comes in at a 3.27. Blue up and right on a solid North Bowl. That's gonna just shut down on her. Now, if the wind goes around to the right, those are the waves you want. That wave will hit that bank and just barrel straight across it. And you can see the difference in the angle of the swell today. Definitely more out of the north, definitely more energy in the water. Swell still trying to come together. Yeah, as we go on the replay of Bella there attacking two hits. This, I don't believe will go in her score line, but she's out there enjoying her time out there with three of the girls. So we're within five minutes, four minutes and 10 seconds remaining as the surfer in blue drops a 5.40. So that does just barely get into her score line. White is looking at that and they all leave it. So three minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Servers in the next seat, you're free to paddle out. Please stay down into the channel. Sonoa Olin, Candelaria Rizzano, Olivia Stower, and Kylie Pulsini will be battling it out for the next two spots in the finals in the junior women's BTMI Live Light Sandler Junior Pro. The event is presented by Diamonds International, brought to you by Surf Promotions Barbados. Yeah, Lou, in both semifinals, we have Canada, Nicaragua, Tahiti, and the U.S. all competing international field there, what do you say? Yeah. As you saw, the surfers put themselves in position. No takers on that wave. As we wind down just under three minutes, two minutes, 50 seconds remaining. So Bella Kenworthy sitting atop the rankings here. She has already qualified for the Worlds. And coming up next, Sonoa.
in second on the rankings and also qualifying for Worlds. So congratulations to both of you ladies. However, their work is not done as they want this Live Like Xander title. Noe Clapp is the reigning champion, bowing out of competition yesterday. As we watch Blue way up inside, here she goes up and riding, nice north bowl. As she works her way to the inside. And Red on the outside as we're gonna pan out, stick with Red. You can see she was just ever so slightly too high up above. So priority on the outside is with green, then, sorry, with white and then green. Got ahead of myself a little bit. Yeah, as we have on the replay, Bella coming from behind this wave has a lot more white water on. Inside for blue, ladies in the next seat. Stay there, please. And counting this one in. In five, four, three, two, one. So that ends the heat. With the surfer in blue, Bella Kenworthy taking the win, followed closely by the surfer in white. Kohai Fierro. It doesn't matter. First and second will be moving on into the finals coming up a little later on today. So ladies in the next seat, please stand by. We are on a short hold. So we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. And then we're going to get heat number two of this semifinals underway. Please Stand by and stay tuned. We will be right back. back to live action semi-final number two live like Santa junior pro coming up in this heat we have in the red jersey Sanoa Olin in blue Candelaria Rosario in white Olivia Storer and in green Kylie Pulsini so these women will be battling it out for the first and second place advancing on into the semi-finals as we got red up and riding, she's getting off to an early start. Working it in, on into the inside. The two servers in advancing position from the last seat, Bella and Kohai, will be taken on first and second. Yeah, Lou, she has a lot of power, this young lady as she destroys this wave for what it, the size of it, she just hammers this thing all the way in and uh, finishes with a good turn there. I'd like to see her on a bigger wave, but she pretty much destroyed that, that wave there, Lou, for what it was offering. Yeah, she's a solid competitor. And we've seen her drop plenty waves in the excellent range. She's going to have to find a little bit bigger wave, do a little bit more work on the outside, get that score up in there. She's 4.67 for red, 4.67 red. Plenty of time, 22 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. So coming up immediately after this, we're going to go into semifinal men's, junior men's. 
Jack Zietz, Blair Barton, Reed Platness, and Lucas Cassidy. So the So blue, Candelaria, she just goes up and out. So priority has been established between red and blue. And green and white still will battle it out. Surfer closest to the curl has right of way. So there is some positioning involved in this still. And strategy as they see the set in front of them. They're going to all have to go under it. But look what's coming to them. Anybody going to get into position? Server in red looks like she wanted it, but she opts out. So it is a little bit of a shorter period swell. So early going, surfers putting themselves in position and they just keep duck diving all of the sets. Way up inside the point right now. There we go, White, she's gonna pull at this one, Olivia Storer, and she decides out, so. Here we go, blue up and right and working her way back into the bowl on the outside, green piloting, but no ride. Yeah, blue gets us inside her wave. She gets one section coming on at her, and she does a <clears throat> nice lay back, cut back throw in there. Not offering too much on that wave, but getting her feet in the wax and repositioning after she uh, paddled miss her first wave. Yeah, almost five minutes gone in this heat already, and only really one score on the board with the surfer in red. This is typically how it's been the whole week. We get impulses of waves and then it slows down a little bit. Remember when we were in uh, the Azars in Portugal and we saw her and her little sister out there in the massive waves and we, we were like called the lifeguards to go help them. They're like waved them off. Yeah, I, I mean, whatever happened with those girls? That's one of them right there in the heat. Right here in blue. Oh, okay, yeah. That was a trip. I mean, these little girls were absolutely charging. It was like 12 foot. They brought a helicopter for them. <laughs> it's crazy. And the girls are like, no, go away. We don't want you here. All right, here we go. Server in red, Sanoa Olin. She's, and she goes down. So it's still a little wobbly out there. This is typical for a building swell. But it is finals day, and we have a lot of surfing to get through today. So you reach this far, you got to be able to make the best of it. Yeah, Lou, if you remember those waves back then when we were talking about that story, anyways, uh, it was sucking up like 12 foot on a sandbar. Here goes green on the replay. Tags at once, but unfortunately this wave here we Doubles go, back to live right. action. Candelaria, nice turn off the top, and she goes out and under. Yeah, as, as a red replay here, she gets out in front, throws a cutty, and the wave doesn't offer anything. She jumps out, get back out the back, and here's blue 
coming into the power pocket, gets a power turn. Unfortunately, that wave dies out on her as well. So last of blue, 433. Three. Last of red, 183. So that leaves the surfer in white sitting on the outside with priority with 17 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. As we have a little break in the action, we're gonna cut to the glass. Standing by with Amaya is the winner of the last heat, Bella Kenworthy. Welcome to the St. Louis Glass for the first interview of the day with Bella Kenworthy, who just qualified for the finals in the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro and a me loving memory of Xander Venezia presented by Diamonds International. How was it over there? It was actually really fun. I didn't have priority for most of the heat, so I kind of just sat up at the top and just like grinded out a bunch, and luckily they worked out for me. Yeah, I saw you caught a whole bunch of waves over there. It's looking really fun, showing a little extra flair, and got that A point raid. Um, yeah, I didn't even know it was an eight until like I came in. I couldn't really hear anything out there, so I'm super happy it was an eight. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, looking strong for that final. How are you gonna regroup and prepare? I mean, I know you have the QS one, the QS semis before going on to the final junior, so that's gonna be a very busy day for you. Um, well, <laughs> I actually lost in the QS yesterday, but um, I'm excited for the junior. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna go like relax. I surfed for like a while this morning early, so I'm kind of tired. So just like regain energy and get ready for the final. All right, stay in the shade then, get some water. Can't wait to see more. I wanna maybe those shout out friends and family. They should be awake watching you. Um, yeah, I just wanna say hi to mom, Indy, Waylon, and Peta if you guys are awake. Love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good day. All right, back to live action as we wait for the last of green to drop. While we were on that break, we're going to bring you that replay. She drops a 5.67. So green drops a 5.67. She goes to first. Last of blue was a 4.33. You are in second. Red, you are in third. Red, you require a 2.1. And white, you are in fourth. You require a 6.83. So we look at this last of green. A couple yeah. of top turns out onto the open face. Nice little cut back, more of a setup turn. She's eyeing up the section and she doesn't materialize for her, so she goes out the back. That was a nice wave by green there, Blue. Uh, yeah. uh, Lou, she uh, picked one of those cleaner walled faces and surfed it quite well. Yep, that way of earning her a 5.67 for that effort. So she goes to first position. She backs up that 5.67 with a 2.0. So a couple of mid-range scores on the board so far. This is semifinal number two in the Live Like Xander Junior Women's. Coming up next, we're going to change gears, go into the... Liv Alexander, Junior Men's, Jack Zietz, Blair Barton, Reed Platinus, and Lucas Cassidy. We're going to see what the men have to offer coming up in about 13 minutes and 50 seconds. All right, White with priority. She pulls the trigger. Nice looking wave. Wrapping the first cut, wrapping another cut back, and she goes out the back. So that wave offering something, but she will get on the board with it.
First of white, 293. First of white, 2.93. All right, Green giving this one a look. She is in third priority. They let her go with it. So, Kaidi Posini just trying to stay busy. She's sitting on a five, six, seven, trying to throw away a two. She works it down onto the open face. Waiting for that inside section. Throws it up, nice and vertical. So gets a decent little finishing maneuver. So she is currently in the lead. She is trying to strengthen that lead and get rid of that 2.0. And we're looking at White. She is currently in fourth position. As she just manages that one small maneuver and the wave goes, rolls underneath her. Green picks this inside bowl. She cuts back into the power pocket here. Patiently waiting for something to set up. Does a nice little snap. Cuts back into the pocket, weaves this thing all the way in to the inside, and looking for that big finish right there. And uh, she just seemed busy, changed her strategy, it looked like, instead of sitting out the back as White takes off and gets one opportunity for this, and then her wave just dies out. So these waves are tricky, and uh, these girls are figuring it out, figuring it out, and they just keep looking for that one that lines up all the way in there, Lou. All right, last of blue, sorry, green, last of green, five, one, zero. Last of white, one, zero, seven. So green first, blue second, red, you require a 2.1. And white, you are fourth. You require a 3.9. Nine minutes, 43 seconds remaining. Here we go, red. Sanoa Olin. Couple cutbacks, looking for that inside. She's trying to get there, is it gonna reform for her? And she's gonna have to go out the back. So she was able to just get a couple of cutbacks, but this, she is a solid competitor. Yeah, she takes off on this wave. This young lady's got tons of power in her surfing. This wave, she's not able to really show it because of the size, but she's just, trying to weave herself back and forth and just probably just trying to stay busy, read. All right, last up, red, 3.4, you go to second. Blue, you drop to third. Blue, you now require a 3.7. And white, you are fourth, you now require a 5.1. Eight minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Yeah, as I say, she's just repositioning herself on the, the reef, probably just wanting to get that wave to paddle back out, L look at the lineup and see if she was seeing something that she was missing. You know, that's a good thing is when you do catch a wave. Yeah, and she picks up one on the way out. So here we go. This is Surfer in Red looking for that one big explosive turn on the North Peak. She gets it. So she goes out the back. She just dropped the 3.4, so we'll see if that's going to come in any better. Yeah, again, you know, she got to find this on the paddle back out, really throws an explosive turn there, but the wave doesn't offer much, but she did get one big hit there, Lou. Yep, drops a 4.2, so she extends her lead 
over third. Third, you now require a 4.5. And White, you now require a 5.9. Seven minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Green, you are first. Your two scores are a 5.67 and a 5.10. Red is second. Red just dropped a 4.2. Blue is third. Blue requires a 4.5. And white is fourth, requiring a 5.9. Seven minutes remaining. Yeah, Lou, there hasn't been a lot of sets in this heat here so the girls have been scrambling making scores out of nothing and uh, we'll see if one of these sets rolls in under the six minute mark here yeah it has been kind of a slow heat um, we have green white up and right in she works it out onto the open face, but she's going to get out the back. And on the outside, Surfer in blue holding priority. Green, she's going to pull the trigger with second priority, and she gets gobbled up by the white water. So she goes down. Red goes into second priority. So priority order is blue, then red. As this inside, white, and she leaves it. All right, five minutes remaining, five minutes. All right, coming up in the next seat, Z Jack Zeitz, Blair Barton, Reed Platinus, and Lucas Cassidy. Red. Priority change, white. White, then red, white, then red. So blue, white, red, blue, white, red. These girls are playing follow the leader. Uh, here we go. Red, way up inside. White is going to give it a look at it. She is in second priority. Here she goes, now getting back into Super Bowl. As she hits the closeout. Yeah, under second priority here, White rolls into this one attacks the oncoming section for one big maneuver there. There was a couple really nice waves that rolled in there, Lou, and uh, all the girls let them go by. Uh, they weren't able to identify them as we have priority with blue, second priority red, third priority green with two, just under three minutes left. So last of white, 3.9. White, you now require a 4.97 as we watch blue back to live action.
Two minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, it's blue up and riding on this. S, S is back to the power pocket. It's eyeballs this section coming at her, and she's able to get hit it, but not right out of that one. As she's paddling back out, she's maybe able to identify a peak or a line up there. Uh, that's one of the good things about riding a wave in, and on the way back out, you could uh, maybe see something that you didn't see before. With one minute, 45 seconds remaining, situation remains the same. Green first, red second, blue third, white fourth. Green, you're in first position. Your last wave was a .87. Red is second. Red requires a 610 to go to first. Blue is in third, requiring a 4.5. And white is in fourth, requiring a 4.9. One minute, 10 seconds remaining. All right, servers in the next seat, just hold your positions, please. Big turn by Sanoa on the finishing maneuver. And on the outside, live action, Kylie trying to hang on to that lip line floater, but she gets taken out. Thirty-five seconds remaining. Yeah, as we go back on the replay of Green, she has a lot of rhythm on picking the waves. Unfortunately, she poked the nose on the top of that off the lip. And as White was able to pick this one off and wasn't able to capitalize on that one as well. So a couple missed opportunities by those young ladies. And as Red was up and riding here on a little bit bigger wave as this thing grows in front of her, she's... All right, counting it in. In three, two, one. Had a nice finish on that last wave as the heat ends. And green replay again. All right, service in the next seat. Hold your positions. As you can see on your screen, the reef is just completely bottomed out. So last of red was a 5.8, so the situation and the heat ends with green in first position, red in second position. Those two servers are going to move on to meet Bella Kenworthy and Kohai Fierro in the final coming up a little later on. Servers in the next seat, hold your positions. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and we will be, be right back with the start of heat number one, semifinal men's, junior men's. Stay tuned. Introducing the crown of light. It's the only 90-faceted modern dome-shaped diamond with 24 bezel facets on the crown, giving it arguably three times more sparkle than any other diamond cut out there. This is Crown of Light. Okay, we are back to live action. This is heat number one in the BTMI Live Like Xano Junior Pro. Men's, junior men's. Coming up in this heat in the red jersey, Jack Zeitz. In the blue jersey, Blair Barton. In the white jersey, Reed Platness. And in green, Lucas Cassidy. And way up inside, in blue, Blair Barton floats the first section. He's gonna try and get out onto the open face. Nice wrapping cutback in the pocket. He's eyeing up this inside, this last maneuver, throws it up vertical. Nice start for him. Yeah, as Blue takes off on this set wave, throws it up there to gain that speed, coming around the section. Waiting for some opportunity here. Drops back down to the low road. Gets a hit, that wave didn't really give him the opportunity he wanted, but he knows this reef quite well. He's got his feet in the wax. He'll get back out there with uh, 23 minutes and 35 seconds. We'd like to welcome his mom, Courtney, to the broadcast on live, live feed here. 
All right, blue, 383 for blue, 3.83. So, whoa, look at the next heat, Jim. Owen Moss, Lucas Skinner, Cole McCaffrey, and Hayden Rogers. So we've got the servers way up the point. The server in white, Reed Platinus. Throwing it vertical, coming out onto the open face, banging it vertical once again. Two major maneuvers on the outside, right in the steepest part of the wave. That is what the judges are looking for. Yeah, as he takes off late here, Lou, he goes straight into the power pocket, straight up for two vertical turns, and that was a nice, well-read wave and ridden by him. He's been surfing out here all week, very strong. It's, it's been gr good to watch these guys, Lou. So a score is starting to trickle in. You saw a little bit more teeth on that wave. Then a few others, so 7.83 for white, 7.83. So blue up and right in. Nice first turn up in the pocket. Smashes the north section. He's going to get around it. He's going to get back out onto the open face. Look to finish strong. Throwing it up vertical. Kind of gets a little wobbly, but manages to regain his composure. As we go back to green now, Lucas Cassidy, surfer from Mexico. So talent in the water is amazing so surfer in yeah as blue attacks the slip really coming on, on that oncoming section he makes the most of that maximizing the point but he doesn't give up and that's why he didn't give up right there he gets that last big crack in and uh judges will be looking at this one and uh it is a great ridden wave there lou as we get back to Okay, so Live action with green on the replay. So still waiting for that score for blue and green. So that hands priority to the surfer in red on the outside, Jack Zeitz. And every single heat, he has had the same strategy. He just sits there and waits. They're showing green on the replay. He throws it right up into the lip. Does a little tail slide. Nice roundhouse cut back on that part. Keeping the board flowing on this wave. Just didn't get any opportunities down the line. We'll be waiting for his score to come in as well, Lou. Yeah, just two more scores to drop. And we can update the situation. Last of blue, 6.6. .6. Last of green, 4.8. So blue first, white second, green, you are third, you require a 3.01. And red, you are fourth, you require a 7.84. Green, your last score was... Uh... All right, last of green, 4.83. Last of blue, 6.6. .6. Last of white, 7.83. So blue first, white second, green, you are third, you require a 3.0. And red, you are fourth, you're yet to open your account, you require a 7.84. 19 minutes, 10 seconds remaining. We watched uh, this chess match out here on uh, with uh, red in priority, second priority white, third priority green, and fourth priority blue. All right, so while we have a quick break in the action, we're going to cut to the glass. Standing by with Amaya is the surfer in winning the second heat, Kyla Pussini. Here we are at the St. Luke last with the winner of the second semifinal and the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro presented by Diamonds International, Kylie Pulcini. How are you? I'm good. Uh, a little tired. It's hot out there. 
Kind of a slow heat compared to the one before, but you did manage to stay in control and catch a little couple little nuggets. Yeah, I just was kind of looking for like the waves that were a little bit further in that just uh, provided like a wall that I could do like some actual turns on and uh, got a couple of those under my belt as fast as possible. Yeah, I mean, that was good to watch. You got a couple of fives and got the ball rolling, but then it got a little quiet. How was it? You know, was it a little stressful? Uh, I mean, my goal this morning when I woke up, like, I just want to have fun. So even when I was, like, worried about falling behind, like, I was actually really calm, you know, and I think I was just trying to, like, surf out there with myself and just have a good session at Supal, you know, with only a couple of the other girls out. So, yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Can't wait to see you on the final and throwing some big turns again, catching some bigger waves. Hopefully it will push a bit. Um, maybe you want to give a little shout out to friends and family at home watching you? Yeah. Uh, hey, mom. Hey, Todd, my coach, uh, grandma, and my Uncle Brian. Maybe some of my friends like Mama Stacy and Marlon watching. Uh, but I'm just super stoked to be at this event. And um, I think it's great that we're you know, this is a memorial of Xander. I think it's great. And I never knew him, but he seemed like a beautiful soul. So I'm really happy to be here for this event. Thank you so much. All right, good luck for the finals. Thank you. <laughs> okay, back to live action. While we were on that short commercial break, we saw Reed Platinus with a little air rotator that comes in at a 4.93. So white goes to first, blue to second, green, you are third. Green, you require a 5.6. And red, you are in fourth position. You require a two-wave combination of 10.50. As we just watched a replay of white and blue, and that was a rotator of white getting a 4.93, and blue just throwing that away for a one. But he was, had nothing to lose at that point when he was in fourth priority. Threw it up there, got back out before white, and got third priority. So Blue's going to look at this left, up and right, and Blair Barton looking for that air section. Throws the fin and drifts it a long way. And green in the bowl, working his way to the inside. He has been a standout in this division so far, holding down the highest two-wave heat total. So Last Resort is presenting $250 to the highest two-wave heat total from today. So throughout the semifinals and finals, that would be for everybody, men, women, and children. <laughs> We're doing the 12 and unders immediately following semifinals of the men's QS as we look at this. This big old tail slide, look at how far he drifts that thing. That was a one section maneuver and he uh, made the most of that as we go to Green's replay. Cutting back, waiting for this to line up. Attacks the lip with a big old tail slide and not much offer on the rest of that wave and he's back out the back there We're looking for another one to back it up. As we still yet to see red. All right, last of blue, you drop a 4.1 blue. 4.1, so green, you now require a 5.9. And red, you require a combination 10.8. As blue is up and riding. Had a nice outside maneuver as he's working it to the inside and he kicks out the back. We'll get that replay for you. Yeah, the contrast between uh, blue and red. red. Blue has five waves and red has, hasn't caught a wave there yet. As we go back to the replay, throwing tons of spray off of that first turn, sticking with this wave, cutting back for the power pocket, letting this thing stand up, doing a big carve, throwing it up there on the lip and kicking back out. 13 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. We're just waiting for that last of blue to drop. Again, the biggest wave of the most radical maneuver 
closest to the curl with more power combinations with speed, power, and flow is going to be rewarded. 5.5, blue, 5.5. So, green, you are now requiring a 7.3. And red, you now require a combination of 12.17. 13 minutes remaining. Blue, as we see, blue has a pair of dice in his hand. He keeps rolling those things as we have a paddle. We're looking at red up and riding, throwing up the first turn, banging the second turn just before the north section. He's going to work it to the inside because he's got something else on it. Here we go, Jack Zeitz. And he is out the back. So he got some work done on the outside. Yeah, Lou, patient pays off for red as he gets a bigger wave, slams a vertical straight with a lot steeper section here, and then comes down, stays very patient with his wave to let it line up. The little setup turn to get a big finish. He had two big turns on the outside with a nice finish on the inside, and he still has plenty of time, 12 minutes left, and he definitely took advantage of that priority there, Lou. All right, last of red, 633, 6.33. So red, you cut your requirement down to a 585. You are currently in fourth position. Surfer in green, you are in third, requiring a 734. That's what life is all about, playing on the beach, not having a care in the world. <laughs> so we pan back out to the lineup, 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Surfer in red, waited a long time with priority. Picked off a good one, dropped the 633. You know, it just requires that 4.85, 5.85. We watch blue, he's going left. Launches the big reverse, lands in the flat, and cannot hang on. Yeah, it's kind of uh, being a goofy footer out here, Lou, and, and being on the very deep with a fourth priority is a dangerous situation. Especially with lefts coming in. The wind's coming out of the east there. He was uh, flying down the line, took advantage of the wind. Unfortunately, he came unstuck on that one. But he rolled the dice again as we have nine minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Priority is with white. S second priority is with green. Third priority, red. Fourth priority, blue. Red, your last wave coming in at a 6.33. You are in fourth position. You require a 5.85. Nine minutes remaining.
Right up and right, and he is the current heat leader. He's sitting on a 7.83 and a 4.9. With seven minutes remaining, he's working this for all it's worth. As score in red has a wave coming, so does blue. Coming up in the next heat, Owen Moss, Lucas Skinner, Cole McCaffrey, and Hayden Rogers. As we see one of these black boards again there, Lou, attacking this wave early at the start. Unfortunately, this wave was not giving him much offer. I think he was just more riding this wave to get back in the, into a positioning area, repositioning on his way back out. And uh, we've seen quite a few guys riding those black boards, doing pretty good. Lou, what do you think? Yeah, we're going to watch blue and red and green with priority. So everybody gives way, green up and right, a nice first turn up in the lip. A little downtime, but then picks back up on this inside section. So we're gonna have a score dropping for everyone. So last of blue, 6.37, 637 for blue. Have a wave coming for white, green, and red. As we look at this replay. And green throws it straight up into the pocket. It's a little hung up there, but zigzags back and forth, waiting for this thing to line up, cracks it again, straight off the bottom into a power turn in, into the power pocket, essing this thing through, looking for a finish, and here he gets his finish, and he's back out. Last of blue, 637 blue. I'm still waiting on a wave for white and for red, so I will update the situation as soon as I get it. 637 for blue. So last of red, 543. Once I get all the scores, I'll update everything. Last of white trickling in, last of green trickling in. Last of white, 493. Last of green, 427. So blue first, white second, red your third, requiring a 644. And green, you are fourth, requiring a 7.9. As we see red up and right in pushing out the fins and sliding it down the face. So he works it to the open face. He's working it as hard as he can with four minutes remaining. As we got the replay of Jack Zeeks right here. He sets this thing up, he cracks it, throws a bunch of water up there, gets a tail release. Red, your last score does not go in your score line. It was a 3-4-3. Three, three. You still require a 6.4. So red, your requirement, 6.4. Three minutes, 10 seconds remaining. So server on the outside in blue, you are in first position with a 6.6 .6 and a 6.3. White, you are in second position with a 7.8 and a 4.9. Red, you are third with a 6.3 and a 5.4. You require a 6.4. And green, you have a wave coming. Your two scores are 4.8 and 4.2, but you have that wave coming. 
as we go on Green's replay, driving from behind the pocket, does a big open car power turn, really nice one, little layback snap as his wave starts to windle down and he S's it all the way through for a, a little finish there and he'll be back out. Waiting. Two minutes remaining. Surfers in the next seat, just hold your positions there guys, please, thank you. All right, last of green, 513. So green, you are still in fourth. You now require a 7.6. One minute, 40 seconds. Priority is blue, white, and green. Blue, white, and red, sorry about that. Priority, blue, Here we go, green up and right in. Big air reverse. Can he hang on? No, he can't. And blue outside, one minute remaining. Nice turn off the top, another nice crack off the top. Working it onto the open face. Still going with it. Next heat, hold your positions guys, please. 45 seconds remaining. I'll give you plenty of time to get back out. So servers on the outside, red in priority, then, sorry, white in priority, followed by red is 30 seconds remaining. We're waiting for this score for blue to drop. Last of blue. Still waiting to come in. Last of green, two, two, three. Counting this one in 10 seconds. In three, next seat, you guys stop. In three, two, one. We got. So still waiting for this score to drop for red, but currently he is in first position. So that is not gonna change. Last of, last of blue, 6.47. So blue first, red, you are second. So blue and red, sorry. Blue first, white second. Blue and white, you will be advancing into the finals coming on a little later on today. Surfers in the next heat, hold your positions. Please stand by. We are going to kick this one in. We're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be right back with the start of heat number two in the semifinals. Standbys. <laughs> All right, counting it in, 10 seconds. In five, four, three, two, one. All right, we are on, back to live action. Surfer in this next heat, in red, Owen Moss, in blue, Lucas Skinner, in white, Cole McCaffrey, and in green, Hayden Rogers. So this is semifinal number two of the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro, presented by Diamonds International. So immediately following this heat, we're gonna go straight into QS of the women's. Those are gonna be 30 minute QS, 30 minute semifinals as we watch the surfer in green, Cole McCaffrey, sorry, Hayden Rogers going up in the lip. 
finishing strong. And on the outside, we're going to stick with blue. This is Lucas Skinner. He's still going, and he goes out the back. Showing the replay of blue, and he gets a big crack into a layback cutback as red gets a couple combinations, and we just saw the end of that wave where he hit it and was back out. Got the replay of blue, throws it straight up into the power pocket, keeping that board speed, doing a big layback slap there, and zigzagging this thing all the way in, comes unstuck on the end of that wave. Board looking really good as we saw red on the replay, carving back into the pocket, utilizing this thing, waiting for it to set up for a big hit, and he slams it to finish that wave out. As waiting for scores, for red and blue. Green, you have a 717 green, second priority. White, you have first priority, second priority green, third priority red. Still waiting on scores for red and blue. All right, last of red, 4.37. Last of blue, 4.10. Last of green, 7.17. So blue first. Blue, you're sitting on a 4.17 and a 4.1. Green, you're second with a single wave of a 7.1. Red, you're third with a single wave of a 4.37. You need a 2.81. And white, you are... Fourth, you have to open your account. You require a 7.18. Okay, while we have a short break in the action, we're going to send it to the glass stand in by with Amaya. Is the winner of semifinal number one, Blair Barton. Here we are by the St. Luke Glass with the first man to qualify for the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro presented by Diamonds International Finals. Blair Barton, how is it going? I'm feeling electric right now. Just stoked to be here and stoked to be surfing in finals day. Yeah, for sure. And you saw that you kept pretty busy over there. Was it a lesson learned from the day before? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I sat too long yesterday, so I tried to get started quick and just get into the rhythm. Perfect. Well, you did pick it up, so must be a little confidence boost for the next next heat the final how are you f so pumped yeah i'm pumped i guess i can't wait to go out there and do my thing yeah i can't wait to see that as well maybe you want to give a little shout out to friends and family in virginia beach yeah uh, i want to thank my mom my dad my sister everyone at home watching all my boys in sandbridge and uh all my sponsors all right thank you so much keep it up man can't wait for the next round Coming out onto the open face, launching the big air. Okay, back to live action. Last of red, 370. So red, you go to second. 
Green, you dropped a third. Green, you're sitting on a single wave of a 717. And white, you require an 8.07. Priority on the outside with a surfer in white, followed by green, then blue, and then red. All right, here we go, up and right in blue. So board caddy, blue needs a new board. He needs a new board, Zed, I don't know if it's as you, but he needs a new board, he buckled that one. All right, coming up next, we're going into QS Women's. We're gonna see Zoe Benedetto take on Leilani McGonagall. That would be semifinal number one. Then we're gonna shift gears, go into QS of the men's. Once that is done, we will be set for the day and it will be finals from there on out. So board caddy for Lucas Skinner, you're about to be fired. He needs a board. And here we go, red up and right in. Owen Moss throwing it vertical up in the lip, out onto the open face. Nice big wrapping cutback. And he finishes it strong. So that first turn, see where that puts him. Yeah, Lou, as we were looking earlier out the back, we see a replay of red here, tacking this wave, carving it back, and then a, a quick finish for red. And uh, as we were watching some of those guys ride waves, we saw a stingray out the back, and uh, I looked him up, and stingrays could get up to 14 feet. I didn't realize they got so big, and bat rays could get up to 3,500 pounds. Yeah, I know that they have some in the Amazon River that are massive. That was, that was a little wedgy one by the surfer in red. Still waiting on that score. 6.0, red, 6.0. So red first, blue, you are second. Green, you are third. We require a 1.1 for green. And white, you are fourth, requiring an 8.27. 15 minutes remaining. All right, so coming up on 13 minutes, 45 seconds, 
immediately following this heat, we're going head to head. Former champion, current champion, Zoe Benedetto. Here we go, is white up and right, and Cole McCaffrey going up vertical in the first turn. Don't think he's gonna get around this one. He's sticking with it, he's sticking with it. And unfortunately, he can't get out ahead of it. So he waited a long time for that first wave. He requires an 8.27. As we see Blue up and riding on the replay here, he got back out there real fast with the backup board. And he stayed busy on this way just to get his feet in the wax and get it going again. And he uh, was out of that one, but got three big turns off real fast. And uh, as we're waiting for scores to come in there, white and blue. So still waiting on the score for white and for, for blue. As we look at live action green, Hayden Rogers up and riding. Nice down carve straight up in the pocket. He's working his way out onto the open face. Stay impatient with this as he waits for it to, to lift up. Still waiting on these scores to drop. We have coming up next. So last of blue, 463. Last of white, 517. Last of green, 377. So green goes to first. Red, you drop to second. Blue, you are in third. You require a 5.7. And green, sorry, and white, you are fourth. You require a 5.2. So blue, you are third, requiring a 5.7. And white, you are fourth, requiring a 5.2. 11 minutes remaining. So red, gonna use priority, Owen Moss. He is the current rankings leader, going vertical up in the lip, coming out onto the open face. Another big slashing down carve. Gonna wait to see if this hits the reef. 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining, looking to get one finishing maneuver. Throws it up and he goes out the back. He's currently sitting on a six and a 4.3. Green on the outside, going left. Hayden Rogers throwing the reverse, flicking it around. Still continuing, looking for that finishing maneuver, and he finishes it out strong. Last of red, 6.83, Owen, 6.83. You go to first. Green is in second and has a wave to come. Blue is in third and white in fourth, but green has a wave to come. So I will give you a requirement as soon as I get his score. Eight minutes, 50 seconds remaining.
All right, green, you have a 6.43. You go to first, red drops to second. Blue, you now require an 8.20. And white, you require a 7.6. Eight minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Green utilized that left and the wind there, Lou, he just threw it up there into a nice little rotation and a good finish as uh, here's the replay here coming off the bottom, holding him up that wind, rotating around, setting this last section up for a little tail slide right there and he was happy with that to replace his 3.37 with a 6.43. Smart surfing by him as he needed another wave there, Lou. Yeah, recognize that left had an air section on it. And then also a closeout section. So he worked it all the way to the inside, earning him a 6.43. That was a well-surfed wave and a well-deserved score. Seven minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Situation in the water, green is first sitting on a 7.1 and a 6.4. Red is in second with a 6.83 and a six. Blue is in third with a 4.63 and a 4.1. And white is in fourth with just a single wave of a 5.17. White requires a 7.6. This is semifinal heat number two. First and second position will go on into the final to meet Blair Barton and Reed Platinus coming up a little later on this afternoon. Coming up next, we have heat number one of the semifinals, QS 5000 women's. Zoe Benedetto, reigning champion up against the 2018 champion, Leilani McGonigal. Leilani won this event when it was a 3,000. So we've taken this event all the way up the ladder as we watch White up and right and Cole McCaffrey out onto the open face. We're just offering him some downtime on this inside. Going up in the lip, throwing it up vertical second time. Finishing it pretty strong. He had a nice outside maneuver, but quite a bit of downtime in between. And blue going left with a big air reverse. Not being able to hang on to it. So last of blue just coming in at a 1.3. But we're waiting on this one for white. So blue up and right in out onto the open face and he goes out the back. Five minutes surfers, five minutes still working on the score for white. So scores for white starting to trickle in. Last of white, 5.67. White, you go to third. You now require a 7.16. Four minutes remaining. Priority is with the surfer in the lead in green on the outside, followed by the surfer in second, in red and third in white. Yeah, Lou, uh, when your dad's a shaper, he's watching your heat, 
and he sees you break a board right after the heat, he's probably back in the shaping room. What do you think? That's a benefit of uh, having your dad shape your boards. Yeah, absolutely. He's boards coming from his dad. Ben Skinner, I know you're tuned in. Welcome to the broadcast. All, all of Lucas's boards are hand shaped by his father in Cornwall, England. As we ro roll up to the three minute mark in this heat. Shout out to Chris and Andrea Wadey in England as well. I know they're tuned in. Two minutes, two minutes. Surfer in blue, you are in fourth position. You're sitting on a 4.6 and a 4.1. You need an 8.2. Your requirement is 8.2. One minute, 50 seconds remaining. Jim, you don't see that too often. Priority order follows the situation in the water. Green. Yeah, right down the line, there, Lube. Priority with green, second priority red, third priority white, fourth priority blue, and that's the same standings as well at the moment. So white's gonna, look at this, red holds him off. Oh, and Moss. 25 seconds remaining, so he sold him on it. But Green's gonna go. He's gonna hold off everybody with 20 seconds remaining. He is the current heat leader. Nice little do flicky on the outside. Spins it around, throws it up, bangs out the tail. We're gonna count this one in in 10 seconds. So in five, four, three, two, and one. So this. This heat's gonna end with the current situation. Surfer in green taking the win. Surfer in red, you coming in second. So you have advanced to the finals with Hayden Rogers. So Owen Moss and Hayden Rogers will take on Blair Barton and Reed Platinus coming up a little later on in the finals. We're gonna cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back for action in heat number one, semifinal of the QS Women's. Stay tuned. Coming up in the seat, we have Zoe Benedetto, the reigning champion, taking on the 2018 champion, Leilani McGonagall. We are gonna shift gears to 30-minute heats. 
as Surfer in Blue is up and riding. This is Leilani McGonagall in fine form all week, throwing it up in the lip, and she goes out the back. This round is 30 minute heats and priority goes to red as we see Leilani up, attacking the lip for two in a row right there, getting her feet in the wax. I'm sure she'll be getting back out there, feeling comfortable with her board under her feet like that with two big hits. All right, first of blue, 4.67. Four, six, seven. USA going against Costa Rica here in uh, two champ past champions here at Barbados. And uh, this should be some hot action going on with 28 minutes and 20 seconds left. Here we go, blue up and right in. This is Leilani McGonagall working it onto the inside. Plenty of time in these semifinals heats. We're gonna shift gears to 30 minute heats in this QS semifinal action, so. And on the outside, red, Zoe Benedetto and uncharacteristically goes down. Girls don't fall much. As we go back to the replay, a little roll in by Leilani, carving it back into the pocket, staying busy already in this heat, attacking this lip, waiting for this thing to reform, smooth transactions as she's Essing this thing in, waiting for it to give her a little bit more, but it doesn't, but staying busy nevertheless as we see Red, Zoe out the back, front foot moved a little bit on that and knocked her off on, uh, she was back out in the lineup to regain first priority with 26 minutes and 50 seconds left. Plenty of time for these girls to catch some sets. And a big shout out to everybody in Costa Rica that's tuned in for this heat is uh, we know you're cheering for Leilani and there's quite a few people tuned in from Costa Rica, so welcome. Okay, so while we have a Quick break in the action. We're going to send it to the glass. Stand by with Amaya is Hayden Rogers. Here we are to St. Luke Glass with the winner of semifinal number two in the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro presented by Diamonds International, Hayden Rogers from San Clemente. How is it going? Yeah, feeling good after that one. Had a uh, really put that heat together just how I imagined and stoked to get like a good start and then kind of work that left, which I've been watching and stoked to finally pull the air out in the heat. Yeah, keep things going. The Stoke is my first Pro Junior Final, too. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that left was amazing. That air was so high. Yeah, thank you. It feels like home, like a little north wind day at Oceanside. So, yeah, stoked to, stoked to pull that out. Keep going. So much action in this heat. It's so um, Lucas kind of buckling or breaking the board. Were you worried for your board for the, for the air? Yeah, I mean, this is my magic board. I actually had two of them and buckled the other one. So this is kind of like my last, the one that I'm saving. So... Yeah, it's a little worry in the air, but it sucks. it's holding up pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it is working really well over there, moving a lot of water, so you must be feeling confident for the finals. Yeah, I'm super excited for the final. Kind of same game plan, just wave by wave, and we'll see how it goes. Well, sick. Can't wait to see more of that. Good luck for the next one. Maybe it's a little something for friends and family. It was shout out for the Shaper, maybe? Yeah, shout out Mayhem, Matt Biolas, and this is actually one of Kolohe's old boards, so... He gave it to me, and thank you for that. Thanks to anyone watching at home. Well, lucky charm there. Thank you so much. Have a good day. <laughs>
I think that is a sign of things to come. <laughs> All right. So last up blue, 4.0. While we were on that break, we saw Zoe Benedetto actually take off on a bomb on the outside. So if we can queue up that replay of red, last of red, so we can let the home, so we can let the audience at home see it. Here we go. This is green. This is blue, Leilani McGonagall on this inside wave. Staying busy at the beginning of this heat. She's already got a couple waves under her belt and she chooses to take this one. Carving this wave all the way in with a couple nice turns and uh, she's back out in the back. Meanwhile, one of the cleanest open faces wave come in with a big power turn right there. Biggest turn of the morning at the moment with a couple big connections and a good finish with for Red, Zoe, and she goes all the way on to the inside to finish this thing off, and she'll get back out the back. That's going to be a really nice score there, Lou. Yeah, that comes in at 8.83, Zoe, 8.83. Yeah, the difference there was the size of the wave, how clean it was, and how much vertical options it gave in front of her to attack compared to... Leilani's a little bit smaller wave. So Leilani has plenty of time, 23 minutes, to get uh, some of these sets and get back in this game here, Lou. Both of these young ladies have been ripping all week, and it's been, uh, this is a great matchup, as both of them are used to coming from behind, and uh, plenty of time left on the clock, 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, well, the driver of SA2685, SA2685, you need to move your vehicle. You are blocking the bus. That is SA2685. As we watch Red up and riding on the inside, looking to back up that 883. A surfer on the outside was just a little too far in and had to go under that second wave. But the more important thing is that Surfer in red, backs up that 883 with 22 minutes remaining. She leaves the surfer in blues, Leilani McGonigal, with priority on the outside by herself. And you see Leilani there, hailing from Costa Rica. She is the champion out here in this very event in 2018. She won, and Luca Messinas also won so plenty former champions, plenty aspiring champions. Here we go, Leilani on the outside. Can she get in? Yes, she does. Look at this wave ahead of her coming off the bottom. And look at the barrel just roll off. It's still barreling. That was the first potential barrel that we've seen for the day. You could just see how that wave just lifted up. So coming up in the next heat, and another wave on the inside, last of red. 3.57 red, 3.57. So surfer in blue, you now require a 7.74. As we watch the replay of red coming up into the pocket, big power turn right there. Another big hit as she was able to crack this thing three times on a bigger set wave and she wrote it all the way in. And this is her 8.83 earlier and she uh, had another wave after that. And here's Leilani, got a really nice wave. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, uh, but that wave really peeled off all the way and that was a missed opportunity for her. But she's back out there with priority with 20 minutes and 20 seconds left. As Red's last wave came in, it's a 3.57. Yeah, Leilani had the wave that could have actually given her a really decent score. She was just ever so slightly behind that peak. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like if she angled at a 45 degree angle and drove out and around, she would have had a, a wall that was never ending 
right there, giving major opportunities. It was a clean stand-up wave, and I think that she just took off and went a little too straight, and the wave just ran away from her lift. But again, 19 minutes remaining, plenty of time. That's almost like a regular heat with just one minute gone. So uh, reset right here as a priority goes to blue and second priority to red. So this is just like a brand new heat starting over with that extra 10 minutes there, Lou. Yeah, the waves seem to be cleaning up, getting a little tidal push here now. So hopefully this set continues to roll on through Giving these ladies something to showcase their skills on. We have the surfer in red, Zoe Benedetto, on the outside, sitting on an 8.83 and a 3.5. And Leilani McGonagall from Costa Rica, sitting on a 4.6 and a 4.0. Surfer in blue requires a 7.7. .7. So here we go. Blue with priority. Up and riding. Leilani going up in the lip, kind of. Holds back the first turn as that wave's really steepened up on her. So unfortunate. She was just a little late getting to the lip and she had to just hold it back just a little bit and it threw her off. Threw off the timing and it threw her off the wave. So here we go, surfer in red. She's looking at this nugget on the outside as she goes up and riding and she goes up and out the back. So there's another one popping up right in front of her, but I don't think she's gonna be out far enough. And look at this wave, how beautiful that is. This is Soup Bowl at its best. All we need is about five more feet and we will be in for a treat. Probably not gonna happen, <laughs> but it's nice to wish for it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but when it gets like eight to 10 more feet, then you're kinda going, when yeah. it's sucking up dry there on that reef. No, I don't want it that big because, well, maybe after the 12 and unders go out. I don't want to cancel that. <laughs> Make no bones about it. That boy down by field coming up in the final later on. And um, Corbin, Trent Corbin, go and check them out on Instagram. Trent is a little barrel riding wizard totally unafraid is out here on the biggest of big days i think he's only 11 years old or 12 years old we have a an amazing crop of young talent coming up on this island so last of blue 327 does not factor in and she is up the point she is pulling for this one zoe's not even looking at it here we go, Leilani McGonagall up and riding, throwing it vertical up in the lip, out onto the open face, another nice down curve, eye in the north section. Can she hang on? Yes, she does, and she rides out cleanly. So she got busy early on that wave. So that was a well-surfed wave by Leilani. Can we show the replay of Blue's last wave, please? Actually, let's stick with Red. and We're gonna stick with Red as she goes up and riding on the outside. Another nice barrel section. Wow, she went right up in that lip. Zoe Benedetto from Stewart Beach, Florida. Spending this year on last year on the Challenger Series, trying to get back on there. As we see Leilani attacking this, driving from one turn into the next with speed, power, and flow, and finishing in that major power pocket right there. as we have Red taken off on behind her, coming into a big snap, getting covered back up by that white water, zigzagging back and forth, and waiting for this thing patiently to set up as she slashes on the inside there. 
throwing a little water and finishing this wave. And uh, we have some nice scores coming in back to back. All right, the driver of XB1186, XB1186, please move your vehicle. You are blocking somebody in that urgently needs to leave. XB1186. So last of blue, 733. Blue, 7.33. Last of red, 6.17. So blue, you are in second position requiring a 7.6. Priority sits with the surfer on the outside in blue with 13 minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, the biggest wave with the most radical maneuver closest to the curl with major combinations with speed, power, and flow being rewarded very nicely here. And uh, this has been a really good battle at the moment, back and forth. A couple opportunities that were missed, but nevertheless, there's still plenty of time and priority with blue with 13 minutes and 20 seconds left. That last 7.33 of Leilani puts her right back in this game as she was able to get vertical and bring that board back from 12 o'clock. Red, your last wave was a 6.17. You are in first position. Blue requires a 7.6. Blue paddling for this one. Comes around the first section. She's going up in the lip, working it out onto the open face. Unfortunately, that wave really didn't have much with it, so she goes out the back, leaving the surfer in red to retain priority with 12 minutes remaining. Surfer's in the next seat coming up. We're going to see Kira Pinkerton and Talia Swindow. As we go back to the replay for blue, Elani sets this up. Unfortunately, that thing doesn't stack up quite there, but she comes in, tags this. Zigzags back and forth. Unfortunately, this wave just let her down, but nevertheless, good surfing by her. She would get back out there and look for more of a wall. It looks like Pavoni's, but going the opposite way. So Kira is also a champion out here on the junior side. She won the inaugural Live Like Xander Junior Pro. You are tuned in to the BTMI Barbados Store Pro QS 5000. This is semifinal heat number one in the women's. We're going to be watching Kira Pinkerton take on Talia Swindell coming up next. Then we're going to move into QS 5000 men's. Coming up in the first heat, we are going to see Barbados' very own Joshua Burke. He is running up in last year's event, taking on Luca Messinas. Luca Messinas also won this event in 2018. So plenty champions out here in the water. Here we go, Blue. She's going to give this one a look. Just trying to stay busy. She goes up and out the back.
As you see, the beach starting to fill up. We are expecting a massive crowd down here today. I can remember days back in the 80s and 90s where I kid you not, you could not see any part of that beach at all. Certain people lined up all the way to the edge of the water. That was before the days of webcasts and forecasts and all of that stuff. When you actually drive into Supo over the hill and you come down um, Horse Hill, it's the first chance you get to see the East Coast. We had some indicators where you would be driving at six o'clock in the morning and looking up at the tall palm trees up on the hill to see if where the wind was blowing from. As we watch Zoe uh, Leilani McGonagall up and riding, going nice vertical turn, a little bit of a smaller wave. But she's just trying to manufacture something, hoping to cut down her requirement. And she's gonna go out the back and then you'd just be driving. So you literally drive uphill pretty much the whole way till you get all the way coming into St. Joseph and then you just break the crest and you just look straight out onto the horizon and that's when the excitement used to begin. Coming down the hill, you could just see the lines coming in and it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing feeling. As Surfer in red, looking at this one, she is currently in the lead, sitting on an 8.8 .8 and a 6.1. So the last of blue coming in at a 4.7 goes into your score line, but does not cut the requirement. You still need a 7.6. Yeah, Lou, I remember that back in the 80s coming to those competitions and this beach was completely packed as we go back on this replay of Leilani. She goes up nicely into this first vertical turn, carves it back, waiting for this thing to line back up. Doesn't really give her too much more opportunity, but she makes the most of this. She'll get back out there. Did better her lower score, but... Se seven minutes, 10 seconds. Last of blue was a four six four seven zero. So that does not cut down her requirement. She still requires a 7.6, seven minutes remaining. Yeah, again, Lou, uh, with 10,000 people down there on the beach, you know, my first time here walking down there, be careful with that reef. It was just barely under the sand. I almost took my toe off. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first memory of Barbados. Welcome <laughs> to Barbados. Kick, kick the reef under the sand. <laughs> Split my big toe open. Like you couldn't believe. Back then, I mean, there's a lot of houses that, you know, the hillside along here, you know, comes up from the coastline and kind of goes up and there's a bunch of houses on the hillside and there's little balconies and galleries all across the hillside and you'd be out there surfing in the heat and you'd look back and all you could see was people everywhere. Big shout out to one of our sponsors, Sunbum. Have everything set up on the beach. You can stop by their tent, get some free product. Also want to thank, there you go, you see the big monkey on the beach. It's pretty cool when the wind blows, his arms shake like he's running down the beach. I thought you were sitting next to me. That thing looks, that thing is about 25 feet tall. Look at how tall it is. Thank you very much for your support, Sunbum. Also want to thank the BTMI, Diamonds International, TDC, SLAM, Y103, and for rentals, the BHTA, Zaccio's Restaurant, for the lovely breakfasts and lunches that we've been getting. Check them out. They're just on the hill, just on the other side of Parlor. Guys, look at this wave. Going to hit the reef, and it's just going to line up, and it's just going to roll across the reef. When this wave gets solid, it absolutely resembles backdoor pipeline and that is coming from the goat himself kelly slater with four minutes 57 seconds remaining surfer in red still holding that lead down surfer in blue they're going to both turn and look at this one but these are the ones that are almost impossible to get into as that is a north peak and when it gets big you will know where you are when that wave hits you, trust me.
when it swells. Yeah, I'd like to thank Worm up here, changing all these priorities. He's that's like lifting a bunch of weights all day with all that wood there. It's not an easy job, that priority. You, gotta, you cannot take your eyes off the water for a second. Uh, what makes it even worse is that when a surfer is surfing, red is three minutes, 40 seconds remaining, 340. When a surfer is surfing, you can't even watch the surfing because you gotta watch the water to see if anybody paddles. Here we go. Blue up and right and on the outside. Nice turn. I think the wave size is going to let her down, though. As Set lifts up on the outside, no reason for Zoe to go. She just wants to sit out there and hold her position. We uh, have on screen Leilani paddling back, back, back out after this wave. That wave, uh, in my opinion, is not going to go into her score line, but she needs to pick a better wave with uh, two minutes and 20 seconds left as priority is with red controlling the clock. And uh, Leilani still has a good chance with two minutes left as we watch this replay here. She comes up, does a nice cut back into the pocket here, wave stands up, she tags it again. Unfortunately, right here is where the wave just starts letting her down. She's not able to get that major combination of big turns that they're looking for, but she does nevertheless finish this one on the inside. And it comes in, rolling in here, Lou, at a All right, last up, Blue, 4.17, 4.17 for Blue. So one minute, 30 seconds remaining. Blue, you still require that 7.6. And this is where the cat and mouse come around here. Blue under the one minute and 30 seconds with priority. All right, ladies in the next seat, please just hold your positions there. I will let you get into position before we start the seat. So the winner of this heat will go, will be the first finalist in the QS 3000. Both of these ladies are former champions here. So we are guaranteed to have at least one former champion in the final with 50 seconds remaining. Zoe having a chance, if she can hang on, having a chance to be a back-to-back -back winner. Twenty-five seconds remaining. Here we go, 15 seconds, and Leilani's looking to go left. Throws out the fins, can't hang on as she goes down as we're going to count this one in. In five, four, three, two, and one. So we have our first finalist in the QS Women's 5000. So Zoe Benedetto is off to the finals. For the second straight year, she is the reigning champion of this event. So surfers in the water, please hold your positions. Stand by. We're on a short hold. We're going to cut to a commercial break, and we will be right back with heat number two, semifinal of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro Women's. Stay tuned.
come from a place We have up every single race Paradise is be name Come over and you will fall in love I should stay Have a special time of the year Where we just get away Most beautiful display Go search for many other ways All right, back to live action. You are tuned into the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro. This is semifinal heat number two in the women's. Winner of this heat will move into the final to meet the reigning champion Zoe Benedetto. Coming up in this heat, in the red jersey, we have Kira Pinkerton. And in the blue jersey, we have Talia Swindell. Both of these ladies have qualified for the Challenger Series. And they're way, way up inside. An empty lineup at Super Bowl. They're just pushing each other all the way up the point. Well, that's what happens when you get Malibu going against Trussell's two right-hand points. These girls are from California. Both of them grown up on right-hand point breaks here. So this is a, a fun battle here to watch. Kira Pinkerton in red, and Talia Swindell in blue as a battle for that inside position there, Lou. Like we said, this is a chess match at the start of these heats, and uh, this could be the very important exchange there we at go. the start of this heat. Blue is going to go up and right, and, and she bangs the left. That wasn't even the left of Super Bowl. That was the other left, <laughs> even below Super Bowl. So that's, that's, that was a pretty nutsy move there. Wow. Can we cue up that replay, please, in the booth, that last of blue? Coming back from that top of the point here, she sets this thing up, eyeballs this oncoming section, and she just blasts this thing to pieces, Lou, and that's exactly what they're looking for. The biggest wave with the most critical turn in the power pocket. 9.77, 977. For one turn, with that oncoming section just blowing that lip to pieces for a 9.77. That was spectacular surfing. Here's the replay again, Jim. She just eyes that section up. So much power and control uh, on that one big hit. It was just a section coming at her. She eyeballed it, followed that lip line, and put everything she had into it Here as she she's up and riding again. Lou? Throws it up twice, but she can't hang on to that one. So surfer in red, Kira, she is just sitting on the outside, holding down that priority. So it was just a one point of that second attempt for the surfer in blue. Kira is a seasoned veteran, and here she goes. She's up and right on the outside, coming off the bottom. Nice big wrapping cutback. Throws it up, answers it back. <laughs> wow, she just put her hands behind her back and said, okay, I can do that too. So we're going to see where the judges are going to go with that. That wasn't as a big a section but definitely gonna go up there.
Yeah, she takes off here. She does a big old carved setup here, eyeball in this big section, looking for that power pocket, lands it, and she's happy with that. That should put her back in contention of this heat, Lou. 767 for red, 7.67. You now require a 3.1. So this is going to become the battle of the backups. The skill has been set and the bar has been raised. Yep. This is semifinal number two of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 3000. All right, well, we have a little break in the action. We are going to send it down to the glass. Standing by with Amaya is the reigning champion, Zoe Benedetto. We here at the San Luke Glass with the first woman to qualify for the finals here in the QS BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. The reigning champion, Zoe Benedetto, and her local fans. <laughs> yeah, really excited to make that last seat. Um, and finally have some of the stress off of me, and yeah, I couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, I mean, you dropped him. Great, a point, a three, right? That must feel amazing under your feet. Yeah, I was nervous going into that heat, um, so it definitely helped my nerves settle down a lot. Um, but yeah, I just kind of feel like I haven't really even opened up this event yet, and that definitely felt good, just paying off being patient um, and not rushing my first like solid score. Um, yeah, it felt great. Yeah, I can't wait to see more. How are you going to prepare for the final later on today? Um, probably just hang with my support crew. Um, hydrate, eat a little something, not too heavy. Um, just watch the waves and stay at peace, not stress out about it. All right, sweet. Congratulations once again, and good luck for the finals. Okay, back to live action. During that interview break, we saw Kira Pinkerton up and riding. She dropped a 4.67 and went into the lead, creating a requirement for the surfer in blue of a 2.57. 22 minutes and 35 seconds remaining. We'll watch this replay. As we go to the replay, Kira sets this thing up in the pocket. Nice snap. Roundhouse back into the pocket. And she zigzags setting this thing back up, not given that much opportunity, but she comes in and does a nice finish on the inside here. As we're looking for those bigger waves, Lou, with that coming from behind the pocket, with that big power pocket in front of you for those power scores. So uh, expecting some more fireworks in this heat. They both started off with uh, bigger waves with oncoming sections. So bigger power pocket, power turns, got power scores. Okay, coming up immediately following this heat, we're gonna change gears and go back into the men's QS 5000. We're gonna see Barbados' very own Joshua Burke. He was runner up at this event last year. He's trying to one up himself from that position. He's gonna be taking on the 2018 champion in Luca Messinas. So please stay tuned for that. That is going to be semifinal number one. And then coming up in semifinal number two, we're going to be seeing Owen Moss. He's going to be taking on Michael Dunphy. So two boys from the East Coast battling it out. Dunphy is a former champion here as well. So plenty former champions advance right down into the thing. We've never had a repeat performance in a champion. So maybe this year is the year. With 20 minutes and 50 seconds, Priority is sitting on the outside with a surfer in blue. Talia Swindell dropping a 9.77 on her first wave. And here we go, Red's looking at that and she lets it go.
So you are tuned in to the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro and the Live Legs on a Junior Pro. This is heat number two in the semifinals of the QS 5000 men's, sorry, women's, men's is coming up next. We already have our first finalist, Zoe Benedetto, and the winner of this matchup between Kira Pinkerton and Talia Swindell will move on to meet Zoe in the final coming up a little later on. We're gonna go straight into men's QS action following this heat. And then we're set for the finals. Coming up in the first final of the day is going to be the 12 and under specialty division. Every year we have done a 12 and under division since inception. This is the 12th year we have been running these events. It has always been a junior pro. And then we added the QS, I guess about eight years ago with a 1,000. We elevated that up to a 3,000 and we shifted over to the, East Co the South Coast and had two events at Brandon's. And then due to COVID, one of these events was canceled and the following year, we decided to pair them up together, which is the best thing we could have done. We used to do two events a year, the juniors in November and the QS in March. And we decided to have the two events together and it has been a dream since then. So we were able to remove a lot of the amateur divisions and we have left the 12 and unders. That division is very special to me. That is where it all started. I can remember years ago, Jake Marshall being here as just a tiny grom. We had an under 12 and an under 16 that year. Jake won the under 16s and Xander won the under 12s. And I have a picture of the two of them on the stage with their cups. And when Jake qualified for the world tour, I sent it to John and he sent it off to Jake. And it was a very special moment. Since then, we've qualified quite a few surfers, Crosby, Griffin, I mean, North America region has quite a few surfers. Every single one of them have come through this Junior Pro and this QS. Hopefully one day we will end up with a Challenger Series and potentially a CT event right here at Super Bowl. At 17 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. The ladies on the outside looking at this bump and they're just gonna go right over it because it's not offering too much. Here we go, ladies putting themselves into position. Server in blue holding priority. Is she gonna take it? Yes, she is, and here we go. Talia Swindell up and riding out onto the open face. Nice big hack off the top for the first turn. Cutting it back onto the open face, banging it off the white water. Is she gonna go high road or low road? She goes the high road, throws it up, and hangs on to the finishing maneuver, leaving Kira Pinkerton in the red jersey on the outside with priority. So Talia is going to put a backup score with that 9.77 as she is only looking to replace a one-point ride. As we go to the replay, a nice, smooth, solid wave here. She attacks that lip. Very smooth transition into a cutback into the white water. Zigzagging this wave back and forth. Clean wave with a nice finish. This is a... Nice backup wave by her and leaving Kira Pinkerton out the back with 15 minutes and 45 seconds left. And uh, these girls definitely are just catching set waves here, Lou. They've changed the strategy of uh, man on man here. Head to head. Yeah, that leaves Kira on the outside, sitting with priority by herself. She is a seasoned competitor and she is gonna get her requirement. So last of blue, 6.5 blue, 6.5. So surfer in red, you now require an 8.6. So 
So red requiring an 8.6. And it might sound like a lot, but to Kira Pinkerton, that's just one wave. We saw her drop a nine, can't remember exactly yesterday, but it was well over the nine point range. So she is more than capable of attaining that score on a single wave. She has 14 minutes and 40 seconds remaining to attain that wave. She's gonna wait patiently on the outside. Again, the biggest wave with the most radical maneuver with combination of major maneuvers, the speed, power, and flow, are been highly rewarded with a 9.77 and a 7.67 already today in this heat. So we saw Kira Pinkerton yesterday in her quarterfinal drop a 9.67. So she is more than capable of attaining that 8.6. Yeah, as long as the waves show up, we'll see a lot of hot action by these two women. They're absolutely destroying the waves out here all week long, and now they're in the semifinals. And uh, this is great to see way up inside blue talia she's eyeing up that north section very similar turn to her first one just nowhere near as radical she really timed that first turn on that first wave and she was way overextended free falling on an eight foot face wave, straight to the bottom, with perfect composure. All right, last of blue, 377 blue, not going to raise the requirement for red. So red, you still require that 8.6. 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. It is an absolute beautiful day here in Barbados. That little wave just rolled under all of them and hit the reef and lifted up. That's where all the little groms sit picking off all the little inside waves. Oh yeah, the under 12s are gonna have a ball out there. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun little heat to watch. Yeah, I think the best wave I had it when I was that age was Steamers Lane. The only problem is it was 48 degree water. I didn't get to enjoy it at all. Yeah. Well, here we go, watching Blue. She's gonna roll the dice on this one. And she holds back, she is in second priority, so no harm, no foul. As Surfer in red, just sitting on the outside, being patient. 
Yeah, she, she's out there looking for a big set. She's gonna. She knows what she needs, so she's just sitting there patiently as second priority is kind of hunting around on the inside, trying to find something to better her low score on. Here we go, Blue. She's looking at this one. She's working it out to the north section, throws it up vertical, and she can't hang on to that maneuver, so she goes down. Nine minutes, 30 seconds remaining. So coming up next, we are gonna see Joshua Burke in the red jersey and Luca Messinas in the blue jersey. Joshua Burke from right here in Barbados. He is a soup bowl guru. He knows this wave like the back of his hand. Eight minutes, 30 seconds. So the surfer and red gonna start to hunt around a little bit. Just reposition yourself. As you see the girls on your screen. All right, seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Blue up and riding. As she tags this thing on the inside, it doesn't have much on offer after this, but she's gonna zigzag it in, try to create a finishing turn here. Six minutes, 10 seconds. Yeah, as we go to the replay of blue, she goes back up into the pocket, brings it back, a little bit smaller of a wave. Essing back and forth, tagging a little hit here and cutting back, but this wave not really giving her that vertical hit opportunity as uh, it's really a flat wave. Uh, but she gets to reposition herself on the way back out as Red sit sitting out there waiting for a set wave, knowing the score that she needs, and she will be patient, looking for that one opportunity. Hopefully something will roll in to give her an opportunity in the next five minutes.
All right, four minutes and 45 seconds. Four minutes. Yeah, Lou, it's been quite a while since you've seen one of those big sets, so I'm thinking something should roll in here before the end of the heat. Here we go, Blue, up and right in. Big floater. And she goes down two minutes, sorry, three minutes, 20 seconds, 320. As we go back to the replay, she takes off, throws this thing up there into a off the lip floater and the wave had no more to offer. So she just jumped off. She's just staying busy under that second priority as uh, Red is holding that priority down, looking for one of those bigger waves so she has the opportunity to get a score, to give herself a chance in this heat. Two minutes 30. So last of blue, 4.0. So your requirement remains the same, 8.6 for the surfer in blue, 8.6 for the surfer in red to move into first, blue dropping a 4.0, two minutes and 10 seconds. This was like Virginia Beach, we'd be waiting for one of those submarines to go by. You're right, and then let me tell you, it's so amazing when they do. It's like 10 waves in a set. <laughs> One set comes. You see the submarine, everyone grabs their boards and runs out as fast <laughs> as they can. I've also ran out to catch one of those waves a little, I'll be honest. One minute, 30 seconds. So the discipline of a professional surfer, Kira sat out there for almost 16 minutes. But there is a certain type of wave that she is looking for that will give her that 8.6. And she is not going to take anything. Servers in the next heat, you're, please wait, please wait. One minute left there, Lou, and it looks like we have a bump on the horizon there. Here we go. Kira's going to pull the trigger. Here we go. She waited a long time for this. Let's see what she's going to do. Here she is. Kira Pinkerton up and riding. Coming out onto the first section. Nice wrapping cutback. Going out, throwing it vertical. She's got a north section ahead of her. Big cutback. Next heat. Hold your positions, guys. Finishing strong. But 20 seconds remaining. So let's wow, see what the wow, judges wow. are going to do. Servers in the next heat. You guys are in the lineup. Servers in the next heat. You're going to go to second priority if you paddle one more stroke. Blue up and right in. So blue goes up in the lip. We're going to give you enough time, I promise you, as we count this one in. Three, two, one. So we're waiting for this score for Red to come in. She has a big requirement. I've been saying it about 25 times. She caught that wave with 30 seconds remaining. 
So surfers, when you get out there, just hold your positions. We're going to watch this. As the replay goes, she gets a bigger wave, does a nice setup, big roundhouse cut back there, comes up, snaps it in the power pocket, all the way around, rotating this thing, letting this thing set back up, bigger wall, and tags it again for a finish, and she likes it, She's screaming to the beach. Waiting, I don't know, over 15 minutes for that, I'd be screaming too. That's right, that was an absolute release of all that anxiety for 15 minutes. As you see, our two semifinalists working their way up the beach. We're gonna wait for the score. It's gonna be decided on the beach. Yeah, either way, both girls give a big round of applause to both of these girls for putting on a great show. And uh, coming down to, still don't know the results, but coming down to the very last wave of red to give her a shot on this. And uh, we'll uh, wait for those scores. And um, yeah, this is great surfing here. All right, as we see her walking at the beach, she's waiting on that score. All right, here we go. Blue, you require, I'm uh, sorry, red, you require an 8.61. You drop a 7.83, not enough. So blue, you will advance on to the final to meet Zoe Benedetto coming up a little later on. Wow, that was a great heat, Lou. Total was uh, 16.27 to uh, Kira's 15.50. Uh, that was a very good heat and uh, patience by Kira. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be right back with the start of semifinal number one in the men's QS 5000. Stand by. Introducing the crown of life. It's the only 90 faceted modern dome shaped diamond with 24 bezel facets on the crown giving it arguably three times more sparkle than any other diamond cut out there. This is Crown of Light. Okay, welcome back to live action. Coming up in this heat, we have Surfer in Red from Barbados, Joshua Burke, and Surfer from Peru in the blue jersey, Luca Messinas. Josh Burt is a runner-up in this very event last year. Luca Messinas is the 2018 champion. Joshua Burt trying to get to the finals. Yeah, Lou, the Reds last wave in that last heat, the difference was on that score was that outside part didn't give her the opportunity as we watch. Here we go, Red, he's scratching to get into this one. Josh Burt, and he does not raid as the wave kind of shuts down. So Surfer's still battling for priority on the outside with 28 minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Berg is gonna pull on this insider. Looking, no ride. So the two Surfers now starting to make their way back into the bowl. Messinas turns to the right. He's paddling back up. He sees something up inside. He's gonna turn on this one. Here we go, Luca Messinas, he's been coming here since he was about 12 years old, up and riding. Out onto the open face, big open hack. Nice wrapping cut back as he eyes up the north section, throws it up. And he's gonna get back out onto the open face. So he's looking to get a finishing maneuver. Here he goes, nice vertical hack on the inside. That's Luca Messinas. So that will leave Surfer in red, Joshua Burke on the outside, holding priority as we look at this replay. Yeah, as you see him driving through these turns, getting very low on his bottom turn, swinging this, and you can just see the power in every single turn. That's his world tour experience. This guy is one of the toughest competitors you'll ever get in the heat or wear in a jersey. Lucas Messina snapping it again on the inside for a finish. And 
Nevertheless, he has one of the best competitors ever out of Barbados in his heat. So this is a well-stacked heat. 8.5 for blue, 8.5. 8.5, so Luca Messinas opens with a bang, 8.5. So we have a little break in the action. We're gonna cut to the glass. Standing by with Amaya is Talia Swindal, taking the win and advancing into the finals. We're here at the San Luc Glass with Talia Swindal, who will be joining Zoe Benedetto in a women QS final of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. Talia, you open up that heat with a near perfect score on a critical single turn wave. <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm so stoked. I was kind of almost like just, I don't even remember. I mean, I remember it, but like I don't really remember it just because I was so in the flow, but that felt insane. <laughs> I'm so happy to be in the final. Yeah, well, that was epic. And then, yeah, you got to back it up with like a six point or so. And then towards the end when Kira caught that wave, how, what were you feeling? Yeah, no, I that wave came in with like 30 seconds left and it looked like such a good wave. So I'm really thankful that I made the final at Kira Surf so good. So that was a fun battle with her. And yeah, excited to be in the final with one of my best friends. Yeah, I can't wait to see it later. How are you going to regroup and reset for it? Definitely cool down, <laughs> drink some water and just get back in the zone. Yeah. Perfect. Can't wait to see it. More nine points, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, maybe give a little shout out to friends and family back at home. Yeah, just shout out to my dad and my sister and all my friends and the Val Surf crew, the Channel Islands crew, anyone supporting me. So thankful for all your support and love and let's bring it home. Yes, I thank you so much. Thank See you later. <laughs> okay, back to live action. You see Joshua Burke putting himself into position. This is live, here we go, Joshua Burke up and riding. Trying to answer back that 8.5, nice big wrapping cutback. Going up in the lip, big down carve out onto the open face. Another slash, has more wave to work with. He's eyeing up this inside section. Here he goes, Joshua Burke throws it up, pushes out the fins. And on the outside, Blue, he's up and riding. On a bully section, throwing it vertical, up in the lip. Big down carve. As Jim said, showing his CT experience, another wrapping cutback, finishing strong on the end, 9.1. Holding priority with 18 minutes remaining. So we got one more semifinal to go. You are tuned into. We got one more semifinal to go, number two in this BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000. This is the highest rated QS on the North American Tour. As I said before, we started as a 1000, elevated to a 3000, and now we are at 5000. So I want to say a big thank you to the BTMI for all your support all through the years. You have been part of this event each and every year for 12 years, so thank you very much without your support this event and our surfers here in Barbados would not be getting this opportunity. So thank you once again. So Jim, during this downtime with the athletes out there waiting on a score, waiting on waves to come through, what do you tell your surfers how to keep calm, keep their composure, not get too in their own head? Well, you just got to be prepared for you get, before you even get out there. You should have a couple strategies. And uh, being calm is like the main key. And uh, talking to yourself on what you need. And, you know, to be patient like Kira Pinkerton to the last heat. She knew she needed a big score, so she sat there and waited because she knew it was going to take one big score to beat yeah, the, she, she really went for it, too. So she, she at least gave herself an opportunity, and she had to settle her nerves down and just sit there and wait for that wave to be patient. I think that's really important, keeping the nerves down, because then when that opportunity does come, you don't want to snatch at it. You don't want to make a silly mistake. 
you know? Yeah, even paddling into the wave is crucial because it's fa the faster you paddle in from behind the peak, you've got to come from behind the peak so you give your opportunity with a big wall in front of you to attack yeah. it. Most vertical section you can find. Judges love to see those steep vertical walls. Yeah, Lucas Messina on that last wave, he just took it just to test his fins out to make sure they're still holding in there. He just came up, had one turn, just really laid into it just to keep busy yeah. under. Yeah, looking at the replays between Luca and Josh's waves, Luca just had the slightly bowlier wave, more of a vertical section, almost trying to barrel. He actually got a little, what we call a shampoo, a little head wet right at the end, just to cool off. Yeah, usually when you, in my opinion, when you hit the quarterfinals, that's when you want to do your best surfing. For sure. Um, it's not how you start, it's how you end, right? Yeah, you, you gotta, you know, it depends on who's in your heat. I mean, if you, you uh, got a stacked heat right at the beginning, then you might have to surf it like that quarter, quarterfinal heat where you, you're gonna have to throw everything at it. But uh, the momentum building up to those quarterfinals are pretty crucial and learning. Uh, like we saw Blair Barton earlier uh, in his junior heat. Yesterday he sat out there, got one wave and held priority and held priority and just the big wave never came to really let him back in and in it his is junior he he made sure he didn't make the same mistake he yeah. threw the dice and caught like six or seven waves to advance well as you said you do try to go into the water with a kind of a strategy in your head but then you know depending on what the ocean throws at you you have to be able to adjust and depending on what your competitor throws at you you have to be able to adjust but i think the key is to remain calm through everything and when that opportunity comes, let your talent shine through. Yeah, I really like it when somebody throws something really big in my heat, and then I want to go do the same thing. Here we go. Blue, Luca. He's up and riding, coming out onto the open face. Nice down carve. Working it onto the North Peak, blowing the fins. Beautiful technique. Showing lots of flair on that wave. He's looking to replace a 717. It was a smaller way, but he went to town on it. So, you know, going back to what you all were saying when we're waiting for this score to drop, it's also the discipline of a competitor being able to recognize what wave to go on, not going on a wave. You know, if you need a seven, you know, not going on a wave that only has a scoring potential of a five or a six. And in my opinion, that's why I think a lot of former World Tour surfers should be judges because they are excellent judges. And, you know, it, it, they're needed up in, you know, not that we have bad judges, no, by no means, don't get me wrong, but, you know, former World Tour surfers will, will make excellent judges and, you know, it's something I think WSL should try and pursue and try and encourage them to come and do it. That's you know, why Most I of them are coaches. I, I, I honestly cannot believe the amount of birds that have flown through this <laughs> tank in the last two days. It is incredible. As surfer in red, Joshua Burke, he's looking at this one, he's gonna pull the trigger, here we go. Joshua Burke from Barbados, throwing it up, big air, spins out the fins, makes a maneuver on his way, on his way to the inside. So that was a big maneuver, progressive maneuver, trying to work this one all the way down to the inside, he's trying to better that 6.5 which will cut the requirement as the surfer in blue raised it with a 7.6 on his last wave your last of blue 7.6 as we watch this replay yeah josh getting the crowd on his feet with that big opening maneuver throwing out the tail landing in reverse and showing plenty of control to ride out cuts back towards the white water but unfortunately the wave doesn't really offer him that north section for him to go on and charge down but that is a well ridden wave and hopefully that will cut into that requirement. So last of blue, last of blue it was a 7.6. So that raises the requirement for red to a 9.6. Red is currently sitting on a 6.5 with 11 minutes remaining, waiting for this score to drop for red. You see the scores dropping on your screen. 7.33, 7.33 for red. So red, your requirement 
is an 8.7, 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Priority is going to shift to the surfer in blue, Luca Messinas, so we're gonna see him get really quiet, waiting for another wave to better that 7.6. And I think it's gonna flip-flop a little bit with Burt is gonna get real busy. He's gonna try and hunt down the lineup. 10 minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, totally agree, Lou. We'll see a total switch of strategy from the two surfers now. You'll have the surf in blue with his priority waiting for that nice set to roll through. And then we'll see the local boy, Josh Burke and Brad, getting busy, trying to use all his local knowledge to pick off the best waves he can under priority and manufacture the scores necessary. And the best surfers can do that. Yeah, that last wave of Lucas Messina, he was able to put major combinations from one turn to the next and big power hack with a tail release and uh, with the speed, power, and flow. He connected that thing really well and they rewarded him with a 7-6. Here we go, Bert. As I said, he's gonna get busy. He's up and riding. He's gonna try and manufacture something. He blows the fins once again and he's gonna stick with it, cutting it back and he's gonna go out the back. So he's gonna get busy on this now. He, has, he needs an 877. And we all know that he can do that. Look, Messina up the requirement just a little bit with that last wave. So that was an important wave. If, if he doesn't up the requirement, Burke is looking at like a 75, which is very attainable. So he's gonna look to better that 7.6 going on through the heat with nine minutes remaining, Josh, nine minutes. Well, if anyone knows this reef, uh, it would be Josh Burke. Oh yeah. What do you think, and his dad. <laughs> it was nice seeing Mark Holder, Mark Holder down here. Yeah, uh, shout out to the boss. It was nice uh, last night, great party, and get to see some of the legends, some of the guys I, I grew up watching. Here we go, Burke, he's looking hard. Messinas is gonna cover, he's gonna let Red go. Here we go, Josh Burke, he's going left. I know exactly what he's thinking. Eyeing up that section, he has a massive air game. Here he goes, throws it up, vertical, full. Two. So that was a full rotation. Not sure if he rode out of it. Yeah, we're seeing Josh looking for those scores turn into the progression. Looking at this replay, Josh goes left, eyeing up a nice section. As you can see, he just turns on the afterburners, trying to get as much speed so he can launch into that full rotation. Just catches a little bit of a rail on the way down. Doesn't manage to ride out of the white water, but we can see the intent. So coming up next, we're gonna have Michael Dunphy taking on Owen Moss. That will be heat number two in the semifinal. BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000. Presented by Diamonds International. So surfer in blue holding down the lead over the surfer in red, Joshua Burke from Barbados. Red requiring an 8.77. Seeing some of the older locals out here, Lou, from back in the 80s, you got Smokey, Snake, uh, Wendell, Jason, and of course, Mark Holder. That was uh, great to see all those guys in one place here this week. Yeah, we had such a good time last night. All those legends, I said, all the guys that I, I grew up coming down here as a kid, supporting Stuart Stout, Zed Lason. Shout out to all those guys. Smokey, Snake, all the Bash of a crew, Yellow, Hoggy, can't forget Hoggy. We had a great event here to raise some funds for Hoggy a couple years ago, a Masters event, so much fun. All the legends out, Alan Burke, the whole crew. Oh, there's quite a few of them. Oh man, you know, it was so much fun. And then you got all the way down to the young kids yeah. today where you oh. got Dan. Banfield and Seeing Tommy some movement and here, Lou. Here we go, up and yeah. right in red. 
pulling for this one, kicking, scratching, trying to get in. He gets in, but he goes back out. He is in second priority, so no harm, no foul. Yeah, Josh didn't see any scoring potential there. Just decides to kick back out. Five minutes, 35 seconds remaining. Josh is going to turn and look at this one. Like I said before, Lucas Messina is one of the smartest competitors you'll ever get. And uh, Here we go. He's going to let Josh go. Here we go. He's going to get a nice second wave on the inside. Joshua Burke out onto the open face. Nice wrapping. Fooled me. I thought he was going to wrap that cut back. Yeah, so the bowl didn't bowl. He goes up for that lip line floater, and he goes down. Yeah, so the mind of, like, man-on-man -man -man competitor head-to-head -head with uh, Lucas. And Four minutes, 45 seconds remaining. So service in the next seat. You're free to paddle out. Please just stay down in the channel. Please stay in the channel. Yeah, with Lucas and Josh, you know, Lucas is thinking, hey, you know, I've only got four minutes and 30 seconds left. That way really wasn't going to give him what I think it should. Right. So he's going to let him go, and he's just, like, waiting for that time to tick. Josh is like, hey, I'm hoping this wave off offers me something that he didn't see, that I could throw a major maneuver and, for sure. and bang the score out, or at least cut it down so he could get a, another wave. There, Look so. Looking for a score that size, Josh is obviously going to the progression, but then he needs to link that up with some more maneuvers. So he needs a wave that will stretch out and give him the opportunity. That wave just didn't quite bowl back towards and give him the section that you're looking for. It was a weird kind of wave. To use a Bajan term, it was kind of obzucky. Yeah, but we know those little waves that sneak up and roll under that outside ledge kind of have a potential to hit the reef on the inside and just line up. And that is probably what Josh was hoping for. Unfortunately, he just didn't have enough energy. Mm -hmm. so yeah. He's giving it a valiant effort. He's hunting down everything, giving everything a good look. So we have pretty amazing how we saw it just completely flip-flop with that priority. So the surfer in blue holding priority, he knows he's not going on anything. That's going to either better that 7.6 or give Surfer in red that 8.7. That is a tall order. Yeah, yeah. Lewis, we saw a couple of those waves in uh, heats prior that a couple of those came in with top to bottom, like ripping waves. And there we go, red up and riding. Out onto the open face, cutting it back, stalling the board, begging for that north section of wall up. Throws it up, and he goes down, going for the club sandwich. Two minutes, 35, two minutes and 35 seconds. Yeah, Lucas, his job now is he doesn't need another wave. He needs not to give a good one Defense. away. And that's what he's yeah. doing with his priority there. Two minutes and 24 seconds left. Yep, here's the chess match. It's Joss's job to find that opportunity under Lucas's priority and Lucas's job to try to prevent that from happening. Believe me, I've seen a lot more magic. You see some with, movement. Uh, Kern and Slater over the years, so yeah, you never know. So Red, looking at this, coming off the bottom, vertical in the lip, flicks out the tail, completes the maneuver, going to try and get back into that, but he can't do it. So that was one of the waves that he was looking for. However, he was only managed able to manage to catch it on the inside. If he could have caught that wave up in the point, he could have done two more maneuvers before he did that maneuver. He would definitely be on his way to attaining that score, but unfortunately, Messinas was right there holding priority. So he knew that he actually paddled down. Didn't even want that wave. He paddled down to Josh just to make sure that he wasn't gonna get up in the point. But one minute, 10 seconds remaining. Yeah, this heat's been a little quiet after the fireworks we had in the last semifinal for the women. What a heat that was. So Sir. far. 
So far, the surfers not been given the same kind of opportunities. Now we'll see the experience of a Thir tour guy. 30 seconds. So red paddles, blue covers. Here we go, Luca Messinas throwing the alley-oop with 10 seconds remaining. Counting this one in in five, four, three, two, one. So that ends the heat and Surfer in Red's campaign to the victory of this QS 5000. So Surfer in Blue is our first finalist. Luca Messinas, he is the 2018 champion. Joshua Burt coming in second. So I want to congratulate both of these surfers, Joshua and Luca, for qualifying for the Challenger Series coming up. At the end of April, I want to wish both of you good luck. Luca, good luck in the finals. So we have the form, first former champion in the finals. And we have, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. And we will be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. Introducing the crown of life. It's the only 90-faceted modern dome-shaped diamond with 24 bezel facets on the crown, giving it arguably three times more sparkle than any other diamond cut out there. This is Crown of Light. Oh, welcome back to the broadcast. You are tuned in to the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS5000, presented by Diamonds International. Coming up in this seat in the red jersey, we have Michael Dunphy taking on Owen Moss in the blue jersey. Both of these surfers hailing from the east coast of the United States. Michael Dunphy is a former champion here in taking the win in 2022. And Owen Moss, he is already in the final of the junior men's coming up a little later on. So immediately following this heat, we are gonna go straight into the specialty division 12 and under final. We joke all the time that we have a 12 and under contest and invite the QS and the junior men. So once again, congrats to Luca winning the last heat. Commiserations to Josh. Well done, bro. Another semifinal. It's always heartbreaking to go out without giving the opportunity to showcase your talent, but that is the life that surfers live. Sometimes the wave comes, sometimes it don't. All right, coming up in the under 12 final, we have a former champion, Dan the Mom Bonfield, in the red jersey. Kean Brits in the blue jersey, in the white jersey, Trent Corbin, and in green, Asher Eastwood. That is coming up immediately following this semifinal number two. I'm so excited for that under 12 final, Lou. All right, so while we got a little break in the action, we're gonna send it down to the grass with last heat's winner, Luca Messinas. Congratulations, Luca. Yeah, you ready? Here we are, this time Luke last with the first man to qualify for the QS men final, BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International, Luca Messinas from Peru. How is it going? 
All good, uh, happy to make it again. The waves are super fun today. Uh, it's glassy, really nice waves. Uh, that was a good hit with Josh. I know he had a good, he has a good surfing and he's a local guy, so I knew I had to start quick uh, with a good wave. So yeah, the plan worked. So now into the final and just get prepared for that. Yeah, we did see you um, getting those points under your feet quite quickly and then kind of watch Josh under priority catching nuggets and trying to go up in the air. How did that affect your mindset? Well, I knew if I, I had good, two good scores, so I knew I had to just wait. And, and if a really good one comes, uh, I was going to take it. I think all the waves that Josh went didn't have the potential to get the, 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 the score that he needed. But he got a left, actually, and he almost did a full rotation, which that was dangerous. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hard when you, you're just trying to take out waves from, from the other competitor, and you have to choose uh, uh, which one to go and which one to not go. But in the end, all, pla all, all the plan uh, came right, so I'm happy with that. All right, well, it worked out in your favor, for sure. How are you going to regroup for the final? Uh, just relax, watch the waves. Uh, we with my friends here from Peru that are with me, and that's it. Just go again one more time. One more time. Send it all. Yeah. Want to give a little shout out to friends and family, maybe back in Peru. Sí, saludar a toda la gente que me sigue viendo, que me sigue apoyando, que me está tirando las vibras. Saludar a mi familia, mis amigos. Vamos con todo. Una más. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> okay, back to live action. While we were on that short replay, that interview, no waves were ridden. Surfers are putting themselves in position. Here we go, Red's gonna pull the trigger, Michael Dunphy, and he opts to leave it. Wanna take this opportunity, shout out my good buddy, Bruce Willis. Watching from Market City, North Carolina, welcome to the broadcast, Bruce. Bruce, great guy, he was the beach marshal for the ECSE for decades, also a very accomplished surfer. So both of these surfers, Michael Dunphy and Owen Moss, are from the East Coast. Both of these surfers have been coming here for a very long time as well, so they know this wave good. Watch this cat and mouse out the back there, Lou. This can be interesting. These guys battling back and forth for that inside position. And... Uh, so here we go. Are they going to get into position? And they're just a little bit too far inside. So that wave rolls off unwritten. Actually, I was writing it. My, my head actually hurts right now from writing all these waves. <laughs> Mind surfing. <laughs> yeah, that was a decent wave that just rolled through, but unfortunately it didn't really have that steep section in front of it that the judges are looking for. So that was a quality wave and a rideable wave. So once that rolls through the lineup, there will not be a restart. So there will be no restart in this heat if these surfers. So with 23 minutes and 30 seconds remaining, there will be no restart in this heat. Surfers jostling for position. They see something out in the lineup. We got red. There we go. Dunphy dragging for that one, but he can't get in. And that wave is just going to hit the inside bowl section and bowl off. Look at that. And it's still barreling. On, on the outside, Owen Moss, he's going to draw first blood. Here he goes. Floats the first section, he's trying to get out onto the open face, throws it up, vertical, nice vertical lip line floater and comes down completing the maneuver. So. All right, so Owen getting his account opened with a nice little nugget. Just the two maneuvers, but plenty of speed, power and flow on display. I'm gonna break that down with the replay.
There we go, Red, Michael Dunphy, he's up and riding. Going around the section, nice wrapping cutback out onto the open face, throws it up in the north section, completes the maneuver. And he's gonna work this one onto the inside as he does have two nice turns on the outside. So comparing that score of red to the first of blue, we will see who gets the better of the exchange. Yeah, similarly we were in waves, but Dumpy managed to get to the inside. So here we see Owen taking off from deep, just doing a little white water climb to get some speed and then throwing it up into that one section, nice and vert. That's a heavy section he manages to ride out. As we see Dumpy, similar kind of approach, coming around deeper bottom turn, nice wrapping carve, throws it up into the section, blowing the tails, little bubble on the down, on the landing, but then manages to regain his composure, pump, make his way to the inside. And this is where he links a couple more maneuvers on the inside. Nice fin drift to tag. Well, each one of them now have open. On the wave. outside, blue, Owen Moss. Got a nice looking wave. He's gonna get out onto the open face, throws it up, and he goes out the back. He's gonna try and get back out before red. So still waiting for these scores to draw. Hey, looking at Blue's last wave again. Comes around deep from the section, throws it up into the white water. Doesn't see a lot of scoring potential, but he does see his competitor paddling out and decides to cut out, try to regain that priority position. First of Blue, first of Blue, 5.3. First of Red, 6.5. So 6.5 for Red, 5.3 for Blue. Last of blue, 2.0. So blue is in first with a 5.3 and a 2.0. Red, you are in second with a single wave of a 6.5. You require just a 0.83. 19 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, as we saw that uh, blue kicking out early to try to regain that priority, but because he rode the last wave, Red had tied him on the way back out. So because Blue rode the last wave, priority goes to Red there, Booty. Correct. If the judges can't see a clear winner in the priority battle, uh, it's deemed a tie, and the person having ridden the last wave will get the second priority. And if we look at the scores that drop for Red and Blue's first waves, we see that the difference being that Red managed to link to the inside so other than that, the waves were quite similarly ridden, but the, but the Dumphy managing to pump and make that inside section tag it a couple more times. You can see his score just edges up ahead of Owen Wass's first wave. Yeah, actually all the points came from the outside turns, yep. the two outside turns from Michael. The rest of that was just kind of pocket change. But the first two turns were really, the first one was really smooth through a big fan, and then he came up and hit it and did a big airdrop and yeah. kind of had a very real similar hard drop. to Michael's wave. I found that the, the opening part of those waves were very, very close. Yeah, that was Michael's wave that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but Owen similarly as well got oh, up, yeah. came from behind the section. Similar. Here we go, Blue putting himself in position. He's going to let it go through. Yeah, the difference was I think Michael just had a little bit steeper wave, but Owen did great surfing, just didn't have that vertical yeah. section. And Michael managing to link to the inside as well and tag, get a two or three extra maneuvers in. With guys this talented, everything you can squeeze out of the wave, every last point you can squeeze out of the wave can make the difference. But we know the big points are on offer on the outside. We all know the formula for a big score at Super Bowl. If you can link two or three big maneuvers on those steep outside faces, you are well on your way to a huge score. If you can take it to the inside and get the crowd on your feet, on their feet, then you're on your way to a massive score. Yeah, the biggest wave with the biggest maneuver Closest to the curl with major turns, with the speed, power, and flow there. That's yeah, that's the key words we always use, speed, 
power and flow. And we'll break that down on one of the replays, tell you exactly what that means. Here we go, Blue, way up inside the point. Surfing right at us, Owen Moss. He is in second priority. But he recognized that his surfers in previous heats have been up there getting some scores, so he's gonna give it a shot. He's gonna leave Dunphy in red with 16 minutes and 30 seconds, all by himself in the point. Two seasoned veterans. Yeah, Lou, I think he was just shaking some of that sargasm seaweed off the back of his leash on that one. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't had much seaweed at all. It's been a, a good season. Little patches here and there, but mostly very clear. Yeah, my son's uh, wife's dad actually made a machine that goes out there and cleans that stuff up in Dominican Republic. Oh, that's Dominican. incredible. Dominican. Yeah, that's the key. If you can get it offshore before it hits the beach. And they're using it to manufacture all kinds of products now as well. Yeah, they're making fertilizer out of it. Yep. I believe I saw somewhere that someone was trying to use the sargasm and try to turn it into materials as a part of a basis for like making a building blocks or something. But, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I'd like to give uh, my son a shout out coming back from Pipeline and keeping my board in one piece. So thank you for that. That's a good result. <laughs> bringing your board back. It's nice to have your son back in one piece as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he scored a little wine made and a little pipeline there, so, but. All right, Blue scratching to put himself into position on this one. He's gonna get into it. Here we go, Owen Moss up and riding. He's eyeing up that closeout section. He can't get to it, he goes out the back. He is currently in the lead, sitting on a 5.3 and a 2.0. So for in red, he's just requiring a point eight three. He's sitting on a single score of a six point five. So, in coming up in about fourteen minutes, we're gonna witness the Groms twelve and under down Boundfield in red. Kian Brits in blue. Trent Corbin in white and Asher Eastwood in green. Down Boundfield and Trent Corbin are from Barbados. Kian Brits is from South Africa, living in Barbados. And Asher Eastwood is from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Yeah, Bodie, as you've seen the competitor a little, getting a little bit of frustration out there on that in blue slap in the water at the end, and that's uh, kind of what we were just talking about. How do you keep your uh, Composure. kids composed? Yeah. And uh, Don't you can see focus. he's a little frustrated right now, and uh, you know, this is where he should he. He should be able to sit down and reset yeah. and, and start over. Yeah. So. And the frustration is understandable. Having sat and watched amazing waves peeling through all morning, then your heat, things slow down a little bit. Yeah, as we can see, the wind shifting a little bit. There's a little bit more bump and texture on the waves. I can tell from the last two heats. So. Yeah. Also a bit of an incoming tide. But and it's warm here in Barbados, people. It's another sunny, beautiful day. Welcoming all our viewers online from all over the world. A lot of people tuning in from the east and west coast of the States. All right, here we go. Servers pushing themselves around, searching for something. This is heat number two of the semifinals of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000. The event is presented by Diamonds International and brought to you by Surf Promotions Barbados. Coming up for the under 12s, they will be a 25 minute heat, 25 minutes for the 12 and unders. That will be starting in 12 minutes. We always 
put these kids to showcase them on this massive crowd. This starts a lot of their careers off. You put them in these conditions with these pros. It's incredible the jump that they make after you all leave. Jimmy was Zander's coach for a long, long time, and he always told me, give it two weeks for what we do to teach them to sink in, and it takes about two weeks. So we're going to review that. All right, after review, that was deemed a block on red. Priority goes to the surfer in blue. So priority goes to the surfer in blue. Owen Moss, red goes to second priority. Yeah, as our priority judges are staying quite busy there with uh, that, they have to dodge these birds that are buzzing them as, too, as well. I don't know how many birds I've seen fly right by these guys. It's, it, yeah, it's pretty incredible. What kind of birds are these? They're just local blackbirds. And that, yeah, sparrows, blackbirds. I've seen all kinds of birds come through this tent today and yesterday. A yeah, fun fact, what we call locally a sparrow is actually a finch. Finch. But what we call locally, what we refer to as a sparrow, it's actually a finch. But locally we call them sparrows. We tend to do stuff like that. We Same. call Mahi Mahi Dolphin. <laughs> People sometimes come here and see dolphin on the menu and they're like, oh my God. We have to say no, no. It actually used to be on the menu. It used to say dolphin, and in brackets, it says not flipper. Yeah. They used to have the restaurants. That's exactly had to what do it that. used to say, not flipper. I'll take the not flipper plate, please. Yeah. People would actually be offended. <laughs> they would see dolphin and think, oh my gosh, they kill dolphins here, and we have to literally put it on the menu, not flipper. It's mahi mahi, you know, and do an explanation. I think most restaurants don't use dolphin anymore, they just go with mahi mahi. Some so places it's known as the nine, nine minutes, 10 seconds remaining. So this is a cat and mouse game. Also want to shout out all the crew tuning in from Tobago, everybody tuning in from your couches all over the world, Hawaii, all around Europe, England, Ireland, Costa Rica, Panama, wherever you guys are tuning in from, it's finals day here in Barbados. After this, hey, that's my daughter. Hey, Bella. <laughs> Hello, Bella. We and, can see you. Uh, on cue, she says, hi, guys, and my niece. <laughs> Yesterday, they panned down to the pools, and I was like, hey, that's my daughter. So here we go. Blue, he's going to use his priority. Owen Moss coming out onto the open face. Big lip line floater. Working out to the north section. Nice wrapping cut back. He has another bit of wave to work with. Throws it up vertical. So that was a well surf wave from the surfer Owen Moss from Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Leaving Michael Dunphy, another coast, East Coast surfer, sitting on the outside with seven minutes and 25 seconds remaining, holding down priority as we look at this replay of blue. He drives off the bottom, gets a nice power snap there. Still driving down the line, zigzagging back and forth, waiting for this thing to stack up, and he tags it. 
hasn't been much in this heat, so I'm sure that he'll be uh, happy with that. That should definitely replace his lower score there, Bodie. Yeah, he started and finished that wave really nice. Unfortunately, missed that section in the middle, just peeled off on him a bit, so still be a good score in a slow heat. But if it, that other section had just stood up and given him the opportunity to attack it, we could have been seeing another big score dropping. So you see the scores dropping. There's one more score to drop. 6.10, 6.10 for the server in red. Sorry, server in blue, red. You now require a 4.9. So 6.10 for blue, red requiring a 4.9. Six minutes and five seconds remaining. So 12 and unders, you are able to pat it out within a minute. And Red is going to pull the trigger on this one. Here we go. Michael Dunphy up and riding on a beautiful looking wave. Goes up vertical out onto the open face. Slashes the second turn. Lovely section. Big down carve. Throwing up a lip line floater. And he's going to finish with that. And he's going to finish strong. So, well, that was easily the best quality wave of the heat, Lou. And yeah. Michael went to town. As you saw the north section of that, you see the difference. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining. You clearly see the difference in the scoring potential when you get that north section bowling up and just peeling off, allowing the surfers to get in multiple maneuvers, displaying that speed, power, and flow. All right, here we go. Blue, looking at this one. Here we get that replay of Dunphy coming in from deep. So this is where we talk about the speed. 717 red, 7.17. Blue, you now require a 7.5. Four minutes, 45 seconds. Yeah, as Michael goes up and tags that first turn, comes out and does a nice re-entry, and then he does a big opening carve there, Bodie, yeah. and then he finishes it with that. What did you think about that? That way? was exactly what we're talking about, speed, power, and flow. So you get up, he gets up, and immediately tries to generate that board speed that makes the board loose and maneuverable, goes into a deep bottom turn, the power flies up into the lip, loads of commitment, and the flow, transition from one maneuver into the other seamlessly maintaining that speed the whole time there's a recipe for a good score every single time and he had a really good finish on that one as well yep all right four minutes remaining four minutes remaining so surfer in blue requiring a seven five seven so blue sitting on the outside with priority Servers in the next heat, boys. Dan, stop paddling right there, buddy. Thank you very much. I'll give you guys the time to get into the lineup. You don't worry about that. You're going to be surfing 25-minute final. Just sit where you are and watch how these men are going to rip these rights coming at you. So we just saw the surfer in red drop a 717, and he goes into the lead. Bringing the requirement for the surfer in blue of a 7.57. So yeah, Lou, as you pointed, pointed out, the, the under 12 sitting in perfect position to watch all the action, get G'd up, get inspired. Go out there and rip it like the guys they look up to. As we saw Michael Dumpy on that last wave chasing that drone all the way through. He kept trying to hit it with those vertical off the lips there, Bodhi. Yeah. A vertical, a vertical attack is always well rewarded, but you also need variety. I'd like to see the, the video from that uh, drone. I'm sure he was right on top of things all the way down, it looked like. As uh, we see everyone on the beach here playing in the Nice shore break. Yeah, amazing day. Conditions are incredible. It's about 30 degrees with a breeze. 
plenty of sunscreen. So the, expecting a massive crowd down here today. It is about quarter to one local time. And we're going to get kicked off in about two minutes. Two minutes, Surfer, with our finals. We're going to see the specialty division of the 12 and unders. And then we're going to go straight into the junior women's final, then followed by junior men. Then we go into QS action. QS 5000 women, where we will see hot action on there. And then QS men's final. That will round out today. Once this event is over, we will do, be doing prize giving. And the NCC will be putting on a cultural experience. So stay tuned. We've got one minute and 15 seconds remaining in this final heat of this semifinal number two heat of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS5000 presented by Diamonds International. I want to welcome everybody to the beach, all the sponsors from the BTMI, all the staff from the BTMI Diamonds International. Slam 103, thank you very much for your support. I also want to thank everyone from Info Rentals, the BHTA, Zachio's Restaurant for 30 seconds, surfers. Zachio's Restaurant for breakfast and lunch. Zachio's servers, boys, just hold your positions right there, boys. I'll give you more than enough time, I promise. Here we go with 22 seconds remaining. Owen Moss is going to get a chance. Here he goes. He's scratching to get into it. Up and riding, a little behind the peak. It's a wave. Now starts to line up. He knows it's not going to be enough as we're going to count this one in with five, four, three. Two and one. So that brings this heat to a conclusion with the surfer in red from Virginia Beach. Virginia Michael Dunphy advancing into the finals. He will meet the surfer from Peru, Luca Messinas. Which means we will have the first two-time champion of this event as both of them are champions. Michael Dunphy sitting on the outside, hailing up all of these kids, the Groms. So we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. And we'll be right back with action in the 12 and under final. So stand by. We'll be right back. Clock. Welcome back to live action. You are tuned in to the BTMI Barbados Sir Pro Live Like Xander Junior Pro in memory of Zander Venezia, presented by Diamonds International. This is the 12 and unders. We have not started the heat yet. Coming up in this heat, we have in red Dan Banfield. He won this event two years ago. In blue, Kean Brits. In white, Trent Corbin. And in green, Asher Eastwood. So stand by, boys. Hold your positions. We just need to get the clocks set up. We witnessed Michael Dunphy moving his way on into the final. He's going to match up with Luca Messinas coming up a little later on, which means we will have our first repeat two-time world, two-time champion at this event. So hold your position, surfers. We are just setting up the clocks. As you see, the next generation of young surfers sitting on the rocks watching what's going on. Hold on, Mike, guys. 
couple years ago, one of our sponsors was a car dealership, and they actually put a Jeep on top of that rock. As you see the crowd on hand for the day, we're expecting a massive crowd down here today. Pan up back out to the lineup. All right, here we go, boys. Counting it in. Ten seconds. In five, four, three, two, one. The heat is on and drawing first blood is Kian Brits right on the buzzer. Working his way to the inside. And sitting on the outside is the surfer in red. Dan Banfield taking off on the outside. I am telling you, these kids definitely are not afraid of this. They've been surfing out here for a good couple of years. Dan Banfield is a former champion out here. I want to welcome to the broadcast booth our head judge, Bill Seitz. Welcome to the booth. Yeah, good afternoon, Lou. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me back in the booth. This is fun for me to take a break from uh, watching the pros and, and watching the kids. Yeah, Bill will give his analytics off for these children. Here we go, up and right in. Surfer in white, Trent Corbin coming off the bottom. Nice wrapping cut back, working it out onto the open face. He is from Barbados, and this kid is definitely not afraid of a barrel. And on the outside, Asher Eastwood from the east coast of the U.S., and he can't quite get in, as that was a really good wave, and it rolled off onto the inside. So these boys are just going to get the feet in the wax, settle the nerves. That's going to give priority well, Lou, it's starting like last year. It's pulsing for the kids' final. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did the same thing, huh, Bill? Yeah, it looks like we have two goofy foots and two regular foots in this, uh, this final, so it'll be fun to see how they match up with each other. Yeah, a little paddle battle on the outside, and they're going to let that go. So, so while we have a little break in the action, we're going to cut to the glass standing by with Amaya is the winner of semifinal number two in the QS 5000, Michael Dunphy. Here we are to St. Luke last with Michael Dunphy, who will be joining Luca Messinas in the finals of the Men QS BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. And in the same way, got the lead of the QS in the North America. How are you feeling? Yeah, that's a little bonus on top for sure. I didn't. Uh I didn't realize that until I came in and Andrew just told me. So, uh, yeah, stoked. You know, I, I'm more focused on the event. I'd love to uh, try and win it again. You know, it's such a special, special spot for me. But um, Luke has been ripping super hard, as well as Owen. He's been dropping eights in his sleep all event. So I knew I had my uh, work cut out for me. Definitely uh, been ripping. So, yeah, I'm happy it worked out. And pretty slow start of the heat, you know, took about yeah. A little while to catch your first wave. What was going through your head the whole time? Um, to get the first good one. <laughs> That's why we were both battling. You know, there's a sweet spot of being deep, but too deep. And I think that we were a little bit past that sweet spot. So a couple good ones come or came when when we uh, were too deep, so we didn't get a restart. So it ended up being a little bit slower heat. But um, yeah, I think I only rode two waves again. So. That's always a trip, but uh, yeah, I'm glad it worked out. I, you know, I blocked him on the one. I was going to go, then I didn't go, and then he went on a good one. But then my wave ended up being better, so it's weird how it works out like that. You make a mistake, but then it, it works for you sometimes. Yeah, well, I guess I gather it was not the strategy to only catch two waves then, but it did work out for you, so congratulations on to the final. Are you, like, pumped for it? Yeah, yeah, you know, you make the final, and it's kind of just nothing to lose, well, besides the event, I guess, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I'm stoked. Uh, hopefully, you know, like I said, Luke is such a good surfer, so I'll, I'll have to just give it my all and um, see what happens. All right, can't wait to see you. You want to say hi to everybody's wa everybody watching and cheering you on? Yeah, thanks to my family, uh, everybody, everybody back home. You know, East Coast is is a proud place, so there's a lot of a lot of people cheering on. So thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully we can win one more heat. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Today's in a <laughs> row, surfed really well by all three competitors. Judges are going to look at the replay and process this, and they're going to give some uh, numeric values to these waves and, and decide who got the better of the exchange. 
Yeah, back to live action. So if we can queue up some of those replays of that last exchange, we're looking at White dropping. White, 5-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, so Trent got a couple nice wraps on that wall and um, really clean style, smooth, nice transition too. Here we go on the replay. Go ahead. Yeah, as he goes up and he carves that thing back down, ripping this back in, using his arms to whip that board around. Bill, what do you think about that? Yeah, I like how he drops his front arm down real low, almost touching the water, opens his shoulders up, and has really had to pull it back to the to energy. And then here goes Red, Dan Banfield with a nice opening snap, smooth carve to follow that up, and comes on the inside and bangs it hard again. So that looks like that's probably going to be the best wave of this exchange. Yeah, he had a lot of flow with that combination there from one turn into the next, and uh, well ridden. All right, so blue with priority. He takes this next wave. Key and Brits just can't manage that little cutback. So last of white, 533. Last of green, 7.67. Last of red, 8.83. Yeah, so huge number for Dan Banfield. And Asher Eastwood with another big number as well. Nice hook off the top. I love his patience. He's really low to his board. Big floater, airdrop out of that section, and comes in and buttons it up on the inside. So that was a quality wave for, for Asher. And on the outside, Red, playing it in vertical up in the lip, drifting out the fins. <laughs> Fireworks, but he's 12 and unders and finishes strong, but goes down. So Banfield sitting on an 8.83, and that is gonna back up that 8.83. So he's currently in first position and holding down the second place is Trent Corbin and White. He needs, well, we're gonna wait until Dan drops. So the last of red, 6.67. So red is in first, white is in second. White needing a combination of 15.5. And nice turn by Blue, Key and Brits. Yeah, that was better for Kian. A little more aggressive. He went and attacked that first section, and that's exactly what the judges are looking for, the surfers that are going up and committing to those sections. So that's going to be a better score for him, and he'll get back in the mix here. Yeah, as we got the replay of Red Dan, he goes up and attacks and again, drifts the tail. Really nice wave for him. Setting up for another turn. Comes up on the inside. Smashes it, but... Un Comes unglued, but got some damage done on the outside. Yeah, and here's a little replay for Kian. Goes up into the lip, pulls it down, and the wave, unfortunately, just kind of corners off, but that first turn was nice. Yeah, definitely need to get him in the mix. All these he kids are impressing me. How about yourself, Bill? Yeah, well, it's just amazing to be 12 years old and have the technique and the, and the skill to surf these waves as they do. They look like basically little miniature pros already yeah exactly they just you know that's the good thing about bringing these guys here and gals is these kids are seeing them serve and they're trying to emulate them they're trying to put their body in the same position it is the greatest coaching that you can give these kids is just to let them surf with better surfers which is what they're doing so last of blue key in 5.0 5.0 for blue last of so we just that's it so First position is red. Second position is white. As look at Dan, he's scratching for this one. A lovely looking double out goes vertical, back up in the lip, out onto the open face, banging it vertical once again, and he just can't hang on. But it is just incredible. Everybody up here is in awe at what this, these kids are doing. They are just attacking Soup Bowl. Wow. Yeah, we're going to watch this replay of Dan. This was an incredible first turn. This thing scoops out. The wave gets nice and round. He goes deep off the bottom and absolutely delivers off the top. Incredible first turn. That's going to be the best maneuver of the heat so far. Definitely. And looking at Trent Corbin, back to live action, we'll show you that replay. He had a little turn on the outside. So and the thing, too, is 
you know, the judges aren't afraid to throw a huge number for one turn. If it's executed properly in a real critical section, you saw what they threw with Talia's wave. Talia Swindell probably did the, one of the best turns of the whole event, and she got a 9.63 or 9.77, and it just shows you it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Exactly, and here we go. Surfer in red, dropping an 8.57, 8.57. Quality maneuver on that second wave. Yeah, if he had wrote, ridden out of that second turn, uh, you know, we might be knocking on the door to the big, big number. You're right, that might be the first of his career. That first turn was absolutely crazy. The second turn was good too. Yeah, he, just, yeah. he just turned it around too much and so hitting six o'clock, he hit like, he, he hit like three, almost three o'clock. He turned it around so hard. I think the Soup Bowl had a little bit to say about that. He, he, they gave him the first turn, but the Soup Bowl kind of won the second turn. <laughs> so there's still 14 minutes and 50 seconds remaining. And Dan the Mind holding a commanding lead out in front. And here we go, blue up in writing. Kean Brits from South Africa living in Barbados. Here we go, working it to the inside. He's gonna get a nice looking inside wave to work with. Nice little lip line floater and hangs on to the finishing maneuver. So that's Kean Brits, well surf wave. Yeah, I saw all three fins on that one. Bill, how about yourself? Yeah, he's getting warmed up. It looks like he's committing to these sections. He's getting uh, a little more confident and definitely throwing up into these sections, and that's what exactly what the judges are looking for. Here he is on the replay. He goes low road, wave kind of splits in two, and goes for a little floater. You can see his fins just like that. Yeah, it was a good little wave by him. I was about his size when I was hit that age, and I, I was a 6'2 natural design single fin. So these kids have a lot better equipment, and they are definitely surfing a lot better so last, last of blue, 5.93, blue, 5.93. So you currently go to second, white, you drop to third, and green, you are in fourth. As red, up inside, keeping in rhythm with the ocean, sees this north section coming at him. You think he's going to kick out? No, he's not. He's going to hit it, and he's going to ride out of that maneuver. Yep, stands tall, shows the, shows the completion. Just like the pros do, they stand tall, make sure the judges understand that they've completed the ride, and make no doubt about it. I, I had the privilege to bring, here's, here's a replay of Dan, goes up and attacks us, and he eyeball, his eyeball in that big section, he hits, comes into the on, coming section, slams it. That hit him really hard, I'm surprised he stayed on his feet. Yeah, and if you watch that section, that wasn't an easy section to hit because he kind of went straight and slammed into the whitewash. A lot of turbulence, a lot of energy, and to push through that was really impressive. Yeah, also that wave is more or less moving at you. So it's going under your board and it ends up taking out a lot of surfers. As we just see the surfer sitting on the outside with priority, showing great composure. He is in contention. He needs a 9.73. And he's just sitting out there waiting for the right wave. He has 12 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. He's followed by the surfer in white. So green and first priority followed by white. I'm telling you, this boy Trent, if there is a wave that's going to lift up on the outside, he will grab that rail, double hand stall, and pull for the barrel. As Dan is going to look at this inside runner in red. Here we go. He's up and riding. Going up into the lip, eye in this north section, he's got another maneuver, throws it up, blows the fins, and the wave rolls away from underneath him. So Lou, I have to imagine these kids that live here locally surf together almost every day? Almost every day, yep, and, they're all and, great and, friends. And where's yeah. the go-to? Like, I know that the different times of year, different parts of the island are breaking it, you know, better than others, but where's the go-to? Is it like a, you know, one of the beach breaks or is uh, it? No, either here, Brandon, South Point, wherever is going to be, you know, all the kids talk as we watch this replay. Yeah, as he goes up and attacks this wave, the wave's bowling at him. He just gets a little too excited and throws it a little hard and throws the, the tail out the back there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll just surf wherever it's good. If you're here is good and everybody's out here, they come here. If South Point is good, if Brandon's is good, but it's mainly between those three places. You know, they're, they're all high-performance waves. Um, you know, they, 
you know, the beginners tend to end up at Freight Bay and at Pebbles and whatnot, and it's way past these kids' abilities. So they're mixing shoulders and rubbing shoulders with all the rest of them. So I remember when Xander was this age there, Lou. Yeah, me too. <laughs> had a mean backhand out here. He, he would uh, come off the bottom, dr drive just like Dan on that one, and snap it in the pocket a couple times. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, the wind s seems to be swinging a little bit more to the right. Surfer in green holding priority for a, a, quite a while. He's putting himself in position. He sees something moving on the outside. Oh, this thing might double up. Let's yeah, see what happens here. Yeah, it looks like it's going to roll underneath him and hit this inside ledge. But there's one on the outside. But not going to materialize either. So that's going to roll away from everybody with nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining. So the last of red coming in at a 5.90, and the last of the previous of red coming in at a 7.30. You know, Asher's sitting on that 7.67. He's holding priority, so he's been real patient. He knows what he's looking for. He's looking for the way that's going to get him so possibly. White, here we go, White, Trent Corbin looking to get out onto the open face, and he wave just runs off with him, but... Yeah, Bill, I was able to take Dan Ban Banfield and his family around Costa Rica, had his mom, Christy, his dad, Barry, and his sister, Ava. And when we came around the corner at Pavoni's, and they saw that long laugh, they couldn't believe their eyes. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a bucket list wave for, for me as well. It's like, as a goofy foot, you just see pictures and video of that wave, and it's like, it's mesmerizing. It was great to get all of them in the water at the same time, so it was pretty fun. Here we go, Asher Eastwood, he's gonna pull the trigger on this one. Look at the size of this wave compared to him. He's gonna have to stick at the lower road as he, you know, and he goes high and it's gonna split in two. He's still gonna get some work done on the outside though. That little Huntington Beach hop. So that wave split in two and he took the high road and it went low on him, but he is gonna, Back up his 7.6. He's in a little first turn. Yeah, as he, like you said, he just missed that low road one. Still asking his way through this. Um, he's going to get back out there and look for another wave. His blue's up and riding there, Lou. Oh, nice top turn for Kean. So that leaves the server in red down by Anfield. Your current heat leader sitting on the outside with priority. Seven minutes, 30 seconds remaining. He's followed by the surfer in white, Trent Corbin. So last of green was 4.30. So green, you still require that 9.73. Blue, you require a combination of 17.40. And white, you require a combination of 17.40. Yeah, Bill, when we sat up here watching those earlier rounds yesterday, I believe it was, anyways. Some Here we go, action. watching red, Dan, he's the current heat leader, coming hard off the bottom, going up in the lip, working it out onto the open section, another big top turn, he's going to surf this one all the way to the inside, he's just having a ball out there, he is the current heat leader, working it all the way to the inside, he is sitting on a 8.83, well I tell <laughs> you, 8.57, that Showing was some passion, huh, Bill? That was an incredible wave for Dan. You watch how patient he is off the bottom. He holds his bottom turn as long as possible, winds up and delivers twice off the top, throwing huge buckets of spray, and he drops his back hand, his front hand, and he's got just such beautiful technique and buttons it up on the inside really nicely. This is going to be another big score. Yep. Beautiful technique, seamless surfing. 9.57 and green with higher priority as blue kicks out green is going to work his way to the inside throwing it up in the lip asher eastwood from new smyrna beach florida 
Don't need to tell you about the talent that's coming out of there. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. So look at Dan's scoreline. He has a nine, a nine seven, and a 10 on his last wave for an average of 9.57. So Dan Banfield putting down an excellent two wave heat total of 18.40 and has the whole field in combo. Five I, minutes, 30 seconds remaining. I think that's the highest two wave total of the whole week, to be honest. Could possibly be, yes, as we look at this for East Asher Eastwood. Seven point six zero for green, seven six zero. So green, you are in second, blue, you are in third, and white, you are currently in fourth position. So full rundown, red in first with a, set, a 9.57 and an 8.83. Green, you are in second with a 7.67 and a 7.6. Blue, you are in third with a 5.93 and a 5. And white, you are in fourth with a 5.33 and a 2.5. Priority is on the outside with a surfer in white. Trent Corbin, he's gonna look at this one, he lets it go. And red is not done yet. He's going to take it with four minutes, 25 seconds remaining. And that wave just closes out. Blue, he's out there up and riding. He is currently in third position. Nice little top turn. Taking the low road. And on the outside, that leaves the surfer with four minutes remaining in white with priority. Something's popping up in front of him. He's putting himself in position. Here we go, Trent Corbin. He's gonna scratch to get into this one. Here he goes. Uh, Trent Corbin up and riding. Out onto the open face. He's looking to get into the mix. Bounces off the white water, working it to the inside. Sticking with it. So he's got three minutes and 30 seconds remaining. So he has more than enough time to get himself back out into the lineup. Three minutes, 30. Yeah, Bill, amazing technique by these young kids. What do you think? Yeah, it's so impressive to see how refined they are already. Uh, you know, in just those little details of where their arm placement is and how low they get and, and their bottom turns because, you know, that bottom turn is the foundational piece to good surfing. And to see these kids holding it long and, and deep off the bottom, they can put their board pretty much anywhere they want into the lip under the top part of the wave. And without that deep bottom turn, you cannot execute those maneuvers. So it's really impressive to see. They've already, they've already learned that part of it. Now it's just getting stronger, bigger, and putting a variety together. Yeah, I always say if you, it's like a half pipe. If you, if you stand up about halfway of the half pipe and you jump on your skateboard, you think you're going to hit the coping? No, you got to drop in from the top, drive it all the way out, and then hit the coping. That's right. If you're not above the lip and above the coping, you're not getting the top scores. That's correct. <laughs> These kids have had so many waves in this heat. All the waves waited just for this heat. Well, it's amazing. You have four, four surfers in the heat. You see so many more waves ridden, right? As you get down to the man on man or the woman on woman, they're so much more selective because they know they got to be so so strategic with it. So in these four man or four women heats, you know, you're getting more surfing and more activity because you know, you're advancing two instead of one. And, you know, they've got to get busy. They can't sit too long. So it, it is really exciting. It's a different thing. And here goes Blue taking off deep onto the reef. Let's see if he can get around this section. Now it just gets bumped off. As Lou, you'd say, searching for urchins. <laughs> Here we go on the inside, Trent Corbin. Looking at that one, he knows what that wave will do sometimes on the inside as on the outside, we're gonna watch green having a high priority over red. Nice little top turn, Asher Eastwood from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, currently in second position. Nice little vertical turn off the top. He kicks it out, having fun. That's what it's all about. Oh, there's a couple bumps lifting up on the reef. Let's see what this thing does. We've got a couple of the surfers outside moving towards it. Here we go. He's just can't get to it. With one minute remaining. 
Yeah, well, I got the chance, Lou. I want to thank you and Chris and the whole crew. It's been an amazing week. You guys always take such good care of us. It's one of our favorite stops on, on the regional tour. And so it's just another amazing event. So I just wanted to thank you and your team. It's just a special place to be. Thanks very much, Bill. And I thank you and the rest of the WSL team for being here as well. Most of you all have been here every year for 12 years. Brian Robbins, Andrew, everybody behind the scenes. Thank you very much, all the judges, for helping me out with this event, doing this little 12 and under. And look at Key and Brits actually pulling in and stalling for the barrel, just didn't materialize with 13 seconds remaining on the outside. White was scratching for it as we're going to count this one in in three, two, one. And look at this. That is friendship. Yeah, what a performance by Dan Banfield. What an absolute heater of a score. 18.4 total points. That's about as close as you can get to a perfect heat. Yeah, remind me not to surf next to him, please. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Banfield up Pick and right. Big lap for Dan the man. Ladies... Ladies in the next seat, hold your positions. We need to set the clocks. We're going to give you a chance to get into position. Then hold your positions. We'll count it in. We're going to cut to a short commercial break, and we'll be right back with the start of the Live Like Xander Junior Women's Final. Stay tuned. Guys, you can go louder than that. You can do better than that. Let's hear it for Dan, the man, Bonfield. Getting cheered up the beach. The highest score of the contest. Of the whole event. I got to say, that was such an amazing heat. I was there watching on the sidelines, screaming. I got to shout out all four of those guys. Dan, that was just incredible technique. Incredible. Kian. So we're back to live action. As Brody was saying, thank you to all of those kids for taking part in that. Thank you to the judges for helping me out with it. There's your champion, Dan Bonfield. Coming up in this heat, we are gonna see Bella Kenworthy in the red jersey, in white jersey, Kohai Fierro in, sorry, in the blue jersey, Kohai Fierro in white, Kylie Pusini, and in green, Sanoa Olin. What we're gonna amazing. count this one in, ladies. 10 seconds. Another stock heat. In five, four, three, two, one. And we are live and direct first junior women's Live Like Xander finals. Coming up. Those of you back at home just witnessed Dan Bonfield taking the win in the 12 and under specialty division. We do this every year for these kids. Asher Eastwood coming in second. Kean Britz holding down the third place. And Trent Corman last but by no means least. Just happened not to get in his own rhythm with the ocean. And here we go, up and right. And this is Bella Kenworthy float in the first section and she can't hang on and goes down. So that'll open her account. And that will put her in fourth priority once she gets back out on the outside. Yeah, Bella starting this heat off, showing, showing all the intent. Starting off nice and aggressive, just coming a little unstuck. Let's see if this heat can provide some of the fireworks we just had in those under 12s. Here we go, putting herself in position on the outside. Sanoa Olin from Canada. These girls jockeying 
hard, but it's the surfer in blue, Kohai, who has always started every heat off with a bang. So while we have a little break in the action with just a couple of small scores to drop, we're going to cut to the glass, standing by with Amaya is the 12 and under champion, Dan Banfield. We are here at the St. Louis Glass with the champion of the Live Like Xander Under 12 Special Division, our little local hero, Danny Banfield. How is it going? It's really good. Um, I want to really thank God for giving me the waves and just helping me through this week. And I want to thank everybody here, all my family and friends. And I'm really happy to win this event. And it feels really good and I'm so happy. Well, we're also happy and very proud of you. I mean, you just scored the best heat total of the whole contest. Be all the big boys. That must be so intense. It feels so good. I'm so happy. I just found the right waves out there, and it, it was just, the waves are so fun, and it was just a great, a great time. I mean, it's amazing to see you keep your composure over there and hit those walls and push some buckets of water. You're doing amazing. We're all so proud of you. Look at everyone here for you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, congratulations again. And yeah, time to go and celebrate with all your friends, right? Right. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> all right, we're back to live action. That was Dan Amon Bonfield. The graphic on the bottom of that screen was not correct. He is the 12 and under champion, not the junior pro champion. So no harm, no foul. We are into junior women's final. We are gonna be having 30 minute heats. We're waiting for some scores to drop. And then I will update you 26 minutes and 30 seconds remaining as we watch this replay of Kohai. Yeah, so Kohai getting her count started on a smaller inside wave, couple of nice little wraps, looking for that inside to wall up. Here it stands up and she gets a nice attack, but then it just peels off down the reef and she can't get any more. So yeah, once again, congrats to Dan. Maybe that graphic is a, a look into the future, Lou. All right, last of blue, four, six, seven. Waiting for last of white, one, two, zero. So early going, white first, blue, you're second. Red, you are third. And green, you are fourth. So early going in this heat, 25 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Priority order has been established on the outside. Surfer in red, followed by green and then blue. Here we see in a replay of Kylie Pulcini with a nice aggressive wraparound. Just pumps her way to the inside, looking for that inside reform. Tries to carve back, but there's not much happening. She just cuts out. Coming up towards 24 minutes to go, 24 minutes, 15 seconds. We're live in the final of the junior, Live Like Xander Junior Pro Women's Division. Got a couple of surfers from the US of A. One K 
Canadian representative, and then we got Kohai coming all the way from Tahiti. And she's been on a tear all, all event. She's loving it here in Barbados. Used to the warm water. And I think we're gonna, I think these girls are all first time finalists here in Barbados. So we are gonna have a new champion. With 23 minutes to go. The surfer's looking interested in something here, Lou. So Red with Maiardi. She's up and riding. Bella Kenworthy out on to the open face. Nice wrapping cut back. Not gonna offer much more than that, so she's out in the back. She is currently in third position. Early going in this seat. Three point zero red, three point zero. So true to form, we saw the conditions really jack up. The swell come through for the under 12s. Here we're looking at a replay of Bella's first wave. She comes from quite deep, manages to make her way around the section, but just gets the one carve. So back to live action. This is Sonoa. Throwing it up in the lip. Out onto the open face. Once again, banging it up in the lip. Sticking with this one. So that'll go in her score line as on the outside. Girls are putting themselves in position, and blue is in priority. She's gonna leave it, so is red and white. They're all gonna leave it because they see something on the outside, and they're gonna leave that one as well. So interesting strategy. So these sets coming in, not really offering a lot of north in them. We're seeing a lot of easterly swell at the moment. So as you can see, they don't really peel off over the reef. Here we go, red. Let's it go. So waiting for the score for green to drop. Yeah, green with the first quality wave of the 617, green, 6.17, you go to first. White, you drop the second. White, you require a 3.1. Blue, you are third. You require a 2.1. And red, you are fourth. You require a 3.7. 19 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, Sonoa dropping the first score of consequence for the Heat, taking her straight into first place. Here we go, Kohai in the blue jersey, up and right in. Young surfer from Tahiti throws it up in the lip. Out onto the open face, wrapping it round. Working it for all it's worth. She has consistently dropped excellent scores all week. Now she works it all the way down to the inside and she goes up and out the back. So we will wait to see where that score comes in, but looking very good. Yeah, that was a well-ridden wave from young Kohai coming all the way from Tahini. Tahiti. She's, I believe, the youngest of four sisters, I think, Lou? Yeah. Yeah, I believe I was chatting with someone who said she's the youngest of three or four sisters. Uh, her older sister is Vahini, who's well-known on the tour. And little Kohai is a relative unknown, but we're finding out about her now. 
All right, coming up next, as we look at this replay. Yeah, so Kohai attacking that first section, throws it around, just a little bit of a wrap, staying with the white water. Another carbon wrap back towards the white water, waiting for that wave to develop on the inside. And as it stands up here, she attacks. Two nice snaps on the inside, and she cuts out. The work was done. All right, on the outside, white with the higher priority. Green's going to give way. Here we go. Kaidi Posini currently in second position. She's sitting on a 3.6 and a 1.2, going vertical up in the lit, coming out onto the open face, cutting it back. She's going to work it all the way to the inside. Nice opening maneuver on the outside. With 17 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Coming up in the next heat, we're going to have Blair Barton, Reed Platinus, Hayden Rogers, and Owen Moss. You look at this replay. Oh, Kylie found a nugget. She starts off with a slow wrap, and then it just attacks that vertical section. That's the commitment that we're talking about on the outside. A little carve back towards the white water, and there she goes, waiting for that inside section to go, to roll up again. And she snaps it once. Another little tag on the inside. But the work was done outside. I would love to see that outside maneuver again. So with 17 minutes remaining, waiting for these scores to drop, as the judges are studying these replays and analyzing these waves. So last of blue coming in at a 6-8-3. Here's Kylie's wave again. Here's the maneuver. Here we go. Whoop-pax! That's the one. G, 4, 4, 3, 4, G, 4, 4, 3, 4, you need to move your vehicle. You're blocking someone in, please move your vehicle. So last of white, 5, 3, 3, white, 5.33, you are currently in second. Full rundown, blue, you are in first. You have a 6, 8, 3, and a 4.6. White, you are second, you have a 5, 3, 3, and a 3.6. Green, you are third. You have a 6.17 and a 0.6. Blue, sorry, red, you are fourth. You have a 3.0 and a 1.1. White, you require a 6.18. Green, you require a 5.34. And red, you require an 8.5. So surfer in white, up and riding smashing that first turn so ladies you stand by for this situation because it may change currently white is sitting in second position but she does have a wave to come yeah kylie under priority finding another nugget lou As we wait for that score to drop, let's get a replay of White's last wave. So Blue just having a quick up and down. So we're waiting for that score for white to drop. Here we go for all our online audience. Look at that, straight up into that section. Loads of commitment on the outside. Manages to make her way around the white water and does a couple of wraps. So last of white, six, four, seven. White, you go to first. Blue, you drop to second. Blue, you require a 4.9. Green, you are third. You require a 5.6. And red, you are fourth. You require an 8.8. .8. 13 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Red with priority, she lets it go, and green lets it go.
All right, 13 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Situation remains the same. White first, blue second, green third, and red fourth. Red is holding priority. She is up and riding, and she goes up and out the back. So a little bit of a priority mistake there, but she'll compose herself. That is... So priority order is green, blue, white, red. Green, blue, white, red. Once again, you are tuned into the BTMI Live Alexander Junior Pro Women's. Presented by Diamonds International, brought to you by Sir Promotions Barbados. No, no. Thank you. We got 12 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Surfers in the water. In first position is Kylie Pusini. Second position, Kohai Fierro. And third, Sanoa Olin. And in fourth, Bella Kenworthy. There is still plenty of time left. These ladies are jockeying for position. As you see, Bella making her way up the point and sitting in fourth position, fourth priority. So she, once she goes up there and she has nobody around her, she basically has her own priority and she's going to pull the trigger on this one but she's going to have to get some legs uh, she's going to get around the section to get something to hit and she goes up and out the back so she is currently sitting on a three and a one one seven if it was up to me i think i might have smacked that oncoming lip we did see someone drop a nine point ride tyler swing down earlier in the day and watching green, she's going to use her priority. Here we go, up and right in. Sanoa. She is a solid competitor, showing lots of flair, very powerful surfer. Is her home break to Fino? Is her home break to Sanoa? Is her home break to Fino? I know, I know a lot of the Canadian surfers. So here we go, looking at this outside. Who's going to put themselves in position? It's going to look like blue up and right, and we all know what this young lady can do. Here she goes. First turn up in the lip, working it out onto the open face. Second turn, she's going to try and get around this bump and get something to work for on the North Peak. Throws it up, vertical, floats the section, and she goes out the back. So with 10 minutes, 15 seconds remaining, we're still waiting for that score for green and now blue. So let's see if that's going to shake things up. Yeah, first we see the replay of green just getting one tag section. And then that wave closes out. So green looking for a backup score. Here we see Kohai on a nugget on the inside. Comes around just slightly, mistimes that first section. It crumbles on her. Nice wrap around as she waits for it to pick up on the inside and there's the money turn punching through the white water coming back in riding out showing the judges she's in control and on the outside surfers paddling green is going to pull the trigger with third priority she's up and riding going vertical up in the lip Sanoa out onto the open face working it to the inside just going to hit the reef and stand up there it goes bangs it vertical once again, so quality maneuver from the surfer in green. So still waiting for that score for blue and now one for green with nine minutes remaining. So judges watching these carefully. They're analyzing this replay. Eight minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, as we got the replay of Green going up straight into the lip, driving back, using her board speed to keep it up so she could punch this at the end of that wave. 
and uh, she'll put another score on the board waiting for that one to come in. Yeah, so Noah had a real powerful finish on that. She's such a powerful surfer. Yeah, she, she may just replace that low score there. Uh, but, you know, Blue on the previous wave had a much bigger wave. Unfortunately, had that big lump that was yeah. just in front of her. That had a little downtime, slightly mistimed the first section, but she finished really, really strong. Much bigger wave. So no one a slightly smaller wave on the inside, but she got a lot of work done and had a really strong finish as well. So Noah just likes to put that board at 12 o'clock. And that's what we like to see. Yeah, the biggest wave or the most radical maneuver with major combinations with speed, power, and flow. All right, with seven minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Last of blue, five, eight, seven. So momentarily, blue goes to first, however, Green needs a wave, so green, last of green, 613. So situation, blue first, green, you're second. Green, you require a 6.5. And white, you are third, you require a 624. Red, you are fourth, requiring a 9.7. Seven minutes remaining. We're coming up in the next heat, we are gonna see men's final. Come taking part in that. Blair Barton, Reed Platinus, Hayden Rogers, and Owen Moss. Two from the east, two from the west. And all four standouts for the whole week. So we're seeing Bella Kenworthy in a bit of an unfamiliar position here. She's been dropping big scores all week. So we know what she's capable of, but she sits under the priority of Kylie, who's also been on a rip, in, on a tear. And with six minutes to go, Bella's gonna want Kyrie to get a, Kylie to get away of really soon so she can take that priority and try to chip away at that massive 9.7 that she requires. So coming up in this next heat, Owen Moss, he is last year's runner-up. And Reed Platinus, he, go, he went down in the semifinals last year. So both of them young boys are in this final. As we look up inside, Green giving it a snip, no ride. On the outside, White, she's pulling to put herself into position. She's gonna use her variety. She's up and riding. Out onto the open face, having to cut back. No major maneuver on the outside as we are within the five minute mark. Priority shifts to the surfer in red and green. She's gonna go in third priority. So she goes up and out. So as we see that priority shift, shift to Bella with four minutes, 40 seconds to go. Here's the current heat leader. She's sitting on a 6.83 and a 5.8. She's rolling down the line, looking at that section. I ended up banging it vertical. She's working it all the way. Waiting for this one to hit the reef the right way and it doesn't, so she goes out the back. So with four minutes and 18 seconds remaining, priority is gonna go with the surfer in red, followed by green, and then white. Last of white, two, eight, three. So we're waiting on that last of blue. These girls have been bu busy. There's been 18 waves ridden. Still waiting for that one to come back in, but 18 waves ridden in this heat. So last of blue, 6.37. So that strengthens your lead. Green, you now require. 
Green, you're in second. You now require a 7.0. White, you are in third. You now require a 6.74. And red, you are in a combination situation requiring a 13.202 wave heat total. Three minutes remaining. Yeah, Jim and Lou, as we see Bella sitting with, oh, here we go, replay of Kohai's last wave. So here she comes around, deep bottom turn, makes a little snap under the lip, comes around, another little turn up in the white water. One more big snap there. A couple little wraps on the inside as this wave kind of reforms. She's pumping and just cuts out. So Bella needing a score and sitting with priority, but fast running out of time, two and a half minutes. White with third priority, she's gonna go. Blue is gonna give way. Wrapping it, nice vertical turn. Kylie there realizing with a low priority, she decided to pull the trigger on the inside and try to manufacture a score. Did some good work, couple of nice turns, but a smaller inside wave. Let's see where it goes with the judges. Last of white, 407. So white, you are still in third position, requiring a 674. So one minute, ladies. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. As the surface see the set coming, but is it gonna get here in time? With ten seconds remaining, Kohai, she's looking at it. She's got a higher priority. Here she goes. With five seconds, she's up and riding. In three, two, one. Working it out onto the open face. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 BTMI Live Like Xander champion. Congrats to Kohai Fierro, all Take, the way from Tahiti. Taking that victory lap. Congratulations to her. Surfers in the next heat. Hold your positions. We'll let you get into position and we will call it in as Kohai makes her way to the beach. Special moment for her. There she is, big hugs all around. Congratulations, Kohai. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a nice hug from Kylie. She's gonna get chaired up the beach. We're gonna cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with the start of the Live Like Xander Junior Pro Men's Final. We'll be right back. Step every single race, paradise is be named. Come over and you will fall in love. I should 
state Have a special time of the year Where we just get away Most beautiful display No search of any other We are back to live action. You are tuned in to the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro in memory of Xander Venezia, presented by Diamonds International. Coming up in this final, we see Blair Barton in the red jersey, Reed Platinus in the blue jersey, Hayden Rogers in white, and Owen Moss in the green jersey. This is a 30 minute final. While we were on that short commercial break, no waves were ridden. I want to say a big congratulations to the winner of. The Live Like Xander Women's Junior Pro, Kohai Fierro. Congratulations to you. Surfing well all week. Coming up next, we are going to go into the QS 5000 Women's Final coming up. And that effort will be reigning champion Zoe Benedetto. She will be taking on Talia Swindell. That will be coming up in about 28 minutes. Following that heat, we will be going straight into the QS 5000 men's final where we will see Michael Dumphy taking on Luca Messinas, two former champions. So we could potentially be crowning two double champions, but we will definitely be, be crowning one for sure. All right, while we have a short break in the action, we're gonna cut to the glass. Standing by with Amaya is the winner of the women's Kohai Fierro. Okay, we're gonna stick with this. She is not ready yet, so we're going to stick to live action. I think Kohai is still being congratulated by everyone coming up the beach. Amazing support from all of her fellow competitors. Amazing camaraderie. All right, I think she's ready now, so we're going to send it by, standing by with Amaya Kohai Fierro. Here we are to stand the glass with the winner of the women division in the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro in loving memory of Xander Venezia presented by Diamonds International, the ta talented Tahitian surfer, Kohai Fierro. How are you? I'm really happy. Uh, yeah, it's been a tough seven weeks and uh, I'm just really happy out of words. I'm, yeah, super stoked. <laughs> Tough week, I would say an amazing week. You've been throwing buckets all over the place, scoring amazing scores. It's kind of a slow heat uh, to end, but I mean, you held that top of the heat pretty well. Yeah, it was a really slow heat, and uh, yeah, I just got lucky to get those two good waves, and uh, yeah, just surfing and uh, having fun. That was what I was planning to do in this final, and I, I guess it worked, and yeah, I'm super stoked. I mean, you're surfing so amazingly. It's great to watch. And uh, so you kind of use your priority at the end to keep the lead? Yeah, I kind of did. Priority was a really, uh, an, a really good tool and out there, uh, especially when you had priority and just sitting and waiting for the good wave. And that was really cool having that tool and as well as uh, keeping others on good waves. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean... Amazing way once again, congratulations. We're so stoked for you. Um, we're gonna switch to French now. Uh, tu veux nous dire un petit peu, uh, faire un petit récap de ce qui s'est passé pendant la série là-bas? Euh, ouais, cette série, elle était assez compliquée. Euh, que de bonnes surfeuses dans cette série. Euh, 
Et puis euh, les conditions, elles étaient un peu euh, différentes de ce matin. Ce matin, il y avait un peu plus de vagues. Et puis là, ça, ça s'est beaucoup calmé, je dirais. Et puis, euh, ouais, j'ai vraiment été... Enfin, euh, j'ai vraiment bien joué ma stratégie à l'eau, je dirais, euh, avec la priorité et pour euh, avoir les bonnes vagues et aussi euh, bloquer euh, certaines filles euh, pour euh, s'exprimer sur les meilleures vagues qu'il y avait aujourd'hui. Ouais, belle stratégie, c'est la compète, hein. on ne peut rien dire d'autre, mais euh, bravo en tout cas. Superbe semaine, de très très bon score, des gros turns, donc euh, bravo, 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 on est super fiers de toi en France. Oui. <rire> Et euh, bah, bonne chance pour, euh, pour la prochaine étape. C'est qu -ce quoi la prochaine compète euh, Les ISA qui arrivent là euh, ben, on, dans un mois, et puis euh, au Salvador, du coup, euh, ouais, j'ai hâte, euh, c'est une grande compétition aussi, et puis euh, ça c'est un bon entraînement pour moi. Et euh, oui, super contente, et voilà. Super, toi de te regarder dans les prochaines compètes. Bonne chance pour la prochaine. <laughs> All right, back to live action. So we saw Surfer in green holding down two scores. First one coming in at a 5-6-7, waiting on the second one. And then we saw the Surfer in red launching a massive air reverse and not being able to hold on to the landing. Let's see if we can queue up those replays. Green tears back into that one. He comes in, does a big power layback cut back, shows that he's got control, jumps off, and then again gets another wave, cuts back, very slim move to the first one, and slams it into this one, into another uh, layback cut back, power turns in there. Lou, two big power turns. And here's Blair flying down the line. If he would have landed this, That would have been a huge score. That, that was, was massive. Good. All right, so second of white, sorry, green. Second of green, 5.43. So first of green, 5.67. Second of green, 5.43. Two very similar surf waves. So there's a very similar scores. So green, you are currently in first. First of red, 1.5. You are in second. And third and fourth yet to open their account. Gr Blue is going to go left. He is up and riding, so priority will go to the surfer in white. He shows his style on the air game. So Blue, Reed Platinus, grabbing the rail, spinning it around. White with higher priority, so he will, red will give way. As White, Hayden Rogers coming out onto the open face, has a little bit of a rib, not working in his favor. So we're going to see where. Yeah, so as Blue flies down the line, eyeball in this section, finally sees it, rotates it, looks towards the beach, he likes it. And Red doing a good sell job to White on this wave is. Uh, This wave really didn't line up like uh, White expected. And uh, Red now has priority out the back there, Lou. So we're waiting for these waves to drop. Priority goes to the surfer in red, followed by green, then blue. So we have a score coming for White and for Blue. And also for Green, Green is going to just be a minimal score. All right, last of Blue, 5.3, as Blue is up and right. And last of White, 3.5. And on the outside, Green is up and right. Blue continuing down onto the inside. So, waiting for that last of Blue. Blue, your previous was a 5.3, your previous. That was a 5.3 as we watched the replay. Here we go, Reed Platinus going straight up and tagging that lip, making his way around and going into a nice vertical section. Throwing loads of spray, wraps it back around to the white water, taking his time, trying to make his way to the inside, hoping for a little V form. 
as that wall stands up again, tags it at the end. So early going in this, we'll wait for that score for Blue to come in. All right, last of blue, 6.67. Blue, you are in first. Green, you go to second. Green, you require a 6.3. White, you are third. You require an 8.4. And red, you are fourth. You require a combination of 11.97. So red is sitting on the outside with priority, followed by white, then green. Coming up next, we're going into QS 5000. Head-to-head -head action featuring Zoe Benedetto and Talia Swindell. That will be coming up in about 19 minutes. All right, just a quick announcement. All finalists, all finalists, whether you're the winner or not, all finalists, please be present for the awards. Thank you very much. That will be coming up immediately following the last heat. Here we go. Red up and riding. Big vertical snap off the lip. Coming out onto the open face. Down carving. He's got a little bit more wave to work with. Another vertical off the lip. Cutting it back as he's working his way to the inside. Another snap. Blair Barton. And he can't quite hang on to the finishing move. But guess what? The work was done on the outside. Bigger set wave. And he went to town on it. Look at this replay. Yeah, he goes straight up there, Lou. Come, sets his reel, comes right back into the pocket, multiple turns, tagging him. And uh, he rode that thing all the way in with a nice finish. And uh, G4434, G4434, please move your vehicle. G4434, thank you very much. So waiting for this score for Red to drop. And it's going to go north of Sunday. Yeah, that was a really well surfed wave from Red. Goes straight up vertical. Makes his way around with a deep drawn up bottom turn. Tags the lip and then goes up and tags it vertical one more time. Just a couple of wraps trying to make his way towards the inside. And then he starts to tag that lip once again as it stands up. Unfortunately, just catches the rail, picks the nose on the last one. But that will be Blair's first score of significance, and he'll be on the board. All right, Red, your last wave. I have one more score to drop. So Red, your last wave, 733, 7.33. So you currently are in third position, requiring a 4.6. However, Red is in first, and he has a wave to come. 16 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. We just saw Reed drop the hammer on the outside there. Wave starts a little slow. He fades a little bit, but then he comes around just one wrap and waits for it to stand up. Here we go. And attacks. One and two. Bang, bang. And he cuts out. As Sean Thompson says, only a surfer knows the feeling, and he felt it right there. Uh, he was feeling it. Let's see what the judges are feeling. All right, last of blue, 7.73. So blue first, green, your second. Green, you require an 8.73. Red, you are third. You require a 7.08. And, and white, you are fourth, requiring a combination of 14.4 as red is up and riding. Got a nice hit off the top, out the back, so we'll see where this goes. And he's currently sitting on a 7.3 and a 1.5. Yeah, as we saw Blue stretch those bottom turns way out, look straight up vertical and tag those two in a row. And that's sometimes better when you hit a wave that hard. Sometimes it's better than a tube. You know, we're always looking for tubes as a surfer, and that's like our favorite thing. But yeah. every once in a while, you'll get one of these waves that you tag that feel better 
Well, I'm, I'm, I've never been very good at getting tubes, so I'll take the two big vertical hits every day. So last of red, 4.6. Green, you dropped the third. You need an 8.73. It's green up and right in. White, you are in fourth, requiring a combination of 14.40. So red, your last wave coming in at a 4.6, you now require a 7.0. Waiting for a wave for green. Yeah, here we see a quick replay of green, just getting up, getting straight up into the lip. Little downtime as he makes his way around that white water. One wrapping turn to get back into the power pocket. Nice wrapping turn where he throws the tail out a little bit, makes his way to the inside, but doesn't see anything else on offer. Green, sorry. The driver of G4434, G4434. You need to move your vehicle. You are parked right in front of the entrance to the tent, and people are jumping over the gutter. If you don't move it, we will move it beige and styly. And you know how that is. G4434, please move your vehicle. By now, everybody should know not to upset Uncle Lou. All right, 13 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Situation of water, red first. Red, you're sitting on a 7-7 seven, seven and a 6-6. Six, six. Blue, you're first, sorry. Blue, you are first. Sitting on a 7-7 seven, seven and a 6.6. Six. Red, you are second. Sitting on a 7.33 and a 4.6. You need a 7.08. Green, you are third. You are sitting on a 5.67 and a 5.6. You require an 8.73. And white, you are fourth. You are sitting on a 3.5. You require a combination of 14.40. Priority is with white and a bomb set. Has just stood up in front of him. So here he goes. Out onto the open face. Out, big vertical turn. Pointing that nose straight down to the bottom. And he works his way out onto the open face, and he kicks out. So we will see where that score goes as we watch Red with number two priority. He's looking for that air, throws it up in the flats, can't hang on, and goes down. And Green with third priority, looking at that as your current heat leader in blue, holding down priority with 12 minutes remaining. Yeah, Reed finds himself in a really strong position now with two solid scores and the priority. White sat with a long, long time of priority. Took off on that wave. As we see the replay, looked like it was going to be a bomb. Goes up and throws a nice vertical lip. And then as he comes, up, comes, around, he comes around and that wave just peters out. Doesn't offer any more scoring potential. As we see Red on the replay flying through the air right there and just landing but not being able to stick that. He's done two of those in this heat and you know, sooner or later he's gonna land one of those and get a massive If score. he lands one of them, the beach will erupt. All right, last of white, 4.6. So white, you break the combination, you now require a 9.7. So situation, blue first, red second. Green is third, requiring that 8.73. And white is fourth, requiring a 9.77. Watching green and red split in the peak. We're gonna stick with green. Goes up two times vertical. Here we go, Owen Moss. Working it out onto the inside. So we'll see if we can catch up with that blue. As surfer in green, Owen Moss. Trying to better a 5.60. Yeah, we just saw a couple of surfers split the peak with Owen Moss taking the right, getting some work done. And as we see here, strap in, you're going for a ride on American Blair Lines.
So waiting for a score for green and red. Just seeing the end of that replay of Owen getting some work done on the inside. Chopping a mid-range score. Nine and a half minutes to go, Lou. So nine minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Last of red coming in at a 5-4-7. So red, you still require that 7-0-8. Green, working on your score. Comes in at a 5.2, does not go in your scoreline. You require an 8.7. And white, you are in fourth, you require a 9.7. And red up inside, got a decent looking wave, comes off the bottom, goes up in the lip, nice snapping. Another nice snap. Wave doubles up for him, bangs it vertical. He's not done yet. Wrapping cut back. And on the outside, Surfer in blue going up in the lip as this is live action. There's a bigger wave on the outside. Well, Rib went to town on that wave. That was a well-ridden wave by him. Uh -huh. As we got the replay, he's dropping into this thing, smashing it. This thing keeps lining up and giving him stuff, Bodie. Take yeah, just kept bowling up and bowling up and standing up vertical. Look at it. Three big turns, makes his way to the inside and finishes with a nice tag. In the meantime, we got Reed on the outside using his priority. Deep bottom turn, vertical, throwing that fan of spray into the air. Nice little wrap around, just waiting for that wave to come. Doesn't really offer anything, anything on the inside, but that was a beautiful fan. When you see that fan of water fly up into the air, that's an indication of perfect timing when you meet the lip just at that perfect time. Yeah. So waiting on that last of blue and the last of red. The judge is giving this one a long look, comparing these scores. And the difference for me on that one was uh, red had more of a wall. All right, last of red, 817, you go to first. However, blue requires a wave coming. So we're looking at that wave now, and it will compare accordingly. So last of red getting an 817. Seven minutes remaining. So blue, your score is starting to drop. You require a 7.78, you drop a 7, 5.73, not enough. So situation in the water, red first, blue second. Blue, you require a 7.7, .7. and green, you are third, requiring a 9.83. White, you are fourth, requiring a combination of 15.5. Six minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, as I was saying there, Bodhi, Red had the better lined up wave and he had multiple turns. Red up and right and throwing the rotator, spinning it around. Blair Barton from Virginia Beach. Blair's found the rhythm now. And yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, Six minutes remaining. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Jim. Um, Blair just had the better quality wave there. That bowl stood up and just offered him section after section, and there was just that speed, power, and flow as he did three massive turns. Unfortunately for Reed, that first uh, wall when he first dropped in was a lovely big overhead vertical section, but after that, that wall did not stretch out. He didn't get that north section and just got a little wraparound. So score is reflective of the surfing done. All right, five minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Coming up next, the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000 Women's Final. Coming up, we're gonna see Zoe Benedetto, your reigning champion, taking on Tadia Swindell. Following that, we're going into the men's final. QS 5000 and green, way, way up inside. 
I was thinking that wave by rip is going to be the highest score of, uh, at the moment due to uh, the multiple turns. He had three. There we go, green. Up and giving down it. vertical turns all the way in and even finish with a nice finish. And that wave just kept giving him and giving him and giving him himself. Yeah. And he went back out there and got another little rotator just to show some confidence. I couldn't agree more, Jim. At the end of the day, that's one of those waves that if no one's surfing it, you mind surf it. We saw Owen Moff, Moss way over on the East Pate in the area where we call High Rock. He's under priority, so he's just trying to separate himself from the pack and see if he can pick off a nugget. So four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Here is the current heat leader, Red, up and right, and he's going left again, blowing the big reverse, landed any flats. He can't hang on. Yeah, Air Blair is just having fun now. He's sitting on top with a couple of solid scores, and he's looking to throw the progression at the judges now. Priority still sitting with white, then blue, and then green. Hayden, another standout all week long, is going to need to get to work because he's running out of time, and he's in a combo situation. I'm sure uh, Courtney... Barton's uh, jumping up and down at home. Lou, what do you think? I think she's eating her fingers right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with three minutes and 20 seconds left. Uh, I know Courtney well. It's rolling down. Barton is a famous uh, name in surfing. Three, fi three minutes, 15 seconds. As you can see, the lineup. Surfer in white holding down priority. Followed by blue and then green and red. So with just three minutes remaining, can the youngster from Virginia Beach, Virginia, hold on to the lead? Priority is with white. Second priority with blue. Third priority green. Fourth priority red. Two minutes and 45 seconds. So ladies in the next heat, just hold your position, positions there and green way up inside, so no right for him. 225. Yeah, that women's final is gonna be fireworks. Two standout performers all week. Also, two very good friends that hang out when they're not in the water. Here we go. Surfer in blue, putting himself into position. Here he goes, he's up and riding with two minutes remaining. Throwing up the first turn, throwing up the second turn, and he's gonna ride out of it. All right, Reba, two big hits. And he rides out and he likes it. So one minute, 45 seconds remaining. Look at this replay, straight into that first tag and then up into that oncoming section. Gets a bobble, but he manages to ride out that was a committed turn from Reed. So one minute, 15 seconds remaining. One minute, 15 seconds remaining. So where's the score gonna come in with one minute remaining? White is going to hold down priority. The score is dropping for Blue with 50 seconds remaining. So Blue, you require a 7.7. .7. You drop a 6.7. Not enough. Red, you remain in first. And Blue goes down with 30 sec 35 seconds remaining. Look at that right roll off bowling and barreling with 30 seconds remaining. So the surfer in red on the outside all by himself with 20 seconds remaining. And priority and the lead, Bert Blair, you have the lead. The last of blue was not enough with 10 seconds. Counting it in, 
And here we go, Red, in three, two, one. No ride, but he is the champion. Congratulations, Blair Barton, Congrats. taking a victory lap. He's put so much hard work in out here. Congratulations to him. Congrats, Blair. Well done. Well deserved, well earned. Air Blair Barton. And you know who his good buddy was? The boy that made the ocean go flat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, the first one to congratulate him is Reed Platinus. This is where this sport has come. Camaraderies and friends. Yeah, congratulations to both of you guys for surfing excellent all week long. All the finalists, All actually. the finalists. Thanks for putting on a show, guys. That was awesome. All right, Congrats. ladies, in the next heat, please hold your positions. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 Liv Alexander, Junior Pro Champion, Blair Barden. Now you can jump up and down, Courtney. Come on, guys. Let's hear it for Blair. Every year somebody makes this prize getting, it'd be real hard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going we're gonna to keep it on Blair. I mean, look at the friendship here. All these competitors congratulating him. Blair got hurt last year and had to step out. They're going to cheer him up the beach. There he is, your winner, Blair Barton from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And the first person to put him on his shoulder is Reed, the second place finisher. Amazing sportsmanship on display, guys. Well done, Blair. So we're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back with the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro Women's Final. Stay tuned. Get there. Okay, ladies, we are back live. The heat is on. The heat is on. I know you both were duck diving when the horn went. We are live. The heat is on. So coming up in this, we have Zoe Benedetto in red. She is the reigning champion. And in blue, we have Talia Swindell. So we just witnessed Blair Barton take the win as they're cheering him up the beach on your screen. He's being cheered up by the competitor who he just surfed against. Reed Blackness, as we're back to live action, you are tuned in to the BTMI Bar Beta Surf Pro QS5000. And here we go, Red, looking at that. This event is presented by Diamonds International, brought to you by Surf Promotions Barbados. Yeah, I'd like to give a big round of applause to all the judges, priority judges, all the staff, everybody here, especially Barbados promotion, surf promotion. And Lou. With Lou and Chris and yep. Fiona. Chris never stops. Trish. The whole production team, everyone behind the bar. So I just want to let everybody know um, this entire event is put together by five people. That's Just incredible. Five people. That's incredible. And if you look around, this is a world-class event. This is a world-class venue with world-class athletes, and this is a world-class production. Well, thank you very much. Well, give those guys, give that five uh, so, some props there, Lou. A lot of hard work goes into this. So thank give those to, other four, Lou. Thank you to all of our sponsors, BTMI, Diamonds International, TDC. As we look at Talia Swindell rolling into this one, she's up and right and throws it up in the first section, floater out onto the open face, and she digs a rail and goes down. This is a 35-minute heat. Very uncharacteristic there for Talia. She's been on a tear all week long. These girls have definitely been two of the standout performers, two good friends, hang out together, travel together. Their moms hang out together. Shout out to Kristen and Christine on the beach supporting. I know you guys are friends, but you're sitting on the opposite side of the stage right now. All right, I'm looking for Anderson Small. Anderson Small. 
please move your vehicle. Anderson Small, please move your vehicle. Thank you very much. Yeah, so just looking at the replay of Talia's first wave. She just comes in from a bit deep, manages to tag that first incoming section, but then catches a rail as she tries to wrap around. And she's just going to go back out. Plenty of time left. These are 35-minute heats for the finals, by the way, guys. We have increased our time to 35-minute heats. I uh, just want to say a big shout-out to my good buddy, Guy Cedillo. He is one of the world's greatest skiers, greatest ski instructors. We will see you in two weeks, Guy. Thank you for turning in. And he hit it right. The Bajan and Fajan is coming to Vail soon. <laughs> As we look at Zoe Benedetto, your reigning champion, working her way all the way to the inside, getting it done on waves like that. First of blue coming in at just the 2.5, so that's inconsequential. Yeah, Zoe throwing down a marker to get this heat started. She's showing everybody why she is the reigning queen of Super Bowl. And as we get this replay, we're going to break this down. Zoe gets through some good work in this, and she's pumped. She's paddling back out there. She's feeling it. Yeah, big shout out to Guy and Kathleen. So here we got Zoe coming in from a deep section, making her way around that white water. Goes up, just does a little bit of a wrap around. And here the wave stands up. Big carving wrap. And here we go. Bang, throws the tail. Gets a little speed, throws out the tail again, pushing all that weight on her back foot, breaking the fins loose. Maximizing that scoring potential on the inside. So waiting for that score to drop. 6.83, 6.83 for red. So you go to first. Blue, you drop to second. Blue, you require a 4.34. So Jim, that's a good start to get your feet in the wax. All right, so while we have a break in the action, we are gonna cut to the glass for the interview. Most important, standing by with Amaya is the youngster from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Blair Barton. Here at the St. Luke Glass with the winner of the BTMI Live Like Xander Junior Pro in loving memory of Xander Venezia, presented by Diamonds International, Blair Barton, surfer from Virginia Beach, who got as well the North American Junior title. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm on top of the moon right now. I bet you are. I mean, surfing really well over there, moving not enough water and, you know, getting the scores in. Kind of a tough heat, a lot going on. What was going through your head? Uh, I don't know. I was just, I went blank. I just did what I do best and, yeah, came out in my way. I mean, perfect. Got the job done, finished for the whole contest. So what's the plan now? How are you going to celebrate? I'm just going to be with all my friends, everybody here that supports me and, um, yeah, this is this means a lot to me. I had an injury, and to get come back straight into a win, it's just it feels really good. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you're surfing amazingly over there, so congratulations. Glad you get the title to bring home and celebrate with all your friends. Start celebrating here at the bar, right? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you do want to give a little shout out to friends and family watching you back on the East Coast. Yeah. So I want to shout out my mom, my dad. Uh, I love you guys. You guys do everything for me, and my sister, and my brother, and all my friends here. They're so supportive, and all my buddies back home watching and texting me and everything. So, and all my sponsors. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. <laughs> thank you. All right, give it up for Talia's first wave, getting her uh, account open. She'll be happy with that. Alright, so as we see this replay of Talia comes in, looking at that first section, big carve, throws it up in there, blowing the tail, throwing some spray, nice big carve back to the white water, makes her way to the inside, trying to keep her board speed up, doesn't find that last section to tag, but that's a good opening start, a good start for Talia.
Last of blue, 5.5. 5.5, so blue goes to first. Blue, you're sitting on a 5.5 and a 2.5. Red, you are second. You are sitting on a 3.83. You require a 1.17. All right, with two minutes, 27 seconds remaining. Blair Barton holding it down for the East Coast. Owen Moss coming in third. He was the runner up last year. I think Owen and, and Reed actually flip-flop positions from last year. And red, red up and right in Lou. So red up and right, and Zoe Benedetto going straight up in the lip, out onto the open face. Working this north section. She's eyeing up this end section. Here we go. Throwing it up in the lip vertical, and she goes up and out the back. Zoe surfing with a lot of confidence. She knows this wave so well. Yeah, after that first wave coming in she's got feeling way more confident and she's yeah. putting more effort into it as she put all the nerves aside here we go deep bottom turn straight up into the lip throws it around roundhouse back to the white water waiting for that section to build up again does another wrap but throws the tail out a little bit for a little extra and then blows the nose out punches through nice and vertical that's where she, that last turn is where she really, you could tell the confidence of yeah. that. She just threw all that energy in there. And that was a, that last turn was actually a really great turn. That was just a little exclamation mark, a little attitude. All right, score is trickling in. 7.43, red, 7.43. So red first, sitting on a 7.43 and a 6.8. Blue, your second, sitting on a 5.5 five and a 2.5. You require an 8.76. 23 minutes, 35 seconds remaining. So the reigning champion sitting in a strong position now. She's been here before, so she'll be calm. We talked about those nerves before, Lou. And she'll just be know that she's been here and done it. Talia has been absolutely ripping all week long. So she's going to want to get herself back into the heat. Put some pressure on Zoe. Don't let Zoe get feeling too comfortable. All right, so immediately following this in about 24 minutes... We are going to see BTMI Barbados Surf Pro final action in the QS 5000 men's. We will see Luca Messinas taking on Michael Dunphy. So we could have double East Coast victories right here in Barbados if Michael can take the win. And Michael's hometown is Virginia Beach, Virginia. And Blair's is too. So we could get two East Coasters from the same town winning this. I know we're going to have one repeat winner at least. If Zoe Benedetto can hold on to this, she will be a repeat winner back to back. And Luca Messina's taking this down in 2018, and Michael Dunphy taking it in 2022. I'll tell you what, Lou, if all these East Coast boys do manage to come away victorious, we better fly over there for that party. Yeah. <laughs> they were all having a good time last night jamming to Jay in the band shout out to Jay Johansson my little brother younger brother and his band were rocking the place last night had all the competitors out well most of them I don't think the finalists were there but we had all the losing competitors out having a great time enjoying the vibe such a good time they all commented how sick the band was and they just got better and better So coming up to 22 and a half minutes in this women's final, 
of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro Women's QS 5000. The final event of the year. This is finals day and we are in the final. Coming to you live from beautiful, sunny Soup Bowl, Barbados. Big shout out to all the local Soup Bowl basketball community, always supporting the events, always welcoming. We come in, we use their area, we come into their hometown, their neighborhood, and they invite us all, they treat us like family. As we got Red pulling the trigger. All right, here we go, Red up and right in. Zoe Benedetto, she is your current heat leader. She's sitting on a 7.4 and a 6.8. Yeah, that would just be a throwaway for Zoe. Just trying to keep herself busy under priority. Don't want those legs to get cold. Tali will be doing a little chant to the wave gods, hoping that one of those nice big North Bowl sets comes through where she can show us her best work. All right, 21 minutes remaining. Last of red coming in at just 1.93. 1, 1 what a beautiful day we have here in Barbados. Just want to thank all of our sponsors once again, BTMI, Diamonds International, TDC, Slam Y103, as Talia Swindell puts herself into position. Here we go on a beautiful looking wave. She's up and riding and she goes out the back. And it hit the inside section and sucked up and just bowled and barreled across the reef. She's not going to get into the second one either. So that could have been a big mistake because that was one of the most sizable sets of the day. Lucky for Talia, she's got 20 minutes left to go, but she just she's decided to hang on to priority and not pull the trigger. She's looking at this one up and right and, and it's going to close out on her. So maybe we have a case of a bit of the nerves there, Lou. Talia dropping one of the single highest wave scores of the entire event in the last round in the semifinal with an absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely mind blowing off the lip in a huge section, blowing the tail out. I have a, f a photo, a still photo of that wave, and it looks, that would make the cover of any magazine. Okay, as the two girls, ladies work their way back out into the lineup. Surfer in red holding down the lead with a 7.3 and a 6.8. The surfer in blue currently in second position. She requires a 7.7, .7, an 8.7. She is the reigning champion, trying to repeat right here in Barbados. You are tuned in to the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro. This is the QS 5000 Women's. Presented by Diamonds International. Coming up immediately following in about 19 minutes. We're going to have the men's Luca Messinas taking on Michael Dunphy in head-to-head -head competition. Luca Messinas from Peru and Michael Dunphy from Virginia Beach, Virginia. But Michael lives in New Smyrna Beach. So he's a Virginia Beach native. I was in the ECSC when he won that event. And it was party time. What a great, great, great thing. All of his friends, all his family, everybody was on the beach watching, and he was able to secure the victory. Yeah, Lou, I'd like to welcome one of our legends for tuning in, Buzzy Kerbox from Hawaii. He's just tuned in, say to say, saying hi, and uh, he's ready for this final to come up between the boys, and he's tuning in to watch these women as well. So thanks. For Buzzy for tuning in. Yeah, aloha to you. All right, here we go, way up inside. Talia. The 17 minutes and 30 seconds is more than enough time. We should get two, maybe three more opportunities. However, the surfer sitting on the outside in the red jersey 
She's probably not going to go on anything that's not going to better that 7, 6.8. So she sees it. She's putting herself into position. She has priority. And she's going to go under it. So as we look at the lineup, we just see Talia trying to get a bit of separation, knowing that she's under priority, trying to get a bit of separation from Zoe, paddling over to the East Peak, near to where we call High Rock. Zoe's feeling quite comfortable and confident. She's in a good spot. It's giving her that separation. Knowing it's harder to get the quality wave over there. Zoe is sitting on the main peak. So she's going to gamble that whatever Talia can find over on the East Peak, she can do better. Here we see a little bit of movement. All right, so as that little set rolls through, surfers don't show any interest in that. Situation remains the same with Zoe Benedetto in the lead with a 14.26. And Talia Swindal needing an 8.76 to take the lead from Zoe. 15 minutes, 45 seconds to go. Priority sitting with our reigning champ, Zoe Benedetto. And on a personal note, I just gotta say, I've been chatting with both these girls throughout the week and they are just absolutely lovely people. So happy, friendly, they've been chatting with the Groms. My daughter came down with some of her friends. They were all super excited to chat with the girls and they're just so welcoming, especially to the Groms. All right, here we go. So this 15 minutes remaining, surfers, in the next seat. I know you guys are in your quiet space. You're going to be paddling out within five minutes. As we see the lineup, two girls are starting to come together. we have got surfer in blue. She is sitting in the number two priority order. Had a little bit of a blunder in the last set she let. Two best waves go by and then caught the third one, which didn't materialize into much. So she's gonna regain her composure, but with 14 minutes, 30 seconds remaining, she should get at least two more opportunities to showcase her skills. Out there, it looks like a painting almost. The horizon is crystal clear. Beautiful day. One or two small patches of seaweed on the outside. Not much dust or haze in the air today. Yeah. <laughs> Light winds providing for clean conditions for the surfers. Big crowd on the beach. Lots of families, kids running around. Lots of toes in the sand. Little reminder not to leave anything on the beach besides your footprints. There are loads of garbage bins all around. We do recycle our glass and plastic. But if you see it, it doesn't have to be yours. Pick it up. Let's keep Barbados and Bashaba in particular beautiful. So we got the water photographer back out there waiting for some action here. I'm sure he's gonna get some great shots again. Yeah, shout out to Paul Laria, getting the work done in the water. And as Lou mentioned, when it gets big and the bowl turns on, Paul's one of the guys out there. And he doesn't hold back. All right, 13 minutes, ladies, 13 minutes. As this wind switches around, Lou, am I correct? Yeah, it's going, it's just dropping in, but it will tend to go a little bit to the right, you know. Talia is putting herself into position. Something. Well, nothing's behind it, but she's just moving up into the peak a little further. Here we go. Something lifting up for her. She sees it. She's gonna. She's gonna turn on this. She's in second priority. 
so that's no ride as her hands did not leave the rail. She's still in that second priority situation with 12 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. This is gonna feel like an hour for Zoe and it's gonna feel like two minutes for Talia. We have already crowned three champions in the 12 and unders, these Xander girls and the Xander men. So congratulations to Dan Lamar Banfield taking the 12 and unders. Kohai Fierro taking the Live Like Xander Junior girls. And Blair Barton for taking the Live Like Xander Junior men's. Blair was hurt last year, so he had a withdrawal. And he's back with a vengeance as Talia is going to look to draw. Pull on this one. She's looking to better a 5.5 to reduce that requirement. And she doesn't like the looks of it, so she goes out the back with 11 minutes remaining. In 11 minutes, we're going to be seeing the likes of Luca Messinas, former CT surfer, taking on Michael Dunphy. Both of these surfers have one out here before. So we could see a repeat performance by Zoe Benedetto, and we will definitely have a double winner in either Luca or Michael. So coming up with 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Two girls looking at this one, they're gonna go under it. Yeah, we need to see some of those sets come in with the north, north section in it, with the highest scoring potential. But the girls are looking interested. Blues up and riding. Yeah, we just got Talia cracking the whip in that first turn and throwing it up into a big section, blowing out the tail. And just going down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, immediately following the prize giving, we are going to be doing a cultural experience of Barbados for everybody under the main tent. We're going to have steel pans and a tuck band and those kind of things, so stick around for that. We don't have it. So just waiting on that score for Blue. If you're watching this replay. Yeah, that was a really, really nice aggressive turn for Talia, but just catches a little bit of a bubble, and loses her balance and goes down. All right, so last of blue, 417. Last of blue, 417. So your requirement is remains 8.7. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining. All right, eight minutes and 10 seconds remaining. So last of blue coming in at a 417 does not help your cause, does not cut your requirement. You still require an 8.76. All right, here we go. 
Surfer in blue, she's gonna roll into this one. Talia Swindell up and riding. Nice wrapping cutback. There's a north section ahead of her. Goes vertical off the lip. She's gonna get around the section. She's gonna look to finish strong. Pushes out the fins. So that was a better surf wave by Talia. She is, has a pretty tall requirement ahead of her, but she could cut down that requirement if she could just better that 5.5. And on cue, here we go, Red. She says, you go and I'm going. Here we go, Red. Zoe Benedetto up and right, a nice big blow tail out the back. Comes around the section, goes up in it. Another throw in the fins. And a third maneuver. So she answers back. She likes it. And just as I said, doing those maneuvers in front of your competitor, paddling back out, makes all the difference in the world. So we're going to watch this first one of blue and then the one from red. So waiting on those replays. Yeah, that was a nice exchange. Jim, break it down. Yeah, as blue takes off here, she doesn't quite get all the way to the bottom, but she does a big, huge roundhouse, sets this up with a big bottom turn, big top turn, nice combination. Float her into this inside section where she's able to release the tail, and that is a nice ridden wave. And then out the back behind her, you have red, take a little bit bigger wave, comes in, big power slide on the top there, sets up another pocket hit, and then eyeballs this for another vertical, and she's happy with that. Yeah, I think that was a good exchange between the two athletes. Yeah, Heart. as those scores drop, that was a great back-to-back -back waves ridden. All right, last of blue, 7.6. Last of blue, 7.6. However, we're looking at this of red. As soon as we get that score with five minutes remaining, I will break down the situation for you. So that was Blue's best, but I have a faint feeling that Red is going to drop her best. Judges are looking at all these waves, all these situations. Once again, all competitors, all competitors, you are requested to attend the prize giving all competitors first through fourth and first and second four minutes and 30 to go zoe so priority on the outside with the surfer in blue talia swindell as we wait for the score for red to come in All right, scores dropping, 7.0, 7.0. So Blue, you are currently in second position. You require a 6.83, 6.83 for Blue. Blue has priority with three minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Yeah, Jim, so we saw Talia get slightly the better on that exchange and put herself firmly back in contention in this heat with three, three and a half minutes to go, 3.42. Yeah, she got the highest wave of the heat at the moment, so she just needs to catch one more. She's got priority with three minutes and 33 seconds, and this is where everything comes down to right now. I know. After sitting there for a long time, Zoe sat with priority, not a lot of waves ridden, and now all comes down to possibly, possibly this next exchange and everything to surf for. These girls have been battling all day, and uh, now they're in the finals together, and they've been, bo both of them are, have sevens in the score line, so the good surfing by both of them, and like we have three minutes left, and priorities with blue, and red have second priority. Two yeah. minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Yeah, for me, both of these girls have definitely been standout competitors all week long. Shout out to Kira Pinkerton as well. One of the most entertaining heats we had for the day was that semi-final with her and Talia trading blows. Yeah, that was a really close heat there. That one big opening wave. Two minutes, 20 seconds. 
that one big opening wave was the difference of that heat? That was possibly the single sickest turn we saw from anyone for this event. So if nothing else, Talia is going to have a sick poster to put up on her wall. Servers in the next heat. You guys just hold your positions there. They're going to have at least two minutes or more to get into position. We're going to let these servers come in. We're going to show them cheering up the beach. So you've got more than enough time. One minute, 45 seconds. As we look at Zoe Benedetto on the outside, looking to repeat as she is the reigning champion of this event, winning it last year. Yeah, Lou, I've been in this position m many times wanting that clock to run out when you're in the lead and the clock is going too fast when you're behind. And the set pops up. Talia's gonna give this one a look and she's gonna go on it. Here we go, Talia, wrapping cut back. Out onto the open face, another wrapping cut back. So no major maneuvers on the outside. She's gonna look to get busy on the inside. With one minute remaining, quality wave, but I think it's just lacking those major maneuvers. And she throws it up, and she, judges will have to decide whether or not she rode out of that with 45 seconds remaining. So is Zoe going to get an opportunity? She is looking at the horizon. She sees it moving, and she's paddling to it. Here we go, Zoe Benedetto. She's going to turn and burn. Here we go. With 30 seconds remaining, red up and riding. She's going to work it to the inside. It's got a nice looking north section ahead of her. Goes up in the lip and she can't hang on. So with a blue, blue with 10 seconds remaining, counting it in in 10, in 4, 3, 2, and 1. So that ends the heat. Just have a small O for, yep. for red to go. The last of blue is in. She requires a 6.8, gets a 4.7. Not enough. <laughs> Congratulations, Zoe. <laughs> I just laughed at that because Talia seemed like she was so excited that Zoe just won <laughs> and Talia just lost. And that's what friendship is about. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen, your two-time National, National Barbados Surf Pro Champion, Zoe Benedetto. Congratulations to Zoe. And Talia for a great performance for the women's final. So there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Your BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000, two years in a row. Zoe Benedetto from Stewart Beach, Florida. And guess what, folks? She's another East Coast girl. And our first ever repeat champion. That's right. First ever repeat champion. That East Coast party is going to be lit. As we got a cracker of a heat to show up here, Lou, in the men's final with Lucas Messina and Michael Dumphy. So there she is, folks, as she makes her way onto the beach and the crowd is walking towards her. She's gonna get cheered up the beach. Just a quick announcement. Can we get the owner of XH513? XH513, can you move your car immediately, please? <laughs> hey, there's Reed. Guys, we're on hold, we're on hold. Guys, we're on hold. So there she is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000 Women's Champion, Zoe Benedetto. Congratulations to you, Christine. There she is, getting chaired up the beach. Being chaired up by her former competitor, Talia. Great camaraderie. So deserving. That's the Florida flag. All right, here we go. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with the final heat of the day, the BTMI Barbados Surpro QS 5000 men's final. Stay tuned.
All right, we are back to live action. This is the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro. This is the men's QS 5000 and jockey in fourth position. Two surfers cannot get into it. Coming up in this, we are gonna see two past champions in red. Luca Messina's taking this victory in 2018. He's in the red jersey. And in the blue jersey, coming from Virginia Beach, Virginia, in blue is Michael Dunphy as drawing first blood is the surfer in red from Peru. And he goes down, I think that's the first time he has fallen all event. And on the outside, Michael Dunphy looking at this peak in front of him, he's up and riding. Coming around the first section, throwing it up, flicking the fins, floating it. As he's gonna stick with this one, just wants to get a score on the board. And he goes up and out the back. So first of red, 1.1. And we're gonna wait for this score for Michael to come in as Messinas reaches the outside and is sitting with priority. So Red's giving a look. Here we go, Mike Luca Messinas. He's a former CT surfer coming out onto the open face. Big wrapping cutback, blowing the fins. Out onto the open face, nice rebound off the white water, and he goes out the back, so there you go. That was as John John S as you can get, my well, friend. Welcome to Vitals Day, people. Fully Here we go, real. Luca Luca. This is his first wave where he throws it vertical into the lip, but just kind of got some stuck. His body torques in the wrong direction. X, gonna replay XH513, XH513, you need to move your vehicle, please. XH513, thank you very much. Yeah, we just saw that replay of Dumphy getting some good work done on that wave, but here's the one looking at this replay of Luca Messinas. Look at this first turn, destructive. That was like John John, straight into a huge blow tail in the whitewater section. Another wrap on the inside, whitewater rebound. And knowing the work is done, Luca's gonna paddle back out. All right, first of blue, 3.5. First of blue, 3.5. Yeah, Previous of red, 1.1, but we're waiting, and red is pulling the trigger once again. He knows he's going to drop a big number. He wants to back this up. This is all strategy. You see the last two surfers were sitting there. All right, last of red, Luca, 8.83, 8.83. So you are in first position. Blue, you are in second position. You require a 6.51. So as you see the beginning of this heat opens with fireworks and all these servers are pulling at anything they can get a score on. This is all strategy. The judges are scoring from 0 0.01 to 10 being the highest. So they want to up as much, they want to have as high a score as they can closely to they get to that 20.2 wave heat total. And Blue, he's going to pull the trigger. He goes up and riding. Nice wrapping cutback. Another wrapping cutback. This wave's not going to offer anything on the inside. So while we're waiting for these scores to drop, we're going to cut to the glass for the winner of, two time winner of the Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000, Zoe Benedetto. Here we are, the San Luis Glass with Zoe Benedetto from Florida, who is our back-to-back -back champion in the QS 5000 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. I like. I kind of was just thinking about it before we started. Just like, it, like I feel like I haven't even. I can't even speak. Um, I feel like it hasn't even hit me yet. Um, and I'm just really grateful and thankful and all of the above for today. I mean, what a show you guys put over there with your good friend Talia. You guys both surf amazingly. Can't wait to see you all in the Challenger Series. And I also would like to break it to you that you just took the lead of the ranking in EQS. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like this year kind of has been through so many ups and downs. Just came into this, you know, really honestly stressed out about even if I was going to make Challenger. Um, just knowing that I had kind of some off events, just with health not being the best, um, peaking in some right before and then, you know, being a little inconsistent. Um, so this just makes it all that much better and I feel like it's all worth it. Um, and I just can't do without my family, my friends, my sponsors, uh, and the house, everyone that has helped me through the way. 
Well, I mean, congratulations. You deserve it over there, throwing some good turns with always a little flair. I love to see it. You know, very stylish young surfer. So congratulations. Very proud of you. And hi, mom, as usual. Hi. But, you know, maybe a little shout out to friends and family back on the East Coast. Yeah, for sure. Talia. <laughs> be here without her, one. my mom, my family, my sister, and my dad at home. Um, Brett Simpson, if you're watching, I just, everyone, everyone, I'm just so grateful for the support. Um, and it makes me like emotional talking about it, but I just could not do it with all the amazing people around me. So, Well, congratulations. First part of the year, jobs done on to the Challenger Series. Australia, right? Uh, off to Snapper, so. Aye. All right, good luck for the next event then. Keep shredding, girl. <laughs> to live action as we saw Zoe Benedetto's interview she called up her good friend Talia and that's what it's all about the camaraderie and the friendships that this sport of surfing creates it also creates deep rivalries but those rivalries end as soon as they touch the sand so here we go we're looking at this replay from blue this replay of blue earned Michael a 4.10 Last of red, which is this wave right here, earns you an 8.67, red 8.67. Yeah, he went to town on this loot. This thing was lined up from the very beginning, and that last turn was explosive. And uh, most people went to hung on to that, but Lucas, no problem for him. He just came out on fire on his wave choice and his maneuvers have been flawless from one turn to the next loop. Uh, so strong. You can see, you know, the power in his turns. Yeah, he's got an 8.83 and an 8.67 for a total of 17.5. And uh, he's got Dumphy on the ropes in a comb combination situation. But with that kind of surfing, I think anybody would be in a combination situation there. Yeah, seven, 27 minutes remaining. And server in blue, you are in a 17.5 two-wave combination. So server in red sitting on an 8.83 and an 8.67. So two excellent scores equaling an excellent two-wave total. Now, these are going to be the longest 26 minutes of Lucas' life. And... Uh trying to hang on because uh, 26 minutes is a long time and uh, Michael Dunphy has priority and he could strike back on that next big perfect lined up wave because that's what he's going to need is something that has a wall that he's able to showcase his serving. Here we go. Blue is going to look at this one. Here we go. Michael Dunphy up and riding, going up into the lip, pushing the fins, wrapping cut back. Out onto the open face, and he goes out the back. As on the replay, Mike hits that first turn. Didn't really get the first explosive turn that he wanted, zigzagging back and forth, forth in here, kicking out, getting back out out the back, but getting his feet in the wax. Twenty-five and a half minutes to go in this final. I just had to run down and say a big congrats to Zoe and Talia for putting on a show. All right, this is the final heat of the day. Proceedings will conclude with the end with the end of this heat. So you are tuned into the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS5000 and the Live Like Xander Junior Pro in memory of Xander Venezia, presented by Diamonds International in conjunction with Surf Promotions Barbados. These events have been coming to you for the last 12 years. We started with just a junior pro 12 years ago, and then added a 1,000, elevated to a 3,000, and then a 5,000. As we see Michael Dunphy on the outside, nice wrapping turn 
in the pocket and he goes out the back. Seeing some explosive surfing from the Peruvian surfer, Luca Messinas, been coming to Barbados for a long, long time. Taking the win in 2018 when we elevated the event to the 3000 level. If the booth could pull up the last wave of red, the last wave of red, much appreciated. All right, as the server is jockey for positions on the outside. Surfer in red holding down priority. He's gonna leave it, blue sniffs at it. Yeah, with 35 minute heats in the final, these guys can take their time be a little more selective, wait on those quality waves. Here we go, looking at this one. Here we go, Luca Messinas. Big lip, oh! He should have went behind the curtain, not over it. Me neither, I don't think he did either. <laughs> he kind of got caught halfway through it. So yeah, look at this replay. Yeah, so Lucas opting to go high and go up in the lip instead of maybe tucking in low and maybe getting the event's first genuine bowel. Perhaps a missed opportunity, but Lucas is still sitting in a strong position. Uh, he went down hard there, checked his board out, made sure it was in one piece. Uh, yeah, he landed on it, actually. So he had a double whammy. It had his footprint in it, and then he actually landed on the board. And he's checking it carefully now. Yeah, that was a heavy section. One of the heaviest sections we've seen for the day. Glad to see it looks like Lucas is okay. No issues with him or his board. So his front foot actually slipped off the board and he landed on his ribs on the board, we're looking at it in slow motion up here in the replay booth. That was one heck of a wipeout. But again, here Hopefully. it is on replay. Yeah, so here he we goes. go. He goes up, floats, and front foot slides down, oh. and he just gets gobbled right there. Yeah, foot just comes out the wax and the board. Yeah, just kind of the way he landed. Hopefully he's okay. He's a, thank you, he's All a great, right. great competitor. Your current heat leader, Luca Messinas from Peru. Yeah. Those double eights that he got back to back, Lou, were the waves lined up, bowled at him from the north, and he just went to town. Each turn he got, he had more speed. And from one transition into the next with major combinations of major turns and they definitely rewarded him for that. That was a uh, great surfing by him. Now we're hoping that uh, Dumpy with priority could get one of those and get back into this game, which we know how Mike surfs. So, here so. we go, Red. Up and riding. Big first turn. Nice wrapping cutback. Just beautiful surfing by the Peruvian surfer, Luca Messinas. Yeah, such a fast, stylish surfer. Lucas under priority now. A couple of big scores, just gonna keep busy. As we see Dumphy taking a look. Both of these guys are seasoned competitors here at the bowl. They know what to look for. They know which waves are gonna give them those scoring opportunities. As we see Dumphy here taking a look. Here we go, Dumphy on the outside. He's gonna leave it. As you can see, the sideshore winds starting to 
push the top of the wave over off over the back. Nineteen minutes to go. We are in the men's final of the BTMI Barbados Pro Men's QS 5000, the last event on the calendar this year. We will be crowning champions. So stay tuned in. Welcome again to everybody tuning in from all over the world. Thousands and thousands of viewers tuning in online. We want to say welcome, guys. Right, here we go, server's putting themselves in position. Michael gonna look at this one or let it go and he lets it go. As you can see again, it's that is blowing the tops off of the back of that left. So the wind is actually gone even further to the right. Yeah, I think uh, Lucas took that last wave just to see if his board was still working after landing on it, just make sure it wasn't broken inside. I think he took it just to let everybody know how big and strong he is and that he's okay. And here we go, he's going left. So that doesn't materialize. 17 minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Yeah, we know when these guys take a look at the left, they're mainly eyeing up that potentially progressive move on the air section. Yeah, the difference of uh, wave choice I saw there was when Lucas paddled for his waves, and they had about 50 yards in front of them that had a nice, beautiful wall kind of coming at him from the north. So he had a long, stretched out section that he was able to lay into multiple turns on both of the waves that he got back to back. Yeah, definitely. Just identifying those quality waves. There's a mainly east swell, but they do have that underlying north swell. This morning when I woke up, the waves were absolutely firing. It seems to have settled down a little bit, but still plenty of scoring potential. Yeah, hopefully we can see uh, Dumpy uh, find one of those lined up waves that come out of the north from back behind the peak there and uh, watch them. Good surfing. All right, with 16 minutes remaining. A little bit, a little bit of a lull here in the water. Just want to congratulate all the winners from today. We had Dan Banfield. We had. We had Zoe in the Co last heat. Kohai, Co Fiera. Yeah, Kohai. And then we had Blair here, Blair. Barton, Zoe. And congratulations to all the qualifiers as well. We're gonna wait for the outcome of this one. 15 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. You know, just to go back to that under 12 final again, I mean, so impressive, all four of those guys. Big shout out to Bill, our head judge, making the call, giving some insight into, a little more insight into the judging criteria. But those under 12 guys stole the show. I was so impressed. Dan just showing impeccable technique. Kean most improved. I, I was blown away by some of Kean's surfing today. I didn't realize he improved that much. I hadn't seen young Asha, but he seems to have a big heart. And I think Trent just wanted it to be about four to six feet bigger. 
guys are under 12 year olds holding the highest heat total of the day with the 18.4 Lucas is holding a 17.5 there Lou what do you think about that yeah they really attacked it kids are totally unafraid that's one of the highlights of uh, the day for me watching the 12 year olds get out here at Super Bowl by themselves I, I keep telling you all that this contest is a 12 year old surfing event geared around just to bring the pros here <laughs> <laughs> like I, said, such I, a, I was right a single thing these yeah. guys got high performance <laughs> boards. These kids learn so much from just surfing with these guys for the whole week. Some of these kids have been here. Some of these people have been here for two weeks. They came straight from Cocoa Beach, and they're still here. So that's what makes this event so special. People come here and enjoy the island. It's not just about surfing. So much more to do here. As we look at the surfer in red, he's just having fun out here, Luca Messinas, working it out onto the open section, going for the big alley-oop. With 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining, he's just trying to stay busy, stay loose, and most importantly, he's out there having fun. Yeah, yeah not he, only that, it, he's just playing around, but each time he does that, he puts himself on a different part of the reef, so on the way back out, he's looking for that wide bull that might slide underneath Michael. So there's a reason behind it as well, but he's definitely having fun. And, you know, why not? There's only two guys in the water. He has no pressure on him. And why not catch as many waves as you can under uh, out here with two guys out at Super Bowls? 100%. Some people will pay good money to be out there with just one other person for 35 minutes. Just having fun. Yeah, the water photographer got some great shots. I'm sure about that as we look at this replay. Take it away, buddy. Yeah, so we just got Luca flying down the line, trying to pick up as much speed as he can because he wanted to launch, and launch he did. If he had managed to land that one, the beach would have erupted, but a little bit difficult to get airs on the right here, especially that alley -oop not having the right winds. Well, he's up again, up and out the back. But that was a massive alley-oop attempt, just coming unstuck. Still 12 minutes to go. Yeah, Lucas has a wicked backhand. Now I wonder why he's got a world's longest left in his backyard in Chikama. like to say a big shout out to Felipe Palmar. I'm sure he's tuned in watching his fellow countrymen from Peru as well. Magoo De La Rosa, I was able to do my first trip there in 83 and serve Pico Alto with uh, Mark Fu, James Jones, Richard Smith, Magoo De La Rosa, and uh, Felipe Mar Palmar put that on there. Lou, what do you think about that? It sounds like a good trip. <laughs> Yeah, until they tell you to go on that one. <laughs> so Dunphy's pushing himself up inside, potentially looking at this one. All right, 10 minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, Jim and Lou, as we come down to the last 10 minutes, just looking back at what a wonderful week of competition we've had. Great weather, great conditions, amazing level of surfing. Here we go, Red. Staying loose, having fun, up and riding, working out onto the open face. Sends up the big rotator. Whoa, launch. And he can't hold on, so he goes down. Nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Big shout out to Simon Cole, the dragon. He's holding it down all week long. Doing some awesome commentary here with Lou. As we look at this replay, 
of Luca just having fun. Again, he's just charging. He's looking for that launch pad. And he goes into a massive air reverse, one hand grab, but doesn't get the full rotation. Kind of lands on the roof. But Lucas is just having fun right now. Yeah, Paul Laria will probably have a pretty sick shot of that one later on. Final nine minutes of the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro here at Soup Bowl Bashiva. We are in the final stretch. So here we go, red. Dunphy putting himself in position on this one. He's going to give himself a chance. Is the wave going to cooperate for him? Comes off the bottom. Nice wrapping down carve. Working it out onto the open face. Another wrapping down carve. And that wave just did not offer him enough opportunity. Throwing it up. All right, Dumphy sitting with priority. That was a really well ridden wave. I'm gonna break down that replay. Let me see Michael Peedlin coming from quite deep, making his way around this nice bowly section. Nice wrapping carve back toward the white water. Sets it up. Another wrapping carve, throwing a little tail on that one. This wave doesn't really stand up and give him that vertical section he was looking for to really be able to throw a vertical snap and blow out the tail, but a series of nice maneuvers and finishes strong. Surfing that wave as well as he possibly could, but just not enough on offer. 6.5, Blue, 6.5. So you remain in that combination situation. All right, with six minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Time winding down in this BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. This event is brought to you by Surf Promotions and is made possible by sponsorship as we look at Blue holding down second priority, trying to break that combination with five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. This event is brought to you by our sponsors. So just want to send another big shout out to them, BTMI, Diamonds International, Mountain Gay Rum, Remy Martin. Also the TDC, Slam Y103, Infra Rentals, the BHTA, Zakio's Restaurant, General Distributors, Lloyd T. Sumbum, our first true international sponsor. Thank you very much, Sumbum, for your support. Chipmunk Foods, Eco Skywater, St. Luke Clothing. This event would not be possible without the help of them. Five minutes. Also want to set a big shout out all right, here we go. Red up and riding. Luca using his priority. Out onto the open face. Bangs it up vertical, pushes out the fins, and here goes Dumphy on the outside on a nice looking wave. And up and out as he just can't manage 
to find something that he wants to surf. Unfortunate. Just want to send a big shout out. Here we see Luca taking that wave, using priority, taking it off of Michael. Coming around, a little bit of a slow start, but comes up, big turn off the top. Throws it up into the white water, drifting the fins, showing loads of control, and then a nice vertical snap. And then another little tag on the inside, and he's feeling good. Behind that, we got Dumphy taking off on one, but not seeing a lot of scoring potential and deciding to cut out. So what we see is one surfer looking totally in rhythm with the ocean, and the other guy struggling to find that wave at the moment. Here's Dumphy's replay. Stands up, immediately sees there's not much on offer. This guy is so solid. He knows what the bowl can give, and he knows what he can give us if the bowl gives him. He has got priority with 3 minutes 45 to go, so we could still see some fireworks. Dumphy, one of our most consistent performers here, always dangerous. But Luca Messina's chess having a barnstorm of a heat at the moment. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go, guys. All right, coming up on that two-minute mark, two minutes, so immediately following this uh, event, th this heat, we are going to go straight into the big tent, under the big tent, where we're going to do the prize giving. So we'll do a short recap, and we're going to go down under the tent and do the prize giving for all the prizes. We request that all finalists, all finalists, please come down for the prize giving, all finalists, please attend the prize giving. We're gonna do the 12 and unders, we're gonna do the Live Like Xander Junior Pro Men and Women, and then we're gonna do also do the Barbados Sir Pro QS 5000 Men and Women. We're also gonna crown some regional champions. So this is a big day, we have the Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Ian Edgehill Gooding, in attendance. We also have main. We also have the main sponsors from the BTMI. Welcome to the beach. We're within one minute. Thank you for coming and attending, and I hope you like what you see. This event has been running for a full seven days, and we have run every day for eight hours. I have called every single heat in the water. Thank you very much to Jim Hogan and Bodie Rapson, also Simon Cole, for sitting in with me. It is much appreciated. I usually do this by myself, but it was a pleasure announcing this event with you all. It really added a lot of space and flair to the event. And with 20 seconds remaining, Dumphy's just gonna pull into this one. And thank you, Lou, for having us. It's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. As he knows what this is all about. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, in three, two, and one. Congratulations to Lucas Messina, our men's QS champion, and uh, runner up to Michael Dumphy. Great surfing all week, you guys. Uh, Thank you guys for putting on a show. Congratulations, Lucas. Come on, Barbados. Let's hear it for Lucas Messina, your men's. 
champion for 2024. And first time men's repeat champion. Also a big congratulations to all our other winners. Two-time champion. Sorry, my bad. A two-time champion. He, he so won this he event. Here he is coming in, Luca Messinas. On the victory yep. lap. Congratulations, Luca. One more, Lucas. Give it to us. Boom. <laughs> yes, a two-time champion. First winning this event back in 2018. So we have two two-time event champions. Zoe is a repeat winner. She defended her crown. I want to say thanks, and I'm going to hand back over to Lou. It's been a pleasure to be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is making his way to the beach. Luca Messinas, your 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro Champion. All right, I just want to make a quick beach announcement. We need the driver of MX297. Oh, sorry, MX-927, it's been a long day. MX-927, uh, Toyota Hilux, you're blocking the entrance to the car park. Can you please come and move your vehicle? MX-927. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Luca Messinas. Well done, my friend. I know you've been coming here a long time. Congratulations. And I hope you are successful in your quest back to the CT. You have qualified for the Challenger Series. So ladies and gentlemen, please stand by. We are going to cut to the glass for a quick commercial break. Please stay tuned and join us under the main tent for the prize giving coming up in about 10 minutes. We will also throw it down for an interview with Luca. Up every single race, paradise is be named. Come over and you will fall in love. I should stay, have a special time of the year where we just get away. Most beautiful display. Don't search for many houses. Introducing the crown of light. It's the only 90-faceted modern dome-shaped diamond with 24 bezel facets on the crown, giving it arguably three times more sparkle than any other diamond cut out there. This is Crown of Light.
Over the Maya is the 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro Champion, two-time champion, Luca Messinas. Here we are for the last St. Luke interview of the week with the champion in the Men QS 5000 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro presented by Diamonds International. Actually, two times champion on both sides of the island, Luca Messinas from Peru. How are you feeling? Oh, feeling amazing. I don't know. I feel so blessed. Like the waves have been so good today. Uh, all my hits, I don't know. I felt, I felt like I was in a really good read on every hit, uh, catching the best waves. So I really have fun today and yesterday. Uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity and yeah, time to get ready for the Challenger Series because that's going to be harder for sure and, and the goal is to make it to the city, so let's go for that. I mean, you're so already what an immaculate performance over there. You've been consistent all week and just for this heat, you got those two excellent scores from really early, put your opponent in a combo position for like the whole heat. That's pretty sick. How was it to get a 20-minute expression session down at Subo? <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's hard when that happens because it's like, okay, I have two eights now. I don't know what to do. I have to wait for a nine or something like that. And actually, like, a really big wave came to me. Uh, I think it was, like, a score for a nine, but I fell my first turn. That wave was so hollow, and, and I think I slipped. So uh, I think that was a good wave. And then after that, I don't think there was another eight to, to make. So I was just trying to do errors and just trying to have fun and enjoy because the wave is here are so perfect, and I feel like, like it's so fun to surf here. Yeah, I mean, all the judges reacted to your fall over there. We all thought you got really hurt, but glad neither you nor the equipment got hurt, so that's good. And yeah, and by the way, with this win, you also jumped to the third place on the ranking in the North American QS, so congratulations. Great surfing, man. You want to maybe give a little shout out to friends and family watching you in Peru? Ah, sí, saludar a toda la gente que se ha quedado viéndome a competir acá. Eh, Ganamos, se, se cumplió el objetivo, seguimos con todo, seguimos representando a Perú y a sacarnos la mure. Saludos. All right, thank you so much. Good luck for the challengers and can't wait to see you shredding up in Australia. Good luck. <laughs>
All right, I need the driver of G4434, G4434, and J3850. J3850, you need to move your vehicles. You are blocking the entire parking lot. Thank you very much.
Those are going to be towed, Bayesian style.
afternoon, everybody. If I can just get your attention, please. We want to get this praise given underway. If I can just get your attention, please. All right, if you're going to talk, go in the back. Go outside the tent, please. We want to get this praise given underway. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the awards presentation for the BTMI, for the 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro and Live Like Xander Junior Pro. The event is presented by Diamonds International and brought to you by Surf Promotions Barbados Limited. This is the final event on the 2023-2024 North America QS and Pro Junior season. It is also Challenger Series and World Championships Determiner and North American Regional Victories. Thank you for the crowd for coming and supporting this beautiful event right here at beautiful Bathsheba Barbados. I also want to thank the okay. I also want to thank the community of Bashaba and Supo for giving us your wave. Thank you very much to everyone. I also want to thank our title sponsor, the BTMI, and Kamal Springer and his team. Thank you very much. Diamonds International for being the presenting sponsor. Jacob Hasid and his team. CC and Chelsea, thank you. I also want to say a big thank you to Mount Gay, Remy Martin, Anya's and her team, thank you very much. I hope you all like what you see and I like, want to make it bigger and better next year. We can't do it without your help. I also want to thank the TDC Barbados, Inferentals, St. Luke Clothing, Sunbum, Sunscreen, Zakios, Slam 103 FM, the BHTA, Zakios, General Distributors, Lloyd T, Checkmont, Eco Skywater, Banks Beer, just to name a few. This event grows every year. This is 12 years that we've had this event and every year it gets bigger and better and we can't do it without your help. Guys, can I just get your attention for two minutes, please? Hey, in the back, keep quiet. I gotta start to call you out if you don't keep quiet. Come on, man. I also want to thank the WSL and all the behind the scenes, Creative Junction, the webcast. I mentioned it earlier today in the week that these guys on these webcasts, they do this once a year. And I'm not kidding you that they do as good a job as any CT event anywhere in the world. Also, the WSL and all of their staff, the judges, and the webcast crew that put together all the scores. Just to give you an idea of what we have done this week, we have judged and looked at and reviewed 2,438 single waves. That amounts to about 350 waves per day, which is about 70 waves per hour, which is over one wave per minute for seven days straight. And it's not easy keeping your concentration in doing that. I also want to thank the water photographer, Paul Larrier, for risking it in the water. He is one of Barbados's top bodyboarders and he absolutely charges. Uh, to help us, hand out the awards today. I want to invite the Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Mr. Ian Edgehill Gooding. He's going to come up and say a few words, and then we're going to start giving out some prizes. Gooding Edgehill. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thank you very much for your support. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, let me um, say a hearty welcome to all of you who've journeyed to Barbados and to be right here in Barbados. But more specifically, for those of you who've come into the Bathsheba community, 
And I really want to say a big thank you to the Bathsheba community for allowing you to come in here today, uh, for the last two days actually, and enjoying a wonderful experience. I think you would all agree that we've had a wonderful um, surfing event here, and I really want to thank the uh, World Surfing League uh, for all that they've done. I also want to thank um, Chris Venezia, Luis Venezia, sorry, Luis Venezia, uh, Luis Venezia, and Chris Clark. I, I interchange it, and Chris Clark, for all that they continue to do. Let me also thank the, the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., which falls under my ministry, uh, for agreeing to uh, assist in the sponsorship with the other sponsorships that we have today, including Diamonds International and all the other sponsors who came on board to make this event a reality. Um, this obviously is a world-class event. Um, I had an opportunity to go upstairs to, to see where the judges and to see the location uh, where they sit and observe. But more importantly, um, for an event like this, and that is why I really want to thank the BTMI and to thank the chairman of the BTMI, uh, Mrs. Shelley Williams, who's here, along with the deputy chairman, uh, Mrs. Gail Talma, along with the manager and other representatives of the BTMI. For, for agreeing to host this event here. Um, you know, as I stood up there where they had the cameras positioned, and I looked around where they had the cameras positioned, and when I asked the question, um, you know, the audience that this would be broadcast to, I was amazed to see that Barbados will have the kind of international exposure right here from within the Bathsheba community. And that is why I started my speech by thanking the residents and the businesses within the Bathsheba St. Joseph community for all that they continue to do to make this Bathsheba the iconic location it continues to be in Barbados. So thank you, Bathsheba and its community. They often say that a politician is a wordsmith and they will go on and go on and go on. But that is not for today. But I really want to thank everybody who's partner, including the National Conservation Commission, who's really partnered to make this a reality. And thanks to everyone who's been involved in this activity. It's been a wonderful event, and I really thank you on behalf not only of the government of Barbados, but the Ministry of Tourism and International Transport. And I can promise you, as minister, that I will continue to support through the BTMI, this and other events, as we make this out even to be a bigger event next year. It is a wonderful thing to come here in the tropical environment, in this very beautiful setting, to see the waves that we have here and to support the surfers, especially those who come to Barbados and visit us and participate. But I would not want to, to leave without thanking I had an opportunity, thanks to Robert Povey, to, to, in, to be introduced to a number of the younger surfers. And I have to be careful my language, the younger surfers. And it really blessed my heart to see the 12 year olds who came up, participated, who won events here today, but who will continue to add value to Barbados' surfing league and surfing um, sport. And I really want to say it's a wonderful thing and I hope that all those, including Haley and others, who have grown and who have developed with this sport, that they will continue to make the sport what it is to this iconic Bathsheba area. So once again, a big thank you to the organizers. A big thank you to the sponsors. Thank you for coming to Bathsheba. Thank you for coming to Barbados. And we look forward to seeing you in Barbados next year. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So we're gonna get, you know, one day I'm gonna be standing up here and I'm gonna tell this crowd that next year we're gonna be having the Challenger Series or next year we're gonna be having a CT event. And then you know what, I, I, um, initially I always just said, oh, I'm just saying that, I'm just saying that, I'm just saying that. But after that speech I just heard, I think that we're well on our way to getting these events 
brought right here. I actually had an idea that I want to have every single event UWSL offers. So we've already had junior pro men and women. We've had 1,000s, 3,000s, 5,000s. I want to have the world juniors here. I want to have a CT event here, and I want to have a challenger series here. And as long as we get the support from the surfers coming to this island, we will get those events right here on this island in Soup Bowl. So let's work to that. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to get going now with the awards. We're going to be doing the Live Like Xander Under 12, well, it's 12 and under, awards in fourth position in the 12 and under, Trent Corbin. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot to invite Ian Gooding Edge up. He's going to be giving out the prizes. In third position, in, in third position, Kean Brits. I just want to make a note that this youngster right here is the most improved of that division. I cannot believe what I saw this youngster doing this year. Well done, Kean. In second position, from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, ripping it up, Asher Eastwood. Also want to take a special mention to the 12 and unders for support from Sunbum and Last Resort. Thank you very much for the specialty prizes. And taking the win, 12 and under, two-time champion, Dan the Man Banfield. So Dan, you are a two-time champion of this division. Do you finally age out this year? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what was your strategy going into the final? Um, I just really wanted to catch waves because the waves are so fun right now, and I just wanted to get like the good waves and hit the outside sections because I knew that was what the judges were looking for, and that was my plan. It worked out for you, and it's a good plan. So take that with you far and long. I've been saying it all week what the judges are looking for, and Dan went out there and capitalized on it. He dropped a 9-3-3 and an 8-9-7, so two massive scores. Well done, boys. This, that, that is my favorite division. I just want to, again, send a big thank you to all of the judges and the officials for uh, you know, supporting that division. Um, they had a full complement of international judges. The same judges that judged the big guys judged these little kids. And Bill Seitz, the head judge, he came and commentated with me. And I just want to remind you boys to go back on YouTube and just listen to his analysis on and he critiqued every single wave that you guys served. And he did it for a reason so that you could go back and listen to it. So take my advice, go back and listen to it. It will help you in the future. You all have great futures ahead of you. And continue on the legacy for Barbados. All right, we're gonna be moving on to the Live Like Xander in memory of Xander Venezia Junior Pro Women.
In fourth position, Bella Kenworthy. In third position, Kylie Pulsini. In second position, Sanoa Olin. And taking the win in the Live Like Xander Junior Women's from Tahiti, Kohei Fierro. This young lady dropped some massive scores for the whole week, showing so much style and flair. Coming from Tahiti, where she gets to surf a wave that all of us know called Chopu. It won't be me. <laughs> so Kohei also gets the perpetual trophy where she'll get her name put on. And that will remain here in Barbados. So, Kohei, what was your strategy? And, well, first of all, what was your strategy going into that final? You really served well in both the QS and the juniors, dropping some big scores. What was your strategy going into the final? Uh, yeah, I think just having a good selection of waves. Yeah, that was my main plan. And then just having fun and expressing my surfing out there. Well, you certainly did that. And what do you think of this wave here at Soup Bowl? Yeah, I love it. It's a really good ride. <laughs> yeah, you dropped some big bombs on your first wave. I noticed that on every single heat, you went way up inside and you let every single girl catch a wave. And then you got priority and you waited for the one you wanted. Was that part of it or did it just work out like that? Uh, yeah, that was part of my plan, definitely. And yeah, just waiting for the good wave with priority, that was... That was my plan. So. Well, that's a good plan. I hope to see you back here in Barbados sometime soon. Thank you very much. Okay. So just to, just to call some of the names that have won this event, Kira Pinkerton won the first year of 2017. Tierra Thompson, Ava McGowan, and another name you all might recognize winning this event in 2022. Caitlin Simmers, does anybody know that young lady? Guess where she is right now, she's on the world tour. And taking the win last year, Noe Clapp. So she, Kohei is in fine company, having her name put on that perpetual trophy. Moving on, just want to announce the North America Regional Champions. Bella Kenworthy, she won the North America Region. And also W. The World Junior Qualified Regional runner-up was Sanoa. So those two girls will be representing the North American region in the World Junior Championships. Hopefully you'll be back here in January. Maybe. <laughs> Talia gave me a big smile. <laughs> All right. Both are also, okay, they're qualified. So we're gonna move into the Live Like Xander Junior Men's in memory of Xander Venezia in fourth place. Hayden Rogers. Yeah, Hayden. In third position, finishing here runner up last year, he just can't seem to crack that. Owen Moss. In second position, he's going to have to show me his passport. I don't believe he's on a 20. Reed Platinus. <laughs> 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 
and taking the win. Taking a win from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Blair Barden. <laughs> Lisa. Blair will also get put his name on the perpetual trophy. Oh boy, this is going to be tough. So, Blair. Let me hear you. I'm so stoked right now. Um, you know, I just want to thank everybody. You know, I uh, want to thank my mom, my dad. You know, I want to thank you guys for putting on an amazing event. And um, it just feels so good to win here. Um, you know, I prayed and you know, I asked Xander to send me these waves, and it was unbelievable. And, you know, I wish you could be right here right now. And, just so psyched, you know. Well done. He is here, and everybody. So Blair gets to put his name on the perpetual trophy. So let me read off some of the names that are on this trophy. Cole Hausman on the world tour. Crosby Caldepinto on the world tour. Noe Leedy. Alan Cleland on the Challenger Series, soon to be on the World Tour. And Levi Slauson on the Challenger Series, soon to be on the World Tour. And the next name is going to be yours. And you're on the Challenger Series. You are also the North American Regional Champion. And you have, and also qualifying for the Worlds is Owen Moss. So these two surfers will be representing you, North American Region, in the World Junior Championships. They were actually tied with 2,000 points each. So the count back of the best two results, Blair was 1,800 points ahead. This was a special one, folks. I've known Blair since he was about seven years old. And Courtney and James, they're great people. I know you guys are watching. Thank you very much. You raised a fine young man and a son. Zanner and, and Blair were great friends. We used to stay together all the time. So it was pretty emotional when he won. All right, so I want to I wanna announce, um, I want to bring back up the minister, Ian Gooding Etchell once again to uh, hand out the trophies for the BTMI Barbados Surf Pro. Barbados Surf Pure Pro. If you could just take a step up here, we're gonna get you to hand out trophies. So introducing the men's runner up and the 2022 champion of this event, Michael Dunphy. Okay, and the women's BTMI Barbados Surf Pro runner-up, Talia Swindell. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize that they were finished with the prizes. So bringing up to the stage, women's 
BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS5000 runner up, Talia Swindell. No, 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 no. We got to announce the winners. Okay. The winner of the 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS 5000 on the men's side, Luca Messinas. <laughs> also want to present. Also want to present Luca with a $250 cash award from last resort for the highest two wave heat total in the finals. It was actually on finals day. So Luca, you've been coming here since you were about 18 surfing in the pro division before it was even a QS. What's your affection to Barbados and how do you like that wave today? Yeah, like you say, I've been coming here for many years. I don't know, I feel like this place is really special for me. Uh, I won one time in the other side of the island on the left, and been coming here since I was a junior, since I was, since I was like 18 years old, and the ways here are amazing, the vibes, all the people is super fun, super good, so yeah, so I'm always glad to be here. Thank you. Sounds good. I want to wish you all the best on the Challenger Series and your quest to get back on the CT. I know that once you get back on the CT, you are going to be a force to be reckoned with. It happens to a lot of surfers in their early years. And Luca is also a two-time champion winning in 2018. However, we have a back-to-back -back winner. <laughs> Introducing to you the 2024 BTMI Barbados Surf Pro QS winner, two-time champion, Zoe Benedetto with a repeat. Coming from Stewart Beach, Florida on the East Coast. We also have something else for you. It's heavy. So, Zoe, you were in the lead and then Talia caught a wave and you took off right behind her and then you just waited and waited and waited and waited. Is What is it like? We were trying to figure it out up there. You know you need a certain type of wave to surf. And what is it like sitting out there in the water? Are you completely calm? Are you nervous as can be? How does the time go? I mean, what is going through your head? No, I think eventually I'm a hot mess out there. Um, it's definitely stressful, um, you know, when you have someone like Todd, he, who's not only my, one of my best friends, but is just extremely talented. Um, and yeah, I knew it wasn't just gonna be a walkthrough of a final. Um, and yeah, so I was definitely a little bit nervous, just wanted to make sure I was picking the right waves, but I do just oddly feel comfortable here and just swimming in the water and just, it's nice. Having fun. Well, well done to you, well done to Luca, well done to the finalists, thank you very much for coming. So while they're taking photos, I just want to recap Zoe Benedetto is also the regional champion, and Michael Dunphy is the regional champion on the men's side. So qualifying for the Challenger Series on the women's side, Zoe obviously winning the region, Talia Swindell, Kira Pinkerton, 
and Bella Kenworthy. They will be representing the North American region. There is also one wild card to go with that, which will be determined later. And on the men's side, Michael Gumphy winning the regional championships. He also qualifies for the Challenger Series, along with Alan Cleland, Luca Messinas, Owen Moss, Barbados' very own Joshua Burke, Ryan Huckabee, Levi Slauson, and the wild card will be determined at a later date. So congratulations to those men and women who qualify for the Challenger Series. We will be watching every single heat. The first Challenger Series kicks off in Australia at the end of April. I want to congratulate all of our finalists.